And now, holy shit, folks. I always remind people, you know I am suspended for life for minor <laughs> hockey. <laughs> it's my duty to please the booty. Did you catch a rattlesnake and then drive home with it in your car holding it the whole time? <laughs> yep. Phil only drinks Coke. He doesn't drink water. I fuck quit. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spit and Chick. Let's... Hello. Everybody, welcome to episode 410 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka here in the Barstool Sports Podcast family. What shaking gang? Huge week on tap for the boys. 30 teams about to kick off the season. Merle's coming to America. Biz back on TV. We'll all be in the Steel City very soon. Let's say hi to the fellas first. Merle's, where you at right now, buddy? I'm over in Stockholm. I'm getting ready for the big trip over to the Steel City, Pittsburgh. I don't know if I've ever been so excited for one of our Chicklets trips. But what do you got packed for you? I know you spring some goodies for the boys. Candy. That's not a euphemism for drugs either, bro. I got a ton of candy for you guys and for your kids' wit. You know, I want them rotting their teeth like my I always do to my kids. So um, basically just close. I didn't know, really know what the temperature is over there. It's Well, I guess I could have looked at my phone. There's but an that app was, for that. Yeah, that would take too much effort. <laughs> so I just brought everything. I brought all my Chicklets t-shirts, all my Chicklets hoodies, and I'm ready to go. Oh, right, when was the last to... time you wore non-Chicklets stuff, like after a shower <laughs> in the morning when you do shower? Uh, yesterday, we went to a two-year-old birthday, and she gave me the, like, really spitting Chicklets for the birthday. <laughs> 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 we're gonna start making that. some ties and dress shirts soon then <laughs> yeah. right? sport coats it's, yeah it's been oh. the diapers. all right next up producer mikey granelli y'all stuff of pittsburgh there or what big guy uh very excited to get to pittsburgh and like i said before i've never been to pittsburgh so excited to try some primanti brothers and just see the city as a whole i uh i also took some big deals to new jersey this weekend was dishing them out like candy uh, the beer is just 10 out of 10. Everyone loved it. Everyone was over the moon about it. So everything's all great over here. Where were you dishing it, out beers? Like the sidewalk? No, I went to a, uh, it was a birthday party. So I brought two, uh, two 12 oh, okay. packs over there okay. and I was just dishing them out to everyone there and everyone seemed to love it. Oh man, love does that. it photograph well? I'm telling you. Uh, stuff's been absolutely flying off the shelves because of this guy, the wizard himself, Paul Biznasty Bissonette. How you feeling about the beer sales thus far, my man? Oh, I don't know exactly what the sales are, are but the, the response has been incredible. So many loyal Chicklets fans sending tons of photos, uh, loving the taste of it. Uh, it was a nice little primer for all the people in New York at the Bills tailgate. They were firing it up nonstop. There was even one guy who, uh, who made it an ingredient to his chili at the tailgate. So uh, we want to thank you guys for all your support. And uh, I know there's some people outside of the original six state, six states, four of which have been mentioned. I believe has, has the fifth already been mentioned at this point, Grinelli? By this point, yes, it, it is Massachusetts. The fifth has been mentioned. Okay, and, and, we- and I know it's, it's the biggest secret in the world. I was told we can say the sixth state on this podcast biz, if you want to say it right now. Well, Pennsylvania, obviously, we're going there for the live show for a reason. Legal gambling state for the Barstool Sportsbook. Uh, going back to see our, our, our Penguins, we got the live show. And of course, uh, Big Deal Brewing will be available. I, I think the cat was out of the bag because already a few distributors in Pennsylvania, mainly in Pittsburgh, were stocked up and loaded and sent out a picture. So uh, we, we launched the merchandise for it. So it's, you know, it, it's a special moment for us, guys. We've been working a long time on this, and uh, we want to thank everybody at Barstool. Barstool and Labatt and in and, uh, and, and Cisco and, and everybody behind in Cisco Fisco. Chicken fingers. Cisco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it's been great. Um, and uh, do, do I just kind of say what I did over the weekend or what? Fuck yeah, I'd love to know what you did this weekend. Yeah. I went, I went for a hike. I, I got mentally oh, nice. prepared for a, a crazy 10 day bender work trip because of course TNT is kicking off. Uh, in Colorado, we're going to do the banner raising. Uh, game one is going to between uh, be between Washington and Boston, and then throw it over to Colorado and Chicago. We mentioned it last pod. I think the league put it on a tee for the for the Avalanche to just have the ceremony. They actually uh, they actually get their rings on Tuesday. So very interested to see what the avalanche came up with as far as their rings. Cause Tampa kept pushing the envelope. They had like the, the hubcap spinner feature. So uh, we got that. And then it's a 10 30 flight on Thursday, right over to Pennsylvania. Uh, Going to land in Pittsburgh, hit the ground running. We have a, a bar appearance before the Pittsburgh Penguins open up their season at home against the coyotes. Grinelli, I'm going to throw it back to you to let everybody know, or RA, to let everybody know where that uh, that showing is going to be before we kick off the season in Pittsburgh. 
It is at Tequila Cowboy. That is 380 North Shore Drive in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the meet and greet is from four to seven. Merle, remember the, what was that bar we went to for the, the Steelers games? Uh, high tops. Oh, my God. <laughs> the bars in this city, you guys, are the biggest gong show I've ever experienced in my life. And mainly, I guess it was the Steelers games that we'd be there. I remember we were at, what was the other one? Um, Oh, I know the one where it's when you met Mario and you had bloodshot eyes. It was Tequila Willie's 50 cent okay, so shots, I thought it was tequila. drinks, beers on Wednesdays. Yes. Why, why, why yes. did you have bloodshot eyes? Because you puked? Because I got bugsy the night before. <laughs> oh, okay. And I was throwing up the whole morning before I was at the rink. And then I met Mario after with Merle's. I couldn't even see straight. M- Malone. <laughs> Rookie bitch. <laughs> But I just, in saying tequila, tequila Jacks, sorry, G. Tequila sorry. Willies. Tequila Cowboys oh. is where we are going. <laughs> I heard tequila and I tequila. thought of Pittsburgh bars. All right, so tequila Willies. We'll see you Thursday. Oh, my well, Tequila God. Cowboys. Stop. Tequila Cowboys. Cowboys. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. Can you just say the goddamn Stop. name Stop. right for the fans? Dash three. <laughs> tequila <laughs> Cowboys. It's 3.30 on a, on a Monday, guys. I'm completely this is the type fine. Of I don't know what's going on. This hey. is the type of performance you have before they made the call to get Kunitz over. for <laughs> The trade is in. It's a one for one. Um, <laughs> what, do you the, th- what do you do on those hikes, Biz? Is, is this like headphones in or are you just full no, with nature? No, I actually, uh, I actually went with my ex-girlfriend. We had a great little hike and, uh, you know, just. Oh. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, Whoa. yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll pump the brakes here, busy boy. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. I, yeah, we had a, so we had there a could great... be a reunion here, or there could uh, be a. To, uh, I'll, I'm going to put my best foot forward, but anyway. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. All right, uh, buddy. I like hearing that. Good for you, dude. But but I had to take it easy because we got. I, I mentioned the 10 day uh, work bender we have coming up, and the, it doesn't stop there. Tequila Cowboys off to the rink to watch Pittsburgh Coyotes oh. the next day. Ooh, a little sound check in the morning. Make sure the make sure the mics are actually working for this one. And one of the biggest moments in, in Chicklets history, we have a, a live show at a theater. We sold out uh, 800 tickets in eight minutes, and then we decided to put another 200 on sale. So we have a thousand people live in attendance at what venue, uh, Grinelli? I'm going to throw it back over. It's called Carnegie of Homestead Music Hall. So we will be there. The live show will kick off. We have some special guests that we're, we have a very special announcement. That's all we're going to say for now. And then we keep on rolling. We got a sandbagger on Saturday, unnamed guests as of right now. And then Saturday night, a, a live viewing party to, to uh, get the Barstool Sportsbook going. I'm sure Merle's is going to have a couple fun props. Mm-hmm. You have been on fuego lately, and that should cap off the trip. Uh, we will try to uh, get the, the Steelers buccaneers game in on sunday not sure if we have tickets quite yet and then of course a live recording podcast but what the fuck has been going on with all these bets merles it's a heater i i came on here i don't think you i think it was when ra and grinnell and myself we did one of the interview pods and we were talking about preseason nhl and i said you can make a bundle on it if you want to put in the work and check the lineups because a lot of these teams send up the ahl squad for the road games so I just hitting those and then it, it was so hot. I said, why not dabble into the NFL? So I start hitting the NFL games. And then my favorite one, I picked Cleveland Indians in baseball because Ohio got announced that day as the big deal brewing state. And I said, Hey, when you're this hot, that's the kind of mojo, the karma you need. And they won that game. So they swept, uh, didn't they? Or did they? they yeah, they won, they won both games. So yes. um, it, it's been a hell of a run. Um, I've I've got like nine windows open right now with all the different lines and matchups and and I'm ready for the week. The problem is, and and for anyone who knows Morals very well, you're well aware that he's so hot. Right as we're all going to meet each other, <laughs> and oh. God damn it, this could be tough to continue because when we're all together, mm-hmm. Mur. We have to finally get some wins because it's usually yeah. the exact opposite. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited. I hit the I hit the bar stool uh, prop from Big Cat that Judge would hit the 62 home runs. So that's been sitting in my bar stool account since last time we were in Jersey. So it's going to yeah. be a good trip. You made me a bunch of dough last week. I had a nice little winner too. Uh, not too often you hit a 50 to one shot Thursday night's game. I put a bet in there'd be no touchdowns in the game. 
There were no touchdowns no in the game. Shit. Oh. 50 to one. That was 50 to one. I had on it. Yeah. No touchdowns. And I don't know if you saw the game with like how many times they almost got a touchdown. Right it, was, at the end. it was also one of the worst games of, of uh, I've ever seen. <laughs> All right. was the only big... happy man in America that day. <laughs> exactly, man. I, I whacked, whacked it pretty good. I was, uh, I was pretty fight up. And then it went like literally down to the last play. If they score a touchdown, what Wilson, that last play, I get toasted literally at the end, knocked it down. I had the whole, I had the whole club dog going wild rooting for me. It was pretty good. Stuff. Since you've already brought it up like i almost feel bad for the guy like, it did come out afterward that he's injured but when he went up to the podium and, and gave his post-game press conference and then afterward he he like, like drops the let's ride as he walking away it's just oh no remember i asked a couple of weeks ago like what's the deal with the on so i'm so emerged in like the the memes of russ let's cook it's the funniest shit I've ever seen on the internet. No, it's let's ride. Yeah. Let's, ra- let's oh, ride. Oh, let's no, but it's also let Russ let's cook. cook. I think yeah. like that's one it's, of the things. Oh, okay, but yeah, he he says let's ride, and and yeah, then he's trying people- to get on the bandwagon of everybody rides. Let's Beat exactly. it, Russ. Ebr, stay, want, stay away. Want- <laughs> Leave it. Get out of here, Russell. <laughs> Go cook somewhere else. But he, Biz, I don't think he has a clue. I think that's the whole humor in it. This guy is absolutely foolish when it comes to like. Read in the room, right? That's kind of the saying, like, dude, you just had one of the worst losses ever. You signed for 270 million and you can't even throw a touchdown. Like he it's it's very it's very funny, though. It's very funny to see how it's all going to play out, because if he keeps up this like positive attitude stuff, imagine if he wasn't in Denver and he was in New York, someone would have killed him by now. So one of his teammates don't I, I don't know football very well. I just see the memes. I think it was number 25 for the Broncos was giving him the stank guy on the sideline worse than I've ever seen. And then of course, when he missed that wide open guy on one of the final drives, or if not the final drive, he just pigeon tossed his helmet. He was just fed up with the. But, but once again, it came out afterward that he has a torn lat. So I don't know if that's playing into the decision-making and, and, and lack of touchdown throwing, but uh, speaking of tearing shit, RA, Ugh. how you feeling, buddy? Already feeling a, li- a little right now yeah a little better today, the man. Pod. yeah i i, I don't, didn't do any i didn't like usually you tweak it back even something at my age something like sneezing but i did nothing i just all of a sudden felt this like wince and pain friday then a couple times friday night and then saturday man i, I couldn't get out of bed i had to like crawl to the bathroom i look like quasimodo walking around my house and uh i did a twitter poll uh, and uh it's funny like usually there's all kinds of assholes on twitter and stupid replies i think 99 percent of the, the poll replies were genuinely like I think it's this. I think it's that. People are actually pretty nice because you go on Web- WebMD, you're going to die tomorrow if you read all that shit. But uh, yeah, I feel a little better today. I, I didn't go to the clinic because obviously we're, we're recording the show today. So I'm going to get up tomorrow and see if it's if it's if it feels like this. I'm going to go to the clinic, check it out. But uh, I don't care if they got to put me in one of those Hannibal Lecter fucking things and fly me down to Pittsburgh or one of those and wheel me around. I'm going to fucking I'm going to be there if I got to get a manservant or what. But uh, I ain't missing this fucking. I'll push you. Around, I'll wipe your right. ass. Yeah, all right. I won't do that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you say clinic, are you going to go to your doctor or like go to a minute clinic? No, well, no, I get the, the Bunker Hill Clinic right up the street. I have a, my PCPs up there. They're all part, oh, okay. part of the MGH thing. So, yeah, I, I, I kind of got a bit of a hook up there. If I got to text someone, they can get me on the sneak usually quick. So they're probably uh, going to want an MRI. A lot of that stuff can end up being like a disc being herniated and then it's on the nerve. Yeah. And then that's like the pain where you actually it's at, full blown debilitating. Like I, when you texted the group, I felt so bad for you because I've been there and it's, oh. it's hell on earth. And biz, we know Bill, biz in the L five S one crew. You <laughs> should have t-shirts no. made. No, I'm an L five S one expert at this point. All right. I, I would advise even anyone. Like I, I didn't go through a surgery. Like I, I ended up getting MRIs. I got the, the cortisone shots uh, right up the hoop, mm. but anything you can do to avoid surgery, because at that point, then you, you could potentially be in one for the rest of your life. The, the natural approaches is, is usually what helps. I don't know if you ever, do you ever foam roll RA? Uh, no, wait, is that, you out there foam rolling? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, may, may, yeah. we like, had to got, beg him to start going on a walk once a day. Hey, I mean, hey, he ain't exactly on a that's lacrosse what, ball. That's what, that's what into happened. The, I try to exercise. See this lacrosse ball? I go right at my arse with this lacrosse ball, and it just relieves a lot of the stress around the back, er, the lower back area anyway. Or, RA, maybe maybe some Bikram Yogam. I could see you hitting up some, some hot Bikram yoga. Yogam. I know there's a wake up of fat in there, but I, hey. I was going to say, I might want to put a clothespin <laughs> on my nose, but yeah, and like I said, I don't have a history of this. I don't have back, like, back issues. I obviously wasn't an athlete, so that, that's what it is. It's just come out of nowhere. It's not like I could point to, to one thing, but you know, we'll, we're going to suck it up, work on it, and um, like I said, they're going to fucking – Drag me from keep keep me from Pittsburgh this week. There's so. a business opportunity for you. Start doing uh, hot yoga. 
Mm. Wick, wicked lot of fat and hot yoga studios. <laughs> Sounds right up my alley. We haven't gotten, well, we have, but Ryan, the Wit Dog Whitney, what's going on, guy? What did you do all weekend? Oh, uh, this weekend played golf. Uh, it was beautiful out, played in the morning. It, just an amazing, amazing couple of days. And it all started last week, boys. We recorded Monday night last week. Well, I was in the uh, in the first day of uh, the old sandwich pro scratch invitational um, where a pro plays with an amateur and you go out and you have a two day four ball. So best score. I mean, we, Ian Baker Finch has won this tournament. The guys won the British Open. You know, it's in the locker room. You walk into old sandwich locker room and there's a kitchen area. It's a men's locker room, but there's a nice like it looks almost like a little restaurant, the fireplace and a painting of one of the beautiful holes and then the bar. And then if you keep going through some cowboy doors, you tequila cowboys showed out Thursday night, you keep going down and that's where all the lockers are in the bathroom and the shower and the steam room. What makes the place so special? And on there, they have the boards of holes in one. You know, people had hole in ones on each hole and they have the member member winner and the member guest winner. But in the first area you walk in where the restaurant is, where everyone sits after rounds in this beautiful hangout 19th hole, there's one board and it says the old sandwich pro scratch invitational. And now Jim Renner, good friend of myself, PGA Tour player right now, I believe he's got some medical starts in the Corn Ferry Tour, but an amazing golfer and yours truly sits on that board till the end of time. And it was probably the best moment of my golfing career in winning it because it was so memorable being out there with two good buddies. Like I said, Jim Renner, our buddy, our friend, our caddy, Mike Carbone, also played in four or five PGA Tour events, a special two days. And we finished it off in the rain and we shot four under the first day. And in the second day, we're three under through five holes, seven under, right? Let's keep going. It's fucking blowing 30 miles an hour. It's 50 degrees and it's raining. It's just absolute British Open type weather. And we go about we go about our business and there's bogeys to be had. And we made a couple bogeys and then we made a birdie back. And then we get uh, to 17. It's a par three, 210 yards biz. It's playing 240. My buddy. He rips it dead left. Ren dog. First bad shot of the tournament for this guy. I go in the bunker. He makes this miraculous shot out of the woods just to get on the green. And he nestles the putt up there and he taps in for bogey. That's big, right? Because I actually hit a great bunker shot to about 10 feet. The next putt doesn't matter, biz. We're thinking we're in the lead by maybe, maybe two, but probably one. I leave the putt three fucking feet short. <laughs> next one doesn't matter, biz. I leave it three fucking feet short. So we bogey. All right, let's go to 18. 18, my buddy Rendog. And mind you, the first day, the guy shot 68, I think, when our team scored 67. Amazing player. But 18T, sorry, Rendog. He blew it 400 yards right. This thing's fucking gone. It's The hole is 495, par four, playing dead into the wind. I hit driver. I'm in play. Thank God. I hit three wood. I still have 40 yards to the green. But we never found his ball, mind you. But while we're over there looking for all these balls, we found six, seven balls. None of them are his. It's like, got one. Fuck, no. It's just so miserable. We threw them all in the back of the cart, just whatever. And then we go on. I chip it up. It rolls back to like 30 feet. It was up close. It hit the spine, rolled back 30 feet. It was a tough pitch. I now have to two putt for bogey. I nestled up there to a foot, knock it in. But bogey, 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 we just finished. We think we lost. I'm devastated. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? We just lost that tournament and Renner and Carpone said, let's just drive in. You never know. Fuck. What are we going to do now? And we're just, yeah, you're right. You're right, boys. And we go in and we're just standing around. We're standing around the cart, just a little despondent. I'm just like, what the fuck? Why can't you just do something, Ryan? You leave that putt <laughs> short on 17. And I'm just staring at all the balls we found. And I just grabbed one randomly. And I looked at it and I said, holy fuck, boys. I think we won. They're like, What are you talking about? <laughs> the ball I found for Chicklets listeners. You remember Ned Haven? Haven benefit strategies because a month prior, me and Ned are playing and he hit one 400 yards right on 18 Go and we on. never found it and we never found it. But one of the balls, one of us found happened to be his. And I realized we went, I go, boys, this is a fucking sign. Ned is with point. Us. We walked yeah. in one by one champions nice. forever. Champions forever. Hey, on so, top of that, didn't you have his, his uh, surprise 40th birthday party? And then Nettie's surprise 40th birthday party was Saturday. I should have mentioned that. Wow. I'm telling you, the, the wildest pack of characters ever Whoa. come together for one. It was basically like a wedding. Let's be at Loco in South Boston at 6 p.m. Ned's arriving at 630. The guy came in. He didn't have a fucking clue. 
<laughs> he's like, oh, no. Well, apparently his wife somewhat gave it away a little bit before they were leaving the house, but she had a million things running. I still don't think he knew. I was with him a couple of days before. He didn't even mention a thing. So it was an it was a time. I saw Ryan Lannon, former Chicklets guest. Oh, <laughs> saw, yeah. a saw a bunch of characters. He had his dog with him. He had his fucking dog with him in the bar. In the bar? Yeah. yeah he's got this little dog. <laughs> I, I don't remember his name right now. I should remember his name. Sorry, Lano. But he's, he's been on the show. So it was a fantastic w- week for, for myself. Like, I got to be honest. Like, we're flying high right now. The show's doing great. I'm feeling good. Kids are running around buzzing. Riders doing hockey. It's just been great. And now we're going back to Pittsburgh. We're going back to Pittsburgh. I think I got some family coming for the live show. It's going to be a time. Same. It's going to par- be a time. My parents are coming in for it. Are they? Nice. Yeah. So we have to keep it PG. Yeah, Sonk. right. <laughs> yeah, sound. You're just uh, like, yeah. some guy comes over to your mom right as you start talking, just gives her these giant headphones. She's like, what's this? Like, just for 10 minutes and three seconds, put these on. We're about to hear something you never want to hear as a mother. Uh, Biz, I'm oh, not she's sure. heard it all. Trust me. She's she's heard and, and she's seen, seen it all. It all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, she has. She's walked in on you 14 oh, crazy. times. Yeah. Uh, Biz, I'm not sure if we mentioned the watch party bar. It's at McFadden's. Uh, G could probably pull up the address for us in a second. McFadden's for the watch party Saturday night in Pittsburgh. Uh, I have an apology to make uh, once again to the fellas in Dirty Honey. <laughs> Uh, when I was talking about Bowie, the mascot, last week, and they said he played with Mud Honey at Seattle, and I got my honey bands mixed up. So, Mud Honey, you, you probably already hate me from the last time, and just want to apologize for calling you Mud Honey, not Dirty Honey. So, I fucked that one up. Just so, wanna... Dirty Honey's the band that are already prior to this had the whole crowd chanting "fuck RA," right? Yes, no. No. yes, yes. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> you. I'm, I'm interested to see what the next punishment is. They need to write a song like legit. Fuck R.A. Or okay, something. so um, pu- the word punishment just got, got something going in my brain. So did you watch the last TNT broadcast towards the end when we were talking about that goal breakdown between Dallas and Colorado? No, I actually caught you guys for the early game you did. Yeah, and, and we, me and Talk were going back and forth on a play where it was a somewhat of an odd man rush coming across the blue line where Gerard points to the far guy for the back checker to get a little bit of confusion. New, New Hook ends up over back checking, and then they score the first goal of the game Dal- to put Dallas up one nothing. So uh, it, it was uh, considering you didn't see it, I, I guess I don't go, need to go any further in it. But that's a, that's one of the the, the awesome parts about uh, working with Talk is he's constantly giving you the coach's perspective and breaking down these types of video so i'm learning constantly about uh about uh, you know back checks and, and little details of the game so i ended up taking the l on that because he ended up messaging barube and Sull- coach sullivan for pittsburgh and they both ended up agreeing with him so i just figured i'd, I'd uh, take the l and put it on my forehead because i don't know if talk's going to be listening but uh, i was wrong and i will do my push-up pyramid as punishment mr talkett all right, gee, we got to talk, talk to you about a little content that went up last week from the big boss, El Portnoy. I uh, had a blog about you and give us the address as well. I mean, yeah, it's first off, it's just great to see the boss man blogging. It's truly setting an example from the top. So that's something you just respect and you truly just love to see it. And two, anytime the boss agrees with you, it's it's an unbelievable feeling, especially a man of Dave Portnoy's stature. When he agrees with you that this deal that Bob Mennery fucking threw away from the Nelk boys is fucking asinine. It's insane. Yeah, it's it's a great feeling. So a lot of people were coming at me being like, how you feeling, Mike? Dave's coming at you. I felt great. Dave agreed with me. Nothing he said was wrong. So I feel good. I mean, I, I don't know how many people who are listening uh, care about the drama or the podcast drama. Uh, I would say probably the biggest podcast scandal since the Caller Daddy one in which Bob Menery started a podcast with the Nelk boys. Uh, they have been getting pretty ugly online. Like, it's been pretty vicious now. The blows are going back and forth where basically the Nelk is saying in eight months of working together on the podcast, Menery made one point, what, 1. $1.2 million? That's in correct. Eight months? And- in his in his eight months, where every also everything as far as flights, uh, hotels, flying first class, uh, the meals, everything was taken care of. On top of that, received fifty percent of merchandise from the podcast sale. So I would imagine they have a specific Nelk uh, uh, podcast merch line, Grinelli. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Full send. Yes. What? What? So I'll yeah. read the full deal. Let me read the full deal. It was thirty percent of all ad revenue. He got seven point five k per show. 50% and how many percent, once a week? Once a week show? Yeah. Uh, yes. 50% of all podcast merch as well. So I believe that came out to around 1.2 mil in 10 months. In eight months and, the, and he wasn't happy? 
Wasn't no, happy. I mean, that's that's what that's what Kyle went off on. In, Bob went off on Instagram. Then Kyle went off on Instagram. And I just shot. I, we, we've come to I've come to friends be with these guys with, with Kyle from Nelk. I've come to be buddies with him. He came into our box in Vegas. He came into our box in uh in, in oh, Edmonton. Edmonton. And I, I just shot him a text it was like anyone who throws turns down this deal is fucking crazy. Like that is a biz. I mean, you're a guy who who pays attention to this kind of like stuff. That's a crazy podcast deal. Well, and, and Nelk had already built a juggernaut. I guess the defensive memory is, you know, he did get a few big name guests and he does have a big social following to begin with. But the, what Nelk has built, they have an infrastructure where they're able to, you know, have ad sales and not saying that memory didn't bring any ads in either. But I mean, looking at those numbers, man, given it's their podcast and it seems as if though that was the deal that was signed now on the flip side is he's saying that that's not the full agreement and they're not posting everything and in fact somewhat some of the the ad sales were being hidden or swept under the rug so you just it, it got ugly online i would imagine it's probably not over and, and and the pettiness ensues so it's just i mean that's a that's a lot to walk away from and put your foot in the ground if if uh, you think you're entitled to more and Dave's not wrong for calling me out there because it's like it's the biggest it's the biggest podcast drama in the world. And Kyle posts my text message to him on his story, which he asked me if he could do. I said it's fine. But I figured he's going to post 10, 15 people being like, this is crazy. He posted just me in the midst of like a rant that probably got like 10 million views. And then like the one justification he uses is spitting chiclets producer. Mike Grinnell says this is a terrible deal. So it's like, <laughs> fuck. I mean, Dave's Dave, right. Dave's Dave right. I love my guy. Kyle. Shops. So the guy, the Mentory guy probably hates your guts. Yeah. I mean, he, whether he does or doesn't, I have no ill will towards Bob Mentory. I was just saying like the deal yeah. that was posted online was a crazy deal. Bob saying that's not the deal, but I'm, I mean, Kyle posted the contract. I thought it was a crazy deal. So I texted Kyle. Why wouldn't he just like show his, uh, you have the contract too, right? Everyone, the, the company you signed with has a contract and you have a copy of the contract. So if they're not that, that's a, no, that's a great point. I never even thought of that. If that's yeah. a tough win for him when the deal comes out, unless the guy's legit lying about the deal. And then that's what it is. That's a lot of dude. 1.2 million for eight months? Gee, that's a that's a good question. So did Menery post what, what he said that the deal was afterward? So Menery posted what he said the deal was. And then Kyle was like, no, this is what it really is. And then Menery then said what what I just read, the 30% ad revenue, 7.5K per show. Menery said that was a lie. Oh, and okay. then Kyle posted a picture of the actual contract with the, with the, the legalities signature. of it all and says that that is exactly what he was getting. No, wait, you just got right to the point, though. It's like if, if that wasn't the contract, send the real one over, because if you sign a contract and you're you have a big, copy of it, you're playing big ball. If you don't have a copy of it, then I don't know, fire agent. And if, if you, you don't have a copy agent, of a contract yourself. you signed, the contract's pretty much useless. I do not have a copy of the contract. That there, that exp- that's perfectly <laughs> for everyone listening. There you go. Right there. That exactly proves my point. Yeah. Oh. So that was drama. Oldie that was the shit. podcast drama. Yeah. There it hey, is. you got him blogging again, though, G. Yeah. It's just great to see. It's something you truly respect yeah. and love to yeah. see when the guy up top is blogging, setting the example for everyone. I boy guy doesn't even do his shows anymore. Guy, guy's in Florida. Doesn't do advisors. Doesn't do because he's got to save money on taxes. Fuck gives up on his shows. Imagine one of us just quitting chicklets to save money on taxes. <laughs> no. I, I, I don't count me out. <laughs> <laughs> don't count me out. This is going to be on fucking uh, yeah. the Cayman Islands down there. Yeah. <laughs> I just want enough money to have to save that much money on the taxes where you just, the show's not even worth it. Well, what's that matter? Yeah. Just All right. What, finish, uh, man. we got to get into some hockey. That was some fun banter, but, uh, some important things to discuss. We, we do actually, I just want to drop one quick note before we do Paul. Uh, I told you guys, I, I had Jerry duty the other days. I was the other days I was on a case for a couple of days and I was walking home by the garden. They stopped in front of the garden to take a video to drop the new chiclets up. And the guy's, Hey, are you are said, Yeah. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Where you're from, blah, blah, blah. And, and he kind of waited and he says, Hey, do you mind if I, you know, talk to you about something? It's, it's a little personal. And, uh, he proceeded to tell me that when, we've talked about a player who had uh, testicular cancer a, a couple of years back. And I mentioned, you know, guys, and you're in the shower, you're already, you're already touching yourself down there. Give yourself a little check. And the dude did. And he, and he felt something, you know, out, out of whack. He went to the doctor. He had stage one testicular cancer, got it taken care of right, right out of the right. Nipped it right in the bud. Didn't, didn't become a, a huge situation because he heard it on the show. So I just want to reiterate guys, if you know, whatever it might be, prostate, testicular, whatever, you don't have to be an old guy, check yourself out. 
uh, cause things could go wrong quick and, and, and go get a doctor, go get an MRI, do what you got to do. So this guy, I had tears in my eyes. I gave him a big hug after I was just walking home, not expecting to have a moment like that, but he, he was very open. He, he shared his story with me. And I just wanted to tell, tell that story. And again, reiterate the PSA to everybody. If, uh, if you're feeling something, get it checked out because something like that might, might've saved the guy's life. So it was great to hear. And that's I'm amazing. Right. Well. Right. Right. I've always been, th- it's so weird touching your beanbag too. It's like so delicate and like, it's it's just, it's, I gotta, I gotta remember to do that. All right. I'm glad you said that, but I'm always so nervous touching my, I don't think we can just glance over. I mean, that that was unreal. All right. Thank you for sharing. You glanced over jury duty. How, how far can you dive into that? Oh, I know we we can dive in. I know it's typically a a boring topic. I'm one of the few people who actually likes going to jury duty. I mean, (laughs) I did, I did go to Northeastern for criminal justice back in the day, seven and a half months. But I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to be a lawyer, but I still have a kind of a, a, a like for all that stuff. I went in, I got picked to be on the jury. I was like, oh, this is good because you know, I like the whole procedure. It's like a play and you got to decide which version you like better. Obviously, with somebody's life at stake sometimes. Um, and then they had 14 jurors. And then right before you go to deliberate, they cut two of them and make them alternates. I was one of the alternates. So I got totally shocked. I couldn't do the deliberation. I couldn't vote not guilty because they got what put the guy do the room. He was uh, accused of uh, possession of a gun in a pe- possession of it with ammunition. Uh, he slow rolled the stop sign, undercover cop cop, pulled him over. Uh, and uh, during the course of the trial, there's nothing at one point where you, we could say, okay, this guy is enough to convict this guy. He was in his mother's car, who she lets a lot of people use the car. And then they, they had a witness on the stand, a fingerprint witness, and they found prints on the gun. They were partial prints. And they, they asked them, well, what's the final verdict? And like, they're inconclusive. So you got a witness says the fingerprint's inconclusive. The car's not his. There was just no way you could have possibly convicted the guy. Like, so we were waiting. 20 minutes later, they came out with the verdict because everybody realized. Now, it's not a question of you think he had it or was his. It's like what the state presents as evidence. And it was such a weak case. And we asked the judge after, like, you know, basically, how did he get this fired? She said they and, and the grand jury indicted him. So, like, he, you know, that you gotta, it's gotta go up to the case. The prosecutor could have said no. So they, it was just not enough evidence at all. Uh, but the court officers, you guys are lucky you weren't in last week. Cause if you get picked for a grand jury biz, you have to go in three days a week, every, like every week for like six months. And like, I, I, I heard you could be in there oh, forever. Goodness. Yeah. You gotta go. Oh, it's nightmare. Three days oh. a week for three months. And you go through all different cases and, and decide if this Holly shore style, do they make you stay in a hotel and not, <laughs> communicate with your uh with your relatives and shit i, I believe so with the grand jury oh stuff. my yeah. god and you, wait and you're only going in three days of the week so the other four days you're just sitting in a hotel room well i with think no they, phone no tv i think they let you go home the other days but yeah you're, you're, you're locked up in, in a hotel oh for a my days. god yeah. would fucking well, suck so when you're when you're doing like a murder trial it, it, uh, that's probably the most extreme so in in those cases you're 100 percent you're you're locked in a hotel room not going to interact with anyone and that could drag on for for six nine months in some cases a year yeah yeah and you know the, the the state's probably like you're, you're you're trying to figure out if a guy committed a murder and the state's probably giving you an uncrustable and a dr pepper like once a day you're going to get zero food. Probably. It's probably an absolute nightmare to be involved in one. Of what happens at work though? Like if you're out nine months, say like, does I know the state have to pay your company yeah. to then fill that position or no, pay you. you? No, they pay you get paid. It's, it's like a, the government, not a day off. You're, you're giving your, your service to the government. I mean, I was over there like nine, what, nine hours for two days. So it's like, I mean, if I was in an office job th- still at the state, I'd be like, yeah, day off going to jury duty, which some of the jobs I had, I'd rather go to jury duty. He's like, Dr. Pepper and Uncrustables. This is unbelievable. No, Sign actually, me wait, up. they had subs. I love to become a full-time too. juror. The, they had Spuckies, though. They, the, the, the subs they had were pretty good. So Pension like, must be amazing. <laughs> but it was cool, though, Biz. It's like, you know, it's, to have like 12 strangers who from all diverse backgrounds and, you know, men, women, black, white, whatever, all together and, and like, decide the fate of a 13 stranger it's, it's kind of an amazing process when you take pot and all yeah. of it. And like you know you're never going to see these people again and we're responsible for this guy's you know future in, in a lot of ways and you kind of you know like it's a lot of things going on tough tough in this country right now it was just nice to sort of take pot in, in that as, aspect of the democracy and justice and the judges real happy with us so it, it was a, it was a cool experience i just wish i could have gone through with the whole thing but because uh, yeah if i go on a murder case that's that's one of the guy yeah my cousins are uh, bank robbers they're all guilty everyone's guilty come out on this one i i would like make that up and get bounced because if you say shit like that they don't want nothing to do with you they'll tell you to screw wouldn't be lying either uh today's episode we have the Detroit Red Wings coach, Derek Lalonde. We're going to bring him on in a little bit. My pal from North Adams State College way back in the day. 
great stuff. New Red Wings fans are going to love it. By the way, shout out to the Lions fans who reached out to me over the weekend. They were in town playing the Patriots. A bunch of guys reached out, offered me tickets and tailgating and stuff. But the back had me on the DL. But just want to say thanks to all those fans. Also, Merle, what a, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. What a get by RA getting a head coach of the Detroit yeah. Red Wings on here. The Wet, Wet Wings. Uh, it's, he, it's, was, the, he was hilarious. Like, I'm telling everyone listening, this guy was one of the best interviews we've done in a long time. I, I just think the way he tells stories, I'd never met him. The fact RA and him go back to college that doesn't even exist anymore, right? That isn't a school now, RA, correct? It, it, they they had enough after that last year. <laughs> Once you hear about RA's <laughs> apartment above the bar, it'll make sense that this isn't a school. Everybody yeah, they, dropped out. They renamed, rebranded, but like the guys, gals who went there when I did, we have like no real emotional connection to it anymore because not only they changed the name, they kind of like, acted like they were better than the school it used to be before. So people like and that. you guys don't remember it. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Merles, I know you're on your way over. I know you love the pink Whitney. The NHL is here. So make sure everyone is stocked up on everyone's favorite five times distilled vodka infused with that fresh pink lemonade flavor. Whether you're celebrating your team or whether you're celebrating them tanking for Badad, get some of that birdie juice on hand to go with your game. Merles, how many uh, how many shots? What's the over under on shots for you this week, Merles? So nips. Uh, I usually do one for every time one of my team scores, but I, I I got an amazing video. I don't know if you guys saw this one on Instagram. This kid Zach sent it to me. He took one of the big deal brewing cans, and then he had the pink Whitney nip, and he uh, what do you call it a shotgun? And he shotgun the the can with the pink Whitney nip. So the pink Whitney nips hanging there, and then he chugged it all and, and sent me the video. Uh, these people are nuts. So I, I won't be doing any of those, but I'll be doing a lot of pink Whitney nips every time one of our team scores. And I can tell you now we're going to be on Pittsburgh a lot this week. Uh, last question, bubble hockey in attendance at the bar. Oh, I, I would love it. I would love it. I haven't got to play since oh, I beat oh, up on Frankie Borelli oh, in Buffalo. Oh, uh, uh, you haven't also got to play since that guy worked you over. Uh, let's, whoa, let's whoa, not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was, I was on rollerblades right after one of my rollerblade games. And that was the first game of the weekend. I finished That's funny. off. Like, was on everything Frankie. but rollerblades that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything but oh, hey, Grinnell, do we have a bubble hockey yeah. machine coming? Uh, we will. It will be at McFadden's. Okay. Oh, all right. So I'm come challenge Mer. Come yeah. challenge him. We're gonna have a skills competition too outside of McFadden's, where it's gonna be like accuracy shooting and all that kind of stuff, all presented by Body Armor, of course. So Merles, let's get you in the mix there as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. I I want. I would. I'm glad too. When when you start playing, I want to be there. I'll take bets. I will. I will be the book. During okay. that, so yeah, I'd love to be amusement only. I'm gonna win for some money only. <laughs> for amusement only. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, joking, Barstool, joking. Barstool, yeah, yeah. Barstool Sportsbook's gonna have line on Merle's bubble hockey game soon. That's how much they've been. That's how much he's been costing them with all these winners he's Ooh. been putting out. Seriously, no shit. Well, Biz, like you said, hockey is here. Time to dive into it. We got 30 teams kicking off this week, but the NHL season officially kicked off at the O2 Arena in Prague over the weekend. Preds and Sharks played a pair of games. Preds beat them both times. But uh, there was a lot of criticism about this. Like the league, A, starting while there's still preseason games going on, and B, putting the first game of the year on NHL Network on a Friday afternoon that a lot of people didn't know. I mean, I think they're probably valid criticisms, Biz, but th doesn't this sort of feel like these games are for more Europe to grow the game and these guys sort of having a homecoming? What, what, what's your take on these, Biz? Yeah, it's definitely to grow the game. And, and I think they do a great job of, of, of putting the signature players that are from those home countries in those games. So it's more, I mean, I think we talked about it last year when, when uh, was it Hedman? And, and Tampa Bay, they went, ended up going back to Sweden. It might have been two years ago, but it's just more about, you know, like you said, to grow the game and for those guys to get that special moment. I mean, Yo Roman Yossi getting to go back home and, you know, ends up, uh, you know, ends up, well, that was, that was in the preseason one that they played, correct? Well, yeah. even then, yeah. e e even in that situation, for, for him to get to go home and play in front of his home crowd, that's that's more about these players who are helping grow the game as well. So uh, I have no problem with it. It's a fun little teaser to warm up the year. And and, and it, hey, and for for some of our gambling crew, mm -hmm. a good opportunity to warm warm the bus up before we get going. So I think that um, I think moving forward, it would be cool to see if they were able to do other things and implement Europe in order to 
kind of grow the game in that way. Like we talk about the world cup of hockey coming back. I know that they're probably going to put the first one on North American soil soil. If they haven't already decided that, but at some point it would be cool if they move that world cup of hockey overseas somewhere. And that would be an even bigger opportunity in order to grow the game. So, I mean, Listen, we're splitting hairs here. I think the NHL is doing an incredible job in, in trying to do that and, and take everybody's opinion in on it and definitely room for growth in the same breath. And how about that salad bar on Yossi? Did you see his hair? I mean, it, he's always had nice hair, but like that was like a skyscraper on his head in the couple of pictures we saw. Be careful. The, Be careful yeah, how, what you, how you pump his tires are. Right? You don't get in trouble here. How about the guy dropping the pucks have salad? Yarmer Yager oh. made an appearance. Oh yeah. Oh. That was that was good shit. Uh, also, Yossi donated twenty five sets of equipment to some girls' programs in Bern, Switzerland. So good That's job awesome. there, Roman Yossi. Good stuff. Uh, moving right along, the Dallas Stars do not have to worry about starting the season without their best player, as Jason Robertson agreed to a four year, thirty one million dollar deal. Comes out to seven point seven five million average annual value. Uh, the, 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 uh, he'll be a twenty seven year old restricted free agent in twenty twenty six with a nine point three million dollar qualifying offer. Uh, what you think pretty good deal for both sides, puts them on a great track to cash in even again, later down the line. Yeah. The deal makes so much sense to me that what the hell, why was, why couldn't this be signed before camp? That's the first thing I saw when I, it's like every single person said it'd probably end up being this yet. Somehow it took them to where, I mean, I'm sure he'll be completely fine. The kid's probably going to light it up again, but to not be around for camp, it, it is, it is not exactly ideal. Right. And I know that team, Nobody knows what's going on there. We talked about it last week, but it's it's just odd to me that it took that long for the deal to end up being exactly what everyone thought it would be. So good for him. Gets a ton of money. He, he deserves it. And he really could have easily uh, been given a long-term deal. But with all the cap issues that team has, this is what it had to be. It was just surprising that it, it took so long to get done. Yeah, I, I agree with you in that sense, especially for a team that I think most of us have probably getting in a wild card position. Uh, I don't know if you guys have them maybe doing better than that, but you're going to need every point you can get at the beginning of the season. You're going to have to come out of the gates hot. And, you know, hopefully it, we, we talked about his commitment to the game and, and maybe how little that will eventually affect his performance early on. But you have to wonder, though, you got to get your reps in, got to get your touches and comfortable back with your teammates. Um, as far as the contracts concerned, I looked at, like, look at this kind of like, like similar to like a Matthew style deal where, man, this guy's going to be 27 years old when he's done this deal and he's going to be in the prime. And at that point, we've talked about where the cap's going to be. If he continues what he's been doing and he continues to be that point of game player, he is going to fucking ching ching because that first year that he would be on that new deal from my understanding, it would be the last year of uh, Ben and Sagan's deals uh, making what they're making. So is great he job UFA by, at the end biz, uh, you know, I have one more year. I think he'll be have, an RFA. He'll be an uh, RFA. Yeah, one, you'd have one more year, basically yeah. kind of how the, the Barzell situation would have played out. Yep. Yep. So, um, Aside, aside from that, man, it's it's great that they got their guy, and uh, what a, a great number for him. I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but Texas is a state that has no state tax, so I know that the the eight and change looks really good for those other players that sign those eight times eight point three five or eight times eight point two five. But given the fact that there is, of course, no state tax. Very similar number, guys. I'm no mathematician, but uh, right around there. Uh, congrats to Robo, man. Good deal. Good stuff. Can't wait to see him playing soon. Uh, also, the Flames made that big trade look even better uh, as they inked Mackenzie Wieger to an eight-year, $50 million extension. Comes out to six and a quarter a year. Uh, Merle's not too shabby for an undrafted guy who was playing on a third pair a couple of years ago, huh? Oh, that's an amazing, amazing deal. 50 million. You weren't drafted. I, whenever I see that kind of stuff, I think back to when, when you're like 18, 19, maybe you're thinking about quitting, playing what's going to happen. You stick with it. All of a sudden you got 50 million now. Unreal. Another defenseman who almost quit Dan Girardi. He was playing in the coast. That's where he started his career. And then fortunately got bumped up to the American league, became an all-star there. And I, I'm pretty sure he's got about 50 sheets in his jeans too. But uh, I tell you what, man, like, you, everybody's, everybody's given the W right now to the Calgary flames on what they've been able to do with that trade and then get these guys locked in. I think this is an excellent contract for the Calgary flames. I think everybody with being so, so, uh, um, not short sighted, but fresh in, in their minds that he, he had a difficult postseason. right? He made a, a few significant mistakes, but that was his really first test of, of, of playoff hockey with that much pressure with that team winning the president's trophy. So with, 
Zito making the move that he did and and getting rid of Huberto and Uyghur, I think this guy is great at both ends of the ice, and I think he's poised to have an excellent finish to his career in, in Calgary for this uh, long period of time. And talk about talk about a, a big piece for Calgary moving forward and, and, and really solidifying that top four D-men. Like their top four are, are excellent. You basically look at them uh, getting like Gabranson ended up going to Columbus and making 4 million. Like, I loved his season last year. I thought he was a beast, but this is, this is a fucking upgrade. And in a few years, when that cap goes up, this is going to seem like a, this is going to seem like a nothing burger as far as money you're given to a very good two way defenseman. And in Florida, there was, I mean, except for the times he was injured, a lot of times it's Ekblad running the power play. It's Ekblad collecting the points and Uyghur still lit it up. Um, so I, I think it's a great deal. And I got the chance. I met him randomly out to dinner when, when we spent a couple of weeks in Fort Lauderdale in February. Great guy. Super friendly. I'm sure it was surprising when it all went down. But to now get paid that much and to know that this is your home, right? There's so much to be said about being comfortable because you know you're going to be there for a while. And things change quickly in this league and in all pro sports. But right now, he's at a new spot. He knows they really want him. He's able to sign this life-changing deal and go into a season for a team that is really looking to make a long run because it's one thing to get traded from Florida and, and go to a, go to a good team. If you go to a bad team, that's just a kick in the dick. So he gets his deal and also the chance to compete for a Stanley Cup. It's a win-win. And wait, I, I said top four. I mean, look at their five best defensemen. You have Shillington, Anderson, Tanev, Weger, and Hannafin. And Hannafin. And then your your number six, who I think is a perfect number six, is Zadorov. Just punching anything in the face, just an absolute mutant out there on the ice. Exactly how you'd want your your Stones six. there too, right? You played yeah. with him. Yeah, He's a yeah. cannon. He, Oh, cannon. He's got the, the hardest half clapper I've ever seen in my life, just zipping by guys' ears. So uh, great. Listen, I, what, what more could have uh, Tree Living done? And then yeah. on top of that, signs another guy. Yep. Daryl. Daryl. <laughs> the, the extended coach, Daryl Sutter, two year extension that's going to keep him there till 2025. No real big shocker there. I, I don't know if this is the last year of his deal or, yeah, yeah, because this would have been three, four, five. So, yeah, you don't want a guy like that going in with a lame duck contract. So, He's well well established there, and we'll see if he get, adds a cup there like he got the two in uh, L.A. So Eastern Conference preview, boys. I know the folks have been waiting for it. We're going to go with the Atlantic Division first, and I figured I'd put Biz's favorite team off the top, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Last year, they finished with 115 points, but they lost in the first round, four games to three to Tampa. Uh, they're 10 to one to win the cup this year. Now, they had quite a bit of roster turnover. Uh, new faces in town include Matt Murray, Ilya Samsonov, Cal Yonkrock and Jordy Ben. They said goodbye to goalie Jack Campbell, uh, Ilya Mikheyev, Andre Kasha, Ilya Labushkin, and uh, Peter Morazic. But last year, Biz, once again, the first round bugaboo got him once more time. A 3 2 lead. They blew it, lost to Tampa. The fourth straight one and done on Kyle Dubas is watching the sixth straight for the franchise. Uh, as for the offense, Biz, we know what we're getting with the four guns up front Matthews, Mana, Tavares, Nylander. But, you know, the back end, you got Riley, Muslin, Hall, Brody, Giordano and a combination of Sandine and, and Lil, Liljer in there. And the goaltender, of course, Matt Murray, a big question mark. Well, what do you expect out of the Leafs this year, Biz, and how good are they going to do? Yeah, I mean, you said – did you say quite a bit of turnover or or, – or... Well, Yeah, I did. Yeah, I mean, the last, what, one, two, three, four, Based on who guys. they replaced the, the the skaters with, I would say it's it's a it's a it's basically an even trade. Um, and then it's just going to come down to goaltending. I mean, it's it, Dubas's hands are tied with what the cap situation is there. One thing I will credit Dubas for is he has signed some bad contracts, but every GM signs bad contracts. His ability to get rid of bad contracts is what makes him special. I think he's a, an incredible GM. I love the fact that he's going in this year, um, you know, playing for his next contract, essentially. And if he believes in a guy that he's had success with and he believes in from his Sault Ste. Marie days, I'm all for it. And and I, am I going to make excuses for everything that's happened in the past? No. All you Leafs haters can laugh at me. You guys could say, oh, yeah, this year's the year. This year's the year. I genuinely think at some point they are going to get over the hump. And why not this year? Why everybody's a, a, a one more year more experienced uh mind you uh one of the best players well the best one last year the mvp of the league austin matthews is basically in a contract year because come july 1st or whatever the date's gonna end up being for free agency depending on when they have it he's gonna be up for a new deal so he's going in there with with a shit ton to prove and i just think with that one more year experience under the belt and let's not forget 
yeah, did they lose to the defending Stanley Cup champions last year? But they did show in professional fashion where they fucking laid their balls on the line. And I think everybody can agree they should have won that last game. The only reason they lost game seven is because Vasilevsky. They outshot them. They fucking peppered them in that third period. So I think this is the year 100% mark it down. Clip it, Grinnell. They are going past the first round. Laugh at me in the fucking mentions. I don't give a flying fuck. They're going past the first round. Make a prop bet about it. I'd be willing to put thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on it if you okay, can get do me. it. Woo. Quarterfinals. Well, up. how much? Okay, how much do you want to bet me that they get past the first round? Whatever and you what, want. And, and what are the? I'll bet you a thousand dollars. How about Deal. that? Done. Deal. All right, let's go. And, and here's the thing. That's the biggest. And mind you, that's thing, the biggest dude. bet of my life. That's Here's the biggest the bet of my well, life. Yeah, I know. We've Leafs. seen the tickets of your $83 parlay. Oh, <laughs> dude. I'm conservative. No. All right. Hey, I'm I know, from well in Ontario. My this father team... had to work a whole day at the steel mill to make 83 bucks. So you can put graph skates on my feet. <laughs> that, that bet is like, it's probably way in odds of being in your favor. I would imagine if the Leafs have another season, like they probably will and should with this roster. They, they'll probably be minus 170, I'm guessing, in the first round. The Eastern Conference is stacked. Maybe not that much, but they are going to be strong favorites to not only win their division, but get out of the first round. Like, they, yes, it is a team that if they end up winning last year in either game six or game seven, they could have gone to the cup final. Like, they're that good. But fuck this, man. They can't. They got the goaltending is an enormous question mark. You do not know what you're getting out of either one of those guys. And 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 right now, why would you pick them to move on? Like you could keep saying it's going to happen at some point, but what is so different about this team? What makes oh, this team be like? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, this, just, this, I just I just said it. it They're goaltender. What? I just said it. They're goaltender. Okay. All right. Yeah. I I like the guy we got in Edmonton a little more than Matt Murray. Stanley Cups, great. Not the same player anymore. And and Biz. Wait, 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 oh, not you... to mention, you got such cap issues. Nick Robertson just lit it up in camp. He's not even on the team. Perfect. You... Yeah, no, it's not perfect. Well, what do you mean? You got a guy in the American Hockey League who can go get his reps in the top six down there, and if something goes wrong, you can call him up. You don't want to be wasting a guy's talent like that in the bottom six. What no, the he's, fuck got is that? he's got talent. He's got talent. He would be a hell of a bottom six, a third line or second line player for the Leafs. Yeah, but he could start the year in the minors. Don't, listen, let's not start questioning Dubas' decisions. He's one of the most respected GMs in the league. He's one of the most respected GMs in the league. And if he got fired by the Leafs, you don't think half the teams in the league would be offering a job tomorrow? And let you me can't ask question you question Sinus Tavares to that deal. No, can't I, question I wanna, that. No, nope. I want to. I want to. I'll actually ask this to Ari. I don't want to talk to you anymore. All yeah. right. At a certain point, did you not think that the Boston Red Sox were not going to get over the hump when they went down three zero to the New York Yankees the year they ended up coming back in that series and then winning the World Series? Did you not go into those last couple se seasons before they won it saying, "Yo, this is the year. This is the year they get it done." Uh, at that point, man, we were still like shell shocked. I just, we were just, we had very little hope, and especially after the way 2003 ended with Tim Wakefield coming in and getting fucking dings. Yeah, we were, it was like, we ain't going to believe it till we see it. Uh, we, we, very little hope, very little well, hope. Well, I'm going to believe it hands. before I see it. Yeah, that's oh. why it's a mute argument. It, it, they have a great mm -hmm. team because you're going to continue, and next year, if they lose in the first round, you'll just say it again. So here is the thing. There, I was open about they shouldn't have changed a thing. Sheldon Keith, no way. Dubis, no way after last season. How good they played losing to Tampa. I understood. If they lose in the first round this year, there has to be major changes. Or as a fan base, the Maple Leafs are pathetic. If the fans don't literally force them to change some major issues there, if they don't get out of the first round next year, it's a bigger joke of a fan base than I thought. Merle's. Absolute yeah. wagon. They're got there my you shirt go. back on. Welcome aboard. They got the goal. They got two options now for goalie. So one of them's got to play well. But the main reason is ever since this Blue Jays debacle, these memes have been hilarious on wow. Twitter. The one where Don't they even remind us. Scooby Doo, the guy picks up the mask <laughs> and who's really there? It's the Leafs. But, <laughs> but the best one, uh, the best one was they had Austin Matthews throwing out the first pitch. And it said, throwing away the first round curse. He oh. threw it on the Jays. So the Leafs curse is gone. They're going to the conference finals at least this year. Uh, that was a coaching issue, though. That wasn't a <laughs> personnel issue. That was coaching. Oof. They were up 8-1, and the guy <laughs> had one out to make. I think it was in the fifth inning. 
Yeah. The teams are uh, the, the, the hey, fuck analytics. That's <laughs> all got I got to say. Great, they got a great analytics. team. Biz. Yeah. We're they not arguing a, that. They got a great team. All right. 99%. We'll and it, and, not, and it's chance. it's just another it's another 82 games of nonstop leaf talk while nothing meaning jack shit until that first round. All right, what were you saying? 99% a 99% win probability in the fifth inning. And then it was like 98.5 a couple of innings later. I mean, the Leafs, the poor Leafs, they're just catching ricochet shots. They yeah. The season hasn't even started yet, and they're getting bombarded because of Toronto. And then just the way it happened, that little bloop single, two guys hit each other like the Bad News Bears, ball rolls out, two guys get hurt. It was just like, ah, this scud, man, this scud. But We already went through that moment, and it was against Montreal. That's, that's, that's behind us. Big right. things ahead, Leafs fan. Ignore, um, ignore the haters. Just to go back to the, the goalies for a sec, I you know I wrote wrote the outline. I think a lot, pretty much everyone in hockey is pulling for Matt Murray just on a personal level. And you know he he lost his dad a couple of years ago, and his game went sideways. And you can't help but think they're probably connected in some way. And I think everyone's rooting for him. But you know, should he he falter a bit? This Samsonov signing, man, I think this could be one of the sneaky better signings of the offseason. I mean, I know Washington wasn't great last year, but he's shown a lot of flash in, in the games he's played. I think there's something there. It wouldn't surprise me if he's the number one you know, come November on that team. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, we also want to say congrats to Joe Bowen on 40 years as the Leafs yeah. play-by-play guy. So congrats to Joe on that. We got to uh, get him on the pod. He must have stories for days. That would be a three-parter. <laughs> that would be a, that would be a Star Wars trilogy, all right? You know him at all? I've, I, well, just because when I was doing working with the Coyotes, yeah. we would bump into him when they would be on the road or when we would be there. But, oh, awesome guy. Awesome guy. Because I was at that game 7-2 when the Sox come back to beat the Yanks in 04. Get, get the fuck out of here. Where yeah. were you, Wit? Do you remember where you were? I was with Merle's in um, is that Norfolk. 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 Our Norfolk. Came, out of, came off the ice. And Jimmy, remember Jimmy was like, yeah. the Red Sox are off 4 nothing. I was like, what? <laughs> we went to Bar Norfolk. <laughs> Crushed. That was a wild, <laughs> wild one. I don't even remember getting back to Manhattan after that game. Shocker. <laughs> All right, next up, the Boston Bruins. Uh, they had 107 points last year. They lost in the first round to Carolina, four games to three, 25 to one to win the Stanley Cup this year. Some new faces in town. Head coach Jim Montgomery, uh, a new old face, David Krejci, returns after a year over in the Czech Republic. Uh, they also brought in Pavel Zaka. Uh, they said bye to Eric Halla, Curtis Lazar, and Anton Bleed. Uh, the Krejci's huge here, man. They bring him back the team so much better. I, no disrespect to Eric Hall, but you go from him to a guy like Krejci, it just ripples out with the team, makes him way better. Obviously, his uh, combination with pasta, they've been unreal. A lot of people wait for Zaka to join that line, have a little check action. Uh, but wait, I feel this is sort of like a, a last kick of the can type thing. You're bringing in Bergeron and uh, Krejci, a one-year deals. Who knows how much they're going to have left there. Does that have that same vibe to you? Yeah, and I even heard, um, I think Cam Neely and Don Sweeney, I think they had a big like management press conference today leading up to the season beginning. And, and he even Neely mentioned the same thing. Like it it, it, it does come off as um, you don't really know what, what's going to happen after this year. So it's like one of those things. You got Bergeron to come back here. You're, you're able to get Krejci to come over again. But the main thing for me is just surviving till these guys come back from injuries. And it, I think we've said on this podcast a couple of times, the standings around American Thanksgiving end up being pretty accurate for who's in the playoffs. And that's when McAvoy is going to be back. That's when Grizzly is going to be back. And most importantly, that's when Marshawn is going to be back. And, and maybe it's a little quicker. And I, it always seems to be a little sooner than they say at the beginning, but you have to be able to find some offense and on the back end, be able to shut guys down with how good McAvoy is for a long stretch of games. And, and I think that you're going to really see that's how valuable Patrice Bergeron is because I'm sure he'll be able to at least lead this team through a respectable record until you're getting some weapons back. But it's going to be a tough beginning. The one good thing is Swayman looks awesome. Yeah. I, I think you have a big time uh, future number, not even future number one. He's a number one now, but a future stud in net for a long time. And you're able to see the improvement he made last year from the year prior when RA was calling for him to start even two years ago, I think. Right. Wasn't that RA? That was you saying that. Yep, put him in against the yeah. Islanders. So they have a goaltender. It's just all about surviving injuries, which a lot of teams are actually f fighting against. Is, is guys starting the year injured? So I think that looking at this team, they're going to be right there come the end of the year. They're going to be in the playoffs, and then they're going to have a legit chance, depending on you know luck of the draw and who they face in what round and their matchups. They have a chance to go go to the 
conference finals or the Stanley Cup. I know a lot of people don't see that as a probability, but when everyone's back and healthy with the way Montgomery coaches, because guys love playing for him and the new um, vibe in that room of, of Cassidy ran a little stale and guys are fired up and Krejci's back. It all depends on, on what happens the first few months of the year for me. Yeah. I mean, credit to me for saying never move Swayman. I don't care what happened with Tuka Rask coming. But what were you to trying me, to trade him for? I was. What are you talking about? Credit to me <laughs> for saying keep the goalie of the future. And I think that he's going to have to slap lipstick on a pig to start the year. They are so thin on the back end, especially without McAvoy and Grizz. Like they're two best defensemen. Uh, one component that uh, Neely said that he really likes about what Montgomery's introduced is way more movement at the offensive zone uh, blue line and incorporating the D. Last year, if you go back, they scored 31 goals uh, as defensemen for the Boston Brewers. I think it, that's 24th in the league. If they're going to survive in, in that the early parts of the season, they're going to have to try to get contributions offensively from the back end. They're going to have to all punch above their weight class as far as what they're bringing to the table. And as I mentioned, get that all-star style goaltending from Swayman. As far as everything up front, even though they're missing a few guys, I like I like how they're built. And, and ultimately, a team like that with the type of culture they have, they can always rely on structure. It's going to be straight survival mode to get those guys back and healthy. And then everybody keeps resorting back to the, to the Bulls documentary, The Last Dance. This We had a conversation on TNT about the window for Pittsburgh, Washington, and Boston specifically about just how old they're getting and how, how those three teams have been as relevant as they have for the last 10 years, the way they drafted those core group of guys. So this, this is the team that has to get it done the soonest. Uh, you would imagine that Bergeron, he might maybe have one more year after this year. But once you lose one of the most dynamic, if the, not the most dynamic two-way centers in the league, one of the best face-off circles and one of the best leaders, it's going to be tough sledding to be able to hoist a second cup for that core group of guys. So I, I definitely have these guys making playoffs. Um, and, I, and, I, and I believe in that, in that group to get it done and keep them afloat up until that uh, and, and t up until the guys are back and healthy. I have been hard on Sweeney before, but you, you do have to give him credit for making the move for uh, Hampus Lindholm because without him, Jesus Christ, I don't know what they'd be doing at the start of this year. So I might be getting the call for the back end. At there. least, at least they have a guy who could play 26 minutes solid both ends of the ice, because if he wasn't around, they'd be in some real shit to start this season. Yeah. Yeah, like we've been saying, tread water till November, and hopefully they'll hang in there. But the young guys should be a lot looser, I would think, with the new coach and new system. They, they were all squeezing their sticks the last couple of years under Butch, but I think Monty should have a little looser. Hey, uh, all right, you got you to gotta be thrilled. Uh, you, was it you or, or Witt who, who mentioned uh, Sweeney? I, uh, I just he, I just he, brought him up. So, 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 sometimes it's a trade that you don't make. It sounded like DeBrusque was on the way out last year, and finally they lock him in. I think he had his best year offensively as far as goals are concerned. He had 29 if he can also get back to that same level where he was last year, I think that that's going to be a big component in them getting through this, uh, this difficult period of the injuries. So they've, they've, they've done a tremendous job and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they deliver. Yeah. And Mark McLaughlin, local kid, he had a great camp, but he was sent down to Providence. I, just a numbers thing. I think with, cause he, he's not subject to waivers and you don't want to just lose yeah. a guy this early, but I'm sure we'll see, see him soon enough because hell of a player. And eventually someone's going to get dinged up uh, as for the goalies. I, I love them, Swayman and Almach, but they got to be a little bit better in the playoffs this year if they get back. They they weren't they weren't at playoff caliber this year, but obviously uh, we'll see what goes on with the bees. Did you see that clip of, of the guy at the fan uh, at the game roll, rolling one up? Everyone was sending it to me. That like, was oh, the bees game. <laughs> it was at the bees game, but I'm pretty sure it was tobacco. I think it was just regular <laughs> tobacco, not not actual uh, cannabis. But I got that video sent to me about 600 times. Are you dad already? Like, it's like no, he's on the edibles. <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> All right, next up, another team that made a lot of news this summer, the Ottawa Senators. 73 points last year, 13th in the conference. They're 47 to 1 to win the Stanley Cup, but a lot of new faces. Alex DeBrinkett, Claude Giroux, Cam Talbot, Tyler Mott. Uh, they said bye to Matt Murray, Connor Brown, Philippe Gustafson, and Chris Tanney. Uh, the Sens, man, they might have the most buzz of any team right now. Of course, Talbot is going to miss the start of the season. He tweaked something. But this kid, Anton Forsberg, no slouch. He was real good for the team last year. Let's go to you, Merle's quick on this one. Who's going to have more points this year, Debrinkat or Giroux for this team? Uh, I, I got to go with Debrinkat for sure. I mean, Giroux has been an amazing player, but I, his playoffs is in his time really in Florida. I wasn't too impressed with him. So I love Debrinkat. Um, young guy, hungry. 
no pressure of uh, the family and stuff like Drew has playing back home. So I like Ottawa. Tough sled in there with the goaltending injury right off the hop, but uh, I don't know if I got him going in the playoffs, but we'll, we'll find out later. I, I think it's too early for playoffs. I love some of the moves. I think to bring Cat. I don't know what bar still has his over under for points. I think he lights it up. I think he leads that team in scoring um, a special player. He's 24 years old. Batherson, Kachuk, Norris, all under, all are all under 24 years old. Shabbat on the back end. The issue being there's not much else there on, on defense. Um, it makes sense. Shabbat's going to play about 30 minutes. They're, they're weak there. I think they're going to be much improved, but, not only are they dealing with the tough division, but there's not much depth on their third and fourth line. So you see all the best teams in the East, they have these bottom two lines that can not only play fast at pace and energy, they score and they create offense. And And I don't know about, about the bottom two in Ottawa. I love their top six, but it's still early on. Uh, I, I think they've gotten past that first stage of being horrific, but I don't see them as a playoff team yet. No. And I, I should mention Jake Sanderson, the fifth overall pick. In the 2020 draft, I think that the sky's the limit for him. The way he skates, unfortunately, people say he sometimes looks like me. He's got some ears that stick out a touch a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. He's a hell of a player. Ten times the player I ever was. I think you're going to see him grow and get a bunch of minutes this year and show that maybe we're looking at a rookie of the year candidate if if he really plays as well as people think he can. So should have given him a little credit when I dogged on the D. I'd have to agree with you guys. And we, we go back to being thin on the back end. And you think that Talbot might have helped that situation out. But the fact that he's going in the season injured, it's going to be a tough for them to get a good start. But but ultimately, if you're the fan base, you got to be excited based on what you've seen in the past uh, five years, five what? How, how long they've been brutal? At least in five the years. Eastern Conference final in 17. And they haven't been to the playoffs since. Oh, that's right. So, um, but definitely things to be excited about. And hopefully this this spark and, uh, and excitement for the team ends up leading to them getting a rink downtown. So things are looking ahead, but... You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna probably touch on a few teams that are are looking better and have these young studs in the lineup, but just quite aren't just aren't, aren't quite there yet. Uh, well, do, digging up some details for this preview biz, I found the crazy old story. Like we're obviously a lot of talk about tanking for Bedad this year. And, well, back in '93, when when the Senators, I should say their front office tank, not the players uh, for Alexander Digg. After the game, they clinched the playoff spot. I'm sorry, the, the number one spot. They lost to the Bruins. The owner, Bruce Firestone at the time, he cryptically mentioned per SI to a reporter that some secret squirrel shut yeah, secret squirrel shit was in play to make sure the Sens got the top pick. So a couple of weeks later, the reporters are talking to the owner in a bar and he says, Hey, what did you mean by that? And uh he said basically that if they needed to in that last game versus the Bruins, they were prepared to pull the goalie in the game. So like that they would end up losing the game. And like word got out, the guy wrote a column about it and stuff. And uh, he was talking about the, the restraints. It's tough to keep the restraints on bonus during the season. I mean, it's like, yeah, the, the guy's a coach. He's not going to coach to lose. He's got a coach to win. So uh, no, none of the other reporters there disputed. It became a big deal up there. And all of a sudden, it kicked in an investigation in. The league looked into it. Uh, he ends up selling the team like two days before they incorporate the uh, two days before the season's over. They incorporate the lottery system after this. And of course, they drafted Dag. He ends up on this career projection, projection that goes all over the place. Takes him to Will Perry Scranton with with our boy I'm dog and check the game notes come. So it's all this whole history thing. Like if he doesn't end up in auto and with Dag, none of this uh, with got Armstrong, rather, none of the, the, none of the check the game notes shit happened. Cause he told that story again, the, a couple months back. That is legit. Such a fucking hilarious story. And, the way he tells and, it. And, and I guess you could say karma. If you're willing to try to, you know, fuck the league around in order to solidify the first overall pick, you might end up getting a bust and giving them the biggest signing bonus in NHL history. Uh Insane. What's what's even funnier when they knew it was just going to be between San Jose and, and uh, Ottawa, Ottawa reached out to San Jose and said, like, on, it was like a side bet. They're like, uh, let's see who gets more points from here on in. And that team will get the first pick. They were going to make a deal like that, like, which is fucking crazy. Bizarre, <laughs> like off the record. Yeah. But San I was, was okay, like, so ah, I, I don't know if I mentioned it last year, or two years ago, when we were having the podcast where you should get extra bonus points or, or bonus balls in order to get a better pick. If, if at a certain point you start, you, you start winning more. So you should get rewarded based on how your shit team finishes the season. They should, yeah. should they not implement something yeah. like that in order to prevent against the tanking situation? 
I think that's what Otto was trying to do. Like, hey, hey, let, let's make it competitive here, so because it's only between us. You know what I mean? So you're, right. So you're I mean, they, I mean, yeah. they, yeah, but they, they did it. They did it at a bar, just like when yeah. you told them that they're going to pull the fucking goalie. I'm talking about Gary Bettman actually implementing this rule. Oh, that's that's funny too. The owner's like, oh, I had I had like eight or nine beers. I don't know what I said. Like that was like this is excuse to the media, like blaming eight or nine. They're beers. like, what do you mean? I got I got the deal on a napkin. That's our pick. <laughs> it's signed it's legal. Do you have a copy of the napkin? Yeah. Oh <laughs> shit, it's stuck together because I blew my nose out. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, I thought a, it was pretty hey, funny. What's up? I'm bro? an expert on tanking. I was going to save this story for the live show in Pittsburgh, but I was part of the tanking for Ovechkin. I don't know if I've told this on here. We we tanked for Ovechkin, ended up losing the lottery, got Malkin, but they used those same standings the next year, and they got Crosby. And the way we did it, they didn't come out and tell us to lose, but we were getting money to go out to a team dinner the night before games. We were sending guys to the minors and then calling up the healthy scratches from the minors to play on the NHL team. <laughs> so you weren't generation X, baby. Like nobody what? said lose. Generation X. Nobody it said obvious. it was obvious. So no. it goes on, it happens, and people in Pittsburgh, uh, Wit was a big part for the trade, but I was a big part because I was brutal. Exactly. <laughs> And we got Malkin. No, Bros is a big part because they had him on the first line. <laughs> and, and by the way, like this, way to go, is, Merles. this, this is going ring. to be happening this year <laughs> with Bedard and what he's like projecting as. We're going to see some interesting races coming down the end. Yeah, yeah. Coyotes are going to have people from Open Skate out there playing. <laughs> Sign- <laughs> yeah. Okay. More pizza, more pizza well, actually, than Italy. Okay, so which should we mention this group chat that we had going today in in which? Kevin Hayes said, I'm the dumbest person in the world. The, oh the national yeah, make me happy them. hockey league. You gotta, me, you gotta read some of these texts. I'll, I'll it, go, I'll, I'll go through this quickly. Okay. Let me try to read this real quickly. And this all goes back to the fact that I said, if they're going to throw e-bugs during the regular season, why not have a couple beer leaguers for each team on deck, you know, <laughs> waiting to play. If somebody goes down in preseason, rather than throwing in an unwarm, you know, guy that, you know, has an opportunity to maybe make the team. Like it's already a shit. <laughs> show you're halfway through the game <laughs> put some beer leaguers in there for our entertainment so the the chat is <laughs> sweet biz hazy and keith and, and hazy writes biz the fact that you think a beer leaguer should play be able to play in a preseason <laughs> is so ridiculous it actually may be one of the most insane things you've said since the pod started i said i said even worse than my pk thing <laughs> so it's pk for hall of fame he says pk for hall of fame isn't crazy he said but imagine a kid who has a chance to make the team gets less ice time for a beer leaguer because biz wants to be entertained <laughs> hey this is the nhl but we allow beer leaguers to play on national television <laughs> biz sends biz says back they do it in the regular season with a picture of david ayers <laughs> he goes, how is this not crazier? Hazy says, that's a goalie, and that's all predetermined. A player can't go in net, but players can double shift. You can't just be like, okay, Biz, you've only played 38 seconds tonight. You strap on the pads. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Yandel comes comes in. Imagine some dirt ball from Quincy get to play for the Bruins and they are playing the Leafs and whoever he hates, he goes out and smashes a stick over Austin Matthews' head. But at least Biz got to watch it, though. <laughs> there is a couple other ones, too, I think. Yeah, yeah. Gans goes, yeah, you got too many men on the ice. The coach has to coach with his horn out. Like, if you don't make it past the ladies' tee in golf. <laughs> oh. Just so Biz can be entertained. <laughs> oh, that was oh. funny. Well, I mean, you got, hey, if you listen to the podcast, you know, I got some dumb fucking takes. I don't give a shit. Hey, dude, I can't even speak you're, English. You're, half the time. you're an absolute take quick. It's great though. Yeah. I mean, we're having fun here, but Hey, I would like to get a poll going Grinnell. How many people would like to see the beer leaguers out there rather than like seeing them play short or throwing a guy who's like an AHLer out there for a period and a half. Who's not even warm. Like, I'll post it now. I'll post it now, and I'll give you the results at the end of the pod. The yeah. the argument that a beer leaguer could try to injure somebody on the other yeah, team that, is actually pretty valid. When when yeah, when I saw that come through, I was like, ah, oh, I never considered that. I never, I never, uh, I never considered that. Oh, speaking of uh, non pros mixing with the pros, how about that uh, clip from the weekend? That idiot ran on the field with the with the red flare and Bobby Wagner and the Rams absolutely fucking trucked him. Did, did you see it, Biz? I sent the. Oh link. yeah. Oh, I mean, what an idiot. And then, and then the fan, he filed the police report. Like, oh, like I he, saw that. 
I, so, fucking, I didn't know if it was the same story. He's like suing them, isn't he? Yeah, he's trying. It's like, dude, you trespass with a fucking dangerous situation. These guys don't know what you're fucking out there for. And he truck stick them, knock them down. And now this guy's going to try to try, presumably going to try to sue. I hope they fucking chuck that right out to it. Who cares? The NFL's got billions and billions. Give them a couple hundred grand for our <laughs> entertainment. Yeah, fuck them. Put, uh, them yeah. in a, put them in an NHL preseason game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would actually be good. And then put a couple NFL guys on the other team, too. I had That's- no idea. Randomly, by the way, we were chatting yesterday watching the NFL. I didn't know it's profit sharing throughout that league. So apparently the league makes around like $15 billion profit a season, and each team's taken around $370 million from that. I had no idea it was completely even profit sharing in the NFL. That's nuts. Yeah. Those owners might be the true Illuminati. Yeah. Oh, dude, this they're fucking so loaded. And they keep hiring all their shithead nephews. The Coke cousins. brothers. That's right. So many teams suck. <laughs> uh, Who are K- the Coke brothers? KOC. They're very, 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 very wealthy family. I think oh, there's really? a couple I think there's a couple other uh big names that I'm forgetting of. The Rothschilds. They just they they got more money than God. Getting in a Deadwood territory. I yeah, think that I, they were they were uh, some of the original people to set up the Federal Reserve. Now I could be completely making this up. If so this is so off. I'm gonna. Yeah, it's like yeah. he's not wrong. Biz is not wrong here. Hey, Google, let's go. Google it because I could have read it on Twitter. Right? But, it's just like come on here. You know, I, that, that's this. like my my encyclopedia is Twitter. The guy who says <laughs> you're not wrong doesn't have a copy of his contract. So let's <laughs> yeah. just find out from Google what the actual. <laughs> Oh, I'm Real probably story. getting I'm probably getting hammered on our Reddit. I feel right like now. you're right on that because you seem so sure of yourself. Yeah. No, I just made it up. All right. Before we move along, here's a word from our friends at Game Time. The NHL is back. And if you want to see any games this season, you need Game Time. Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. And they guarantee the lowest price. If you haven't given Game Time a shot yet, don't know what you're waiting for. You guys are going to love this app. We've had tons of Barstool fans using it, hitting us up on social media about the great deals they've been getting all over the place. And we've been using it as well. Me and Grinelli hit up a bunch of playoff games, a few concerts over the summer, all because of the great deals on Game Time. So download the Game Time app, go to the account tab to create a login, and redeem code CHICKLETS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, download Game Time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed next up the florida panthers uh, they won the president's trophy last year with 122 points but they lost in the second round to tampa four games to none uh, a couple odds of 13 to one this year and a big new face is coming in head coach paul maurice uh, after leaving winnipeg matthew kachuk colin white mark Stahl, chris tanny are there uh they said bye to jonathan hubido mackenzie wiga claude Giroux, mason marchman noah chari and ben Sherratt. Uh, this is going to be interesting. This team went from, I would say, the most, the least experienced coach in the world, to, uh, in the league, rather, to the most experienced coach in the NHL, Paul Maurice. What kind of a difference is that, Biz, going from, like, you know, a rookie to a guy who's been around 30 years and himself can't get over the hump for a championship in Maurice? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, experience is huge. I guess, like, my biggest thing last year when it came playoff time and maybe the lack of adjustments from Brunette, and even like when dealing with like the, the in the post game media scrums, like I just wasn't hearing anything that that showed any types of signs of as if he kind of was like, you know, he, he had things under control. It seems like the whole team was in quicksand and they couldn't figure things out in the moment. And I guess from an overall perspective is it's amazing how much things can t- change the course of an organization, even with like 10, a 10 day period even if they end up going the distance to seven games against Tampa Bay and they put up a decent fight, I don't think there's any way they, they end up trading Uyghur and Huberto. Like, th- like think about that. Think about the, the, the amount of that 10 day span and what it did to alter the, the course of history for this organization. So I, I like the aspect of the fact that they brought in a guy with experience. Paul Maurice won a cup with the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, he had a, a, a fairly similar style group, I guess, in Winnipeg, where they're very front loaded with with great players on forward. They had a very thin back end. And I would consider Bobrovsky to be an elite goaltender. I thought he had a decent season last year. And even if you maybe don't consider him, I think as a tandem, they have great goaltending. I think they can always end up relying on Spencer Knight. And if you know things don't work out with Bobo, they'll just lean on Spencer. So um, I don't think that they're going to win the president's trophy. I still think that they are a playoff team, but 
as I mentioned, like Bill Zito, in my opinion, hit the panic button a little bit. I can understand why you would want to make changes, but then I go back and look at a team like Tampa when they had their issues, they stuck with that group. And, and, you know, we've talked to Coop about it. You're going to hear it from the lawn, but you know, they, they took accountability in the coach's room. They spent more time that summer making adjustments and try to extract what they thought they could have out of that same group. So different approach here. Uh, I personally think the team got overall worse. I still think Matthew Kachuk is a hell of a pl player and he's going to have a big year down there, but overall the, the division's very strong and they're going to have their work cut out for them. So definitely less pressure in my opinion that they're going to have than last year, but so they got some, some good young guys in the pipeline that, that they can rely on that Lundell had a breakout year last year. Um, uh, there's uh, a couple other for Verhage, who, in my opinion, was their best player in playoffs and the main reason why they ended up even getting by Washington. So they still got some guys up front that they can rely on, and they have a very competent team. Just really, really interested to see how this back end is going to play out because with trading Uyghur, they left them a little bit thin and, and, and uh, Ekblad on a bit of an island. Yeah, I. I think they could be like bubble team, bubble playoff team. I, I think that they could be fighting the whole year to stay around the wild card race. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't love their team. Um, it's like the Kachuk is so good. Like you mentioned, and, and he's going to get his points and he's going to do his thing. And that's why this is a good team. They got Barkov. They got for Hagee. Reinhardt was great with Barkov. They got great yeah. players, Bennett. but overall, I don't know. I don't see them near the level they were last year. And when the trade went down, if it was Huberto for Kachuk, knowing they both had those deals in, in place, I guess Huberto's took a little while. Why'd you throw in Uyghur? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. Why'd you, it's like you lost one of your best defensemen in, in the group. Isn't that great overall to begin with? So I think, I think if they're in the playoffs, I'm not going to be surprised at all. But if it's, if, if come the final three weeks of the season, they're fighting for one of those wildcard spots. I won't be shocked at all. It's 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 a worse team in my mind. And last year was so good. So even if you're a little worse, is it crazy to think that they might not get in the playoffs? Maybe. But I'm thinking crazy today, Biz. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I I mean I, we sound like a bit of a yak back. So I guess if every team's playing with a thin back end, because half the teams we've mentioned are thin on the back end, I guess they're all playing from a from a, an even playing field. So I, I, I really enjoy their top nine. I think they're going to continue to pump the goals in. But, you know, ultimately come playoff time, you can't play that same rope-a-dope style hockey. And even though going back to last season, set a, uh, an NHL record for most comebacks in an NHL season, uh, they're going to be hard-pressed to, to, to do that again. So uh, And listen, are... they, lost, they lost Duclair, okay? That's 31 goals. Well, they he's lost. injured, correct? He, hit, he tore his Achilles, and wh where'd he go? He, I mean, he signed a three-year extension there. Yeah, but he's he, not playing, right? Because right, he's isn't he injured? He tears his Achilles? Is that what happened? I don't know what the injury is, but he's not starting the season. Yeah, okay. Okay? He's not there. So maybe he'll be back right at the middle of the – but you don't know when. Nice deadline acquisition in-house. Well, okay. Marsh, Marshman was amazing for them last yeah, season. He was. he was close to a point per game. And then the, the other guy – uh Vetrano was really good at the, the time he was there, right? He wasn't there the whole year. But then Owen Tippett was a great young-looking player. Dude, they trade him for Giroux. Giroux's gone. So it's just been a lot of movement there to where now I just don't think they're as good as they were set up to be maybe two years ago. Uh, Biz, you were correct. Anthony Duclair uh, tore his Achilles and had surgery in June. Oh, so that's, that's, probably, that's probably maybe January's back, six months. Maybe less, actually. Very similar to, uh, I, I believe, Pacioretty also tore his Achilles this offseason. So um, it's, yeah, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt the offense for the time being, but gives with opportunity comes, uh, what is, what's, the, what's the saying? With injury comes opportunity. <laughs> Philosophy. I thought we were getting a business in there, but <laughs> no, no. It was actually an off the glass and out comment. <laughs> um, Merles, what, I mean, what do you think? We pretty much covered it all. In RA, ch chime in. Yep, you stole my line. There, there's, there's too many changes. I, I got a weird vibe about Florida. I think they have a drop off season, and I think there's going to be some lasting effects from that dummying Tampa put on them last playoffs. It was just, it was a weird way to lose. It just, I feel like that carries over, and they're, they're going to be on the bubble to get in. As far as me 
What um, I don't know. I mean, Paul Maurice obviously his, his coaching record sticks stands for itself. I would I would imagine these guys are going to want to play for him. He's, he's got a tremendous reputation. I don't know if he's a hot ass. I don't know if he's more of a players coach after all these years. But I wouldn't count them out, man. I don't think they're going to struggle as as much as people are saying. I know basically you trade and save Huberdo for, for Kachuk, so they're losing Weger. I think they did that because they said they weren't going to be able to sign both of them, so they figured if we're going to have Huberdo or Kachuk, we'd rather have Kachuk, and we weren't going to sign Weger anyways. That's some I'm assuming what that the mentality was. But mm. either way, man, I, I think they're going to be pretty competitive. You still got Bach off there. They still got some good offense. I, I don't think they're going to struggle to get in the playoffs. Going back to your original question though i think that the coaching is going to help for sure um you know they they lost a very experienced guy in quinville and and you know when brunette took over the team continued to have that type of success but as i mentioned the 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 lack of adjustments and just the 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 post-game press conferences raised level for concern for me to the point of where when when we were watching them and seeing them when we were doing the the playoff bubble there with tnt in atlanta i was like oh man i i don't know like this this might end up costing them a job for next year and sure as shit, it did. Yep, sure it did. Although he is on another bench. We're going to get to that in a little bit. First, though, Merles, we have your team, the Buffalo Sabres. 75 points last year, finished 11th in the conference. They're 100 to 1 to win the cup. Uh, they brought in Ilya Labushkin, Eric Comrie, and Riley Sheehan. Uh, they said bye to Colin Miller, Cody Eakin, and Will Butcher. Uh, as expected, the team named Kylo Oposo, the 20th captain in team history, and Rasmus Dahlin and Zemgis Gergensen. We're going to wear the gays there. Uh, looks like we're going to get a good look at Owen Power to start the year. Plus, he's going to have a full camp and practices under his belt, so we could hopefully jump right out there. Uh, with Granado and Adams, this is probably the most stability the team's had in, in ages, Merles, uh, but it's going to be tough to get in that playoff spot. What are you thinking this year? How much of an improvement are we looking at? Yeah, I love this team. I love the young talent they have. They're going to be good for a long time. I, I just don't understand why they didn't go out and get a goalie. No. I mean, I, I played against Craig Anderson. I used to score goals on him when he was down in Norfolk. And uh, I just, I mean, yeah, he did okay, but they're a young team. Where's the young goalie to to go with them? Or, I mean, at least a guy in his 30s, not in his 40s. I, I agree. And, and I actually am super excited to watch them this year. And, and Biz, we were all on it when the trade went down. It was such a big moment for that organization to just have the whole drama end and Eichel be gone. And then the moment of, of, and obviously I think the, the it was such a tough season that their most memorable moment was probably when, um, is it Arthur. Generet? Excuse me, Rick, Rick, how much, how do I say his name? Mer? Rick Generet, Rick Generet, right? His, he had the, the moment on the ice was this incredible moment. The craziest night besides that was when they beat Eichel and they beat Vegas at home and you saw this fan base and how much passion there is. And you saw Tuck became that player that everyone hoped that you could have somebody proud to be a Sabre. And then with all this talent, Owen Power comes at the end of the year. He looked fantastic for just hopping right into the NHL. We've talked Jack Quinn. Nobody even brings him up. Lit up the AHL last year. He was the eighth pick in 2020 for the Sabres. He's slated on the second line as the season begins. There is just so much young talent there. It's just goaltending. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get some saves they need to try to compete for the playoffs. But they're certainly not going to be the pushover that they've been in the past few years. If it, no, if you're a Sabres fan, you got to be ecstatic about the goaltending situation. Anderson's been good to that team. You you want to be given in six, seven goals a night as long as your offense is clicking. You want to get a high draft pick. You're, the, the rebuild is not close to finish, but they're heading in a perfect direction. They have those young studs up front. They got a couple on the back end. That one-two punch between, uh, uh, help me out here, Owen Power and in Rasmus uh, Dahlin. Dahlin, Dahlin. I always forget the Rasmus Dahlin. Um, but it all goes back to the coach. And when we had... Oposo on he talked about how he he trusts the players and he allows them to make plays at the line and if they do fuck up you're not going to come back to the bench and get bitched at he wants you instilling that confidence in yourself because at the end of the day if you are going to be a successful team you have to be making those types of plays so he's going to give them those long leash if you see those players continue to develop and take that next jump and they're pumping in the goals and they're having a good time and they're creating exciting hockey in buffalo for the first time since we saw really you know, last year, as you mentioned, that turning point when the Eichel game went down, this is this is exactly where you want to be as an organization if you're the Buffalo Sabres. You don't want to slap lipstick on a pig with good goaltending at this point because you don't have a team that's ready to compete for a Stanley Cup. You don't want to rush the rebuild. 
But you, you want to get- win games and you want to g- get guys comfortable with winning. And you can't you can't let losing after the way oh, the really? year finished. What biz? They, biz? It's the same thing. You could say the same thing about Detroit. Like, yeah, you want to, you know, you want to get a first. What did overall Lamar pick? say in this interview? What, what was one of his comments? It's I don't know. I had a lot of them. It's not about the wins and losses. It's about the process. It's about the process. I, I know, about but business, you're saying giving up six or seven a night, that ain't a good process, bro. Dude, ask any Buffalo Sabres fan and say, if you if your offense is kicking in an average of four and a half goals a game and everybody's clicking and you only end up with 25 wins and you're getting a top three pick, mm-hmm. I bet you they would fucking kiss you. They'd fucking let you plow their old lady. They'd be so happy. Ah, uh, that's it. It's just, yeah, the, that's way the, you, listen, the way you word that, Merle, what do you think? I feel like yeah. they want a winner there. Look, they've had a hey, lot of top there's they've no had a way, lot of top picks there's dude. no way they're getting into playoffs in that division and in that conference there's I don't no think they're way. getting in either but I no. so then why do you want to draft the, the worst thing you could do as a franchise what? is draft 10th 11th 12th overall year after year after year if you look at the types of players that end up making generational impacts in lineups it's first and second overall picks Maybe sometimes you get lucky in the third, fourth overall range where, I mean, Kale McCarr went fourth, fourth overall, but who did they, who did they, who did they get uh, uh, on defense? Darlene power, both guys first overall. If they, if they yeah, finish, let's hope Darlene looks a little better then. Yeah, he, I sometimes think he did they a don't lot always better. hit. He, he, he looked a lot better in the second half of the season. There's no doubt in the first half of that season, he looked like he was a frustrated player. But you, you, you heard Oposo's comments and how much he works and how much he cares. This kid's going to find his game, and he's going to get and bring it to that level. I think they are in a perfect situation, and there's actually a reason why they brought Anderson back. He's well-liked in the locker room. He's a great guy in the community. He's got an incredible story. He brings that veteran presence. And if he allows fucking beach balls in every night, hey, man, thanks for doing your job. Pat on the back. Take your 750 and ride into the sunset, baby. Biz, I could not agree more about the Rasmus Dahlin stuff. Nice little player prop on the Barstool Sportsbook. His over-under for points is 55 and a half points. I'm smashing, the, I'm smashing the over on that. I'm smashing it. How That's many a, D had 56 yeah. points last year? Right. He's going to have a load taken off of him because Owen Powers there, like Biz said. I think this team's starting to move. They're going to put up goals this season. 55 and a half points. Smash the over. But go back to if you can research it while we keep talking here, while we throw it over to RA and Merles. How many D put up that many points? It's a great, great question. It's not easy. I'm fine. I've been right saying now. for years they should move him to forward, Darlene. He'd be a great forward with all the skill he has. The Gonchar, but, the reverse Gonchar. Yeah. But you know know who likes this talk, RA, of this breakdown? Our guy, Mr. Ice, because he only bets overs. And this Buffalo team sounds like an overs oh, yeah. batter's paradise. So we'll yeah. make keep an eye on him for the Buffalo overs. Out of the gate. <laughs> gonna be all over it unless unless this uh Uko Pekka Luke Lukonen and Lukonen unless he gets uh gets a little bounce in the step he could steal that number one job. All right, right? gee. Right, so yeah, the, eleven guys, eleven defensemen had fifty six or more points. Darlene had fifty three. So it's a great prop, but it's it's. What's I the, love what's it. The, what's the odds on that? Minus 112. Oh, man. G yeah. might have just given out a winner, guys. Okay. Okay. I G. love it, boys. He needs put three that more points. He played He played an 80 of 82, so you got to stay healthy. But, now, wow. All right. Go, going back to that goaltender, how much action did he get last season? And, and what were his numbers? How, how did he perform? Yeah, he had, he had nine games last year, 274 GAA, 917 uh, save percentage, which is pretty good on, on a Buffalo team last like that type of team last year. He had four prior games before that. So he's got 13 games of experience with the big club. Uh, he's getting his season in, down in Rochester, but he's 23. So, you know, sometimes these guys jump in and they're, they're ready to go. I know I got him. him. Right. I got him top seven in Vesna voting. Fuck it. Let's go. I love the top seven <laughs> shit. Yeah, Buff- Buffalo is uh, trying to avoid their 12th straight year without playoff games, okay. which would set an NHL record. So see what happens there in the crease. But, yeah, we'll definitely be betting a shitload of overs. That's goals. an NHL record? Yeah. Yeah, uh, right now they're tied uh, 11 straight years without making it. 12 years without the playoffs is a, would set the record. Holy so, shit. Don't uh, remind their fan base online. Yeah, sorry, gonna, I know, sorry. Gonna, uh, the fan, the fan base house. isn't going to pay attention to them until late February when the Bills, after the Bills Mafia burned the city down for the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
Uh, all right. Next up, the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, they had 55 points last year. It was 32 out of 32 teams. They're 150 to one to win the Stanley Cup. Not sure I've ever seen them that high. Uh, they brought in Kirby Doc, uh, Evgeny Dadinoff, Mike Matheson, and Sean Monaghan. Uh, they said bye to Alexander Romanoff and Jeff Petrie. Uh, this team definitely got energized last year when Matty St. Louis took over, but they still finished in the basement. You look at the roster right now, it doesn't exactly scream playoffs. Um, but you got these guys in charge, Jeff Gordon, Kent Hughes. They seem like they know it's going to take a few years to get their plan in place. Uh, they took this number one pick, uh, was it Ur- Uri Slavkovsky, but it doesn't look like he's going to stick with the big club out of camp. People are already bellyaching about him, which is kind of stupid because they just drafted him. Uh, and he, have you heard of this guy, Biz Arbor, Jack guy, his name is this kid played yeah. juniors, never drafted. He was working at Costco a couple of years ago. He went to development camp, ended up getting signed out of development camp. Uh, and the Canadians just sent them down to their minor, minor league the other day. But this guy was wreaking havoc all preseason, just oh, yeah. bundle and save his, I'm sorry, send it his left and right, becoming a bit of a folk hero. So I don't know, see what happens. They might bring him up. Just, you know, you got all that young talent you want to protect. I wouldn't be surprised if he's up soon. Well, I mean, we, we went through the argument, um, whether it was last part or the one before, about, you know, these guys in, in preseason running around. And, hey, in some cases, some guys make a name for themselves and earn themselves a contract. So uh, happy for the guy, a great story. The fact that he was, you know, going from working at Costco to, to playing uh, professional hockey and uh, you know, he'll be in Laval honing his skills. And given that the team they have, I think there's no oh, doubt he's on that, the team, right? No, no. They just sent him down. Oh, they just sent him down. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Damn yeah. It. Yeah, for those wondering where the fuck Wit was when R.A. said that, he had his <laughs> earphone out. He was just... I was listening to the pronunciation of the kid's name. I heard R.A. say it. I was like, that. I didn't know it was Jack <laughs> Yeah, yeah, fun name, That's too. That's amazing. So he, yeah, he, he's going to be a fan favorite in no time. But, you know, a, a, another team that, I mean, the, you, you talk about the coaching and how much impact that can have. And uh, you saw what, what Martin St. Louis was able to do in a short amount of time there, especially for a guy like Cole Caulfield. So I'm really interested to see how he can work with these young players and, and mold them into, to, you know, long-term successful NHLers. And, you know, they got, uh, they got their captain in, in, in Suzuki, uh, some great leadership from another great young player. And, you know, it's, it's not going to be a fun year for Montreal, but as long as you're seeing the growth from those guys and the connection between St. Louis and them and figuring things out for moving forward, I think with, with management and the way that they did things in the off season and the, the game plan that they seem to have, I don't think it's too far down the road that they're relevant again, but uh, it's just, it's going to be too hard to compete for the guys they have. And I was happy they brought in uh, another guy. Like you, you saw when they brought in Josh Anderson from Columbus, like a big body down the wing. Well, now they get another guy in Kirby doc, who I think that wrist injury really, really set him back, right? He was having so much success early on in his career. And uh, it, it just really sucked to see that. But for them to, to, to give the confidence to him and, and sign him to that deal and say, hey, you got some years here to figure out your, your, and hone your skills. I think that, uh, I think moving forward, they're going to be all right. No playoffs though. Come on, give me a break. And, and no carry price. So, you know, if, if, if you don't got the goaltending, you can't win. Yeah, I got- would say, I would say, uh, that it's going to be tough sledding. I think they're looking at in that being in that race for Bedard, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you're right. I think just having St. Louis and what Caulfield and Suzuki looked like when he came over and like basically the ability to get Slavikovsky this summer, right? And he makes the team. So you're going to see what he's made of. And they're not really in a need to rush guys, right? If he's not playing well, it's not like, oh my God, this guy's got to play every single game. Cause I don't necessarily know if that guy's ready yet Th- their plan there is set in stone where they know there's not a huge rush here and it's such a, a known thing I mean maybe not with their fans it's such a ridiculous kind of group of fans that respect expect so much but everyone knows there's the results aren't probably going to be there this year but if you could see young players get better and better and then hopefully get a top three pick I mean I think at this point if you ask a Montreal Canadiens fan I'm I'm different. In fact, Sabres fans are looking to be better and compete. I think Canadians fans want to get the top pick going into this season. I think it's a different uh, view on their team as opposed to looking at the Sabres, who maybe people think will be the exact same type of shit team, but I don't. Damn, I must have been. I no. must have had somebody else's ears on there. No. I thought when you I, said the fan base was disappointed already. They were disappointed well, no. they set down Jack Eye. 
No, no, no. I, I, I said they sent down Jack. I, then I said it d- didn't sound like uh, Slavkovsky is going to stick because there's been a lot of criticism of his play. Oh. I didn't, not that I didn't mean to imply he sent down. He's still with the club, but okay. it just seemed to be a, a little bit of negativity. Yeah, but some people play. were very surprised that he made the team, that he's going to oh. stay up there. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, My I apologies. Think, yeah, I, I, a lot, actually, I think the last cut. So I'm going to do a lap here. Ago. I'm going to do, I'm gonna go do <laughs> down I'm gonna and do, back. Down, down and couple, back. A da- couple down and backs here. You guys continue. Yeah. Down and back. Um, Girls, oh, but yeah, I well, I want I need I have a very, very interesting <laughs> nugget, but I need biz to hear it. Oh, so it's, shit. Yeah, it's a it's a is this a, is this gambling related? No, not gambling related, but it's um it's TV related. So that's why biz definitely has to hear it. And I know he loves these little nuggets of information. Here he is. Uh, here he is. Probably Coming back from his loser lap. No, he's going down and back. Yeah, he's doing another one. <laughs> doing another one. <laughs> he's climbing over the chair. He might throw out his L5 S1. <laughs> but I uh, am yeah, Marty St. Louis, an unreal guy. I used to train with him. I don't know if I ever talked about that. I've trained with him. Um, he was doing more of the squats. I was doing more of the coffee and soda and getting over the hangovers. But the biz, I, I had to wait for you here. Okay. I have a very interesting nugget on the Montreal Canadiens. They are the only team with zero U.S. national TV games. Makes sense. They stink. Zero. They the didn't Jets, get one game. The Jets Girls. have one. Ottawa has one. The Coyotes have four. Vancouver that, has that's two. That's actually nuts for the, Isn't that, that weird? franchise to not have yeah. a game on TV. Yeah, I thought that was really weird. And he had the number one pick supposedly coming to not going to lie. Yeah. I was expecting a better nugget. Damn it. We waited all that time for you to come back too, so that you could hear it. Full, a full <laughs> double dip I think he just that. wants to try to get somebody else to have to do a lap. He's going to be calling out all of us the rest <laughs> <Yeah>. of the show. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. All right, boys going to move it right along here down to the Tampa Bay lightning. Uh, they had 110 points last year. And of course they lost the Stanley cup to the Colorado avalanche four games to two after going back to back on the previous two Stanley cups. Uh, they're 11 to one to win it this year. And they got some new faces in town. Uh, Vladislav Nemestikov, shout out biz Hayden flurry, Phil Myers. Uh, and they've said bye to uh, Andre Palat, Ryan McDonough, uh, and Jan Ruta. Uh, this team is definitely going to be a notch below this year. Just, just losing McDonough alone. He's such a key part of not only that defense, but the locker room, huge leadership capabilities. I know the whole team is going to miss him. Uh, having said that they still have uh, Vasilevsky, Stamkos, Hedman, Kucherov and point. So, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. But after going to three straight cups, what they got to be still a little tuck it out. Are they going to be still feeling that even though, you know, they have the summer off, they still got to have that much hockey under the belt. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's just such a big difference at the beginning of the season. It might be a little tough for them. Um, Palat was such an enormous part of this team for so long, even before the Stanley Cups of just being a guy that's always in the room. And everyone knows that for each season that happens, you know, faces that you become accustomed to seeing are gone. But with a team that won the way they did and made that final run the third straight year, to not have McDonough, to not have Palat, just to be missing some people that made such big impacts, it's going to be a little different. Um, Now, luckily, like, right, if you look up front, Nick Paul and Hagel made such huge, they were such huge additions, especially Nick Paul against Toronto. Oh, my God. Guy was one of the best players on the ice in game six and seven. So they have the ability to kind of step up, but basically in losing what they had, they're just not, they're not that top echelon team, right? They're still, they're still one of the better teams in the league and they're in the playoffs in my mind and they have a chance to compete for the Stanley cup. But unless Sergachev really steps it up, which I mean, he played great last year, but I'm talking now it's like, he's filling a, a role that McDonough, you know, carried on every night. And that's not just offensively. It's like, being responsible and being a warrior defensively and on the PK and things like that. So Cal foot stepping in is going to, he's going to have a much bigger role. It's going to come down to guys being able to step up. I think Colton will play a bigger role. It's like guys are just going up a little bit with what they lost and they still have Kucherov. They still have point and they still have Stamkos. It's like, they're not going anywhere in my mind. I still look at like them as so much better than the Panthers, right? I mean, they dusted him in the second round, and then all these changes happened to both teams. Give me Tampa again, and mainly Vasilevsky, right? So when you have this goalie, you have a chance to win the Stanley Cup as long as he's probably playing on this team. Well, and Chernak, too. I think that they've really trusted him to, to yep. 
jump in that role and help carry the weight of, of what they're going to miss with McDonough between him and Sergachev. But I mean, ditto and, and reiterate everything you said with, and when you ever have a goal like Vasilevsky, you're always going to have a chance to win. I, I think that the parody in the league is so good right now. I have about 10 teams. I could see winning the cup. There's an echelon of, of the top, you know, four to five teams who are, who are definitely above everybody else, but Hey man, with, a, with an injury here, an injury here, uh, injury here, injury there. I think that there's a, a pretty big window and, and they're still in it. Full agree. Uh, we talked about a lot of teams being thin on the back end. You have Victor Hedman out there 30, 35 minutes a night. Nothing bad happens when he's on the ice. I've been saying it for years. He's my favorite player. Um, they're going to be right there again. And you know, Wit will probably take him to win the cup again for the fourth straight year. No. <laughs> I do love the fact, too, that when we mentioned third and fourth lines, that fourth line is so set in stone with Maroon, Perry, and Belmar, and they just know – like it, it matters when you're that comfortable with each other. Talk to R.A. about the Merlot line in 11. It's like having a fourth line that gels and knows exactly what each other are going to do on the ice makes such a difference. So I think the fact that there are going to be different guys playing in different roles to have the stability of having a fourth line that could play 10 minutes and Perry also gets the in front of the net time in the power play. They're still, they are still competing for the Stanley cup. They're just not as powerful as they were the past few years. In yeah. My and, and breeze ball and staff, one of the best teams at replenishing drafting and developing and bringing guys up. You saw Ross Colton and what he brought to their lineup last year, playoffs time come too. So no, I think I think as an organization, they still have a decent window here. And yep. uh, I think for sure that they're a playoff team. There's no way they miss playoffs with Vasilevsky in that. No, absolutely not. Okay, as the last team in the division, the Detroit Red Wings. Like I said, we have their coach, Derek Alon, coming on shortly. Uh, the Red Wings had 74 points last year, finished 12th in the conference, 55-1 to 1 to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, like I said, new coach, Derek Alon to the team. I uh, also brought in David Perron, Andrew Kopp, Vili Husso, Dominic Kubelik, Ben Sherratt, and Oli Mata. Uh, they said bye to Sam Gagne, Mark Stahl, and Thomas Grice. Uh, the the eyes are playing in full effect at a boatload of guys. It looks like they're trying to take the next step here. But how about this monster, Elma Sodabloom, 6'8", with those hands. Did you see that clip I included in, in the freaking outline? Unreal, dude. Crazy stuff. We're not going to go too much into them right now because we do have their coach coming on. But uh, quickly, Biz, what do you, what's your early take on the Detroit Red? Bulls? I mean, we have Lalonde on, and he is being very modest about the expectations for this season. But adding some crafty forwards like Cop and Perron with some of the young studs they have in the lineup, and now you have a, a bona fide number one goalie with after what we saw from Huso last year in St. Louis. I could see them competing for a wild card spot. I love the modest approach, but you know what that winning pedigree that Lalonde's bringing over and the fact that he is a player's coach, um, you know, uh, he can't be playing tummy sticks like he was as an assistant coach, but, you know, he, he's, uh, and there will be a little bit of tough love, but I'm I'm really interested to see what he can do with this group of guys. And, you know, you, you mentioned the Iser plan. They got plenty of guys in the pipeline that are going to be bona fide NHL superstars pretty soon. So I don't think the expectations are there, but look for the, the, the goon squad to at least compete night in and night out. And, uh, you know, Larkin will have the boys going. That's psychopath. He's going to have to have the Hannibal Lecter mask on the way that they're amped up for this season. So I would say even maybe more so than Buffalo, this fan base is amped up for a winning season. And you so Hey, we, we talk about in the interview. He had, he was responsible for the best turnaround season in ECHL history. Maybe he could do the best turnaround season in, uh, in uh, Detroit Red Wings history. Who knows? And, and I think, the, the Perron edition is so big. Oh, he, he won a cup nasty. everywhere he goes. He produces offensively. It's like pencil him in for 28 goals, pencil him in for getting under people's skin and pencil him in for more than anything, teaching Larkin and teaching all these other younger players what it takes to win games. So I think that that's an awesome signing. You saw how good cop was with the Rangers uh, after the trade deadline could play anywhere in the lineup, could play power play, could pay PK. The team's well improved. The division is so tough. And then like the conference is so tough that it's going to make it hard for them to get into the playoffs. But I think you're going to see a huge step up. And in talking to Newsy, uh, which we never got into that, why it's his nickname. I, I looked into it like nobody even really knows. There's a former player, I think, with the same last name who they called Newsy. It was an old Montreal Canadiens coach, Newsy Lalonde. I think he was a player and a coach. Yeah, like way back in like the 20s or 30s. It's a 30s. great nickname. Terrific nickname, yeah. But, um, you know, he talks also about Sherratt, and we'll, we'll get to him in a minute here, but 
it, it, it's an exciting time to be a Wings fan because mainly when Eiserman went back there, it was every Wings fan dream come true. He made Tampa so good. Let's let's bring him back home and he can win the cup here as a GM. And and he's so driven and and so kind of obsessed with this team and getting this team to the next level that I'm I'm going to see. I think you're going to see some big time improvements this year and big at time. least come end of the season. They're fighting. They're not. That's the thing about this division now. And even the Metro, the teams that, that the big te- the big guys walked all over last year. You're not walking all over them no. again now. No There's easy no game. easy two points like there was last year, and Detroit's an example of that. That's what you call parity with parity. <laughs> we I, didn't even mention Zadina. They got Ber- Bertuzzi. They got some fucking guys in that yeah. lineup that can play. I wonder if the, that Zadina kid could take the next next step though. When he was drafted, they I said know. he was going to be like the next sniper, like a, a 30, 40 goal guy. Well, let's fucking see it, baby. And That's you gave home. up, you gave up Mantha for him, right? Or no, no, he was who they no, give that was Vrana. That, that was Vrana. So, yeah. so I'm, I, I always mistake those two. Yeah. Um, Zadina was the Detroit pick. Vrana, he's got to have a big one too, because that's a big deal they made moving well, Mantha out. He had a shit sandwich in preseason last year where he separated his shoulder. So, first last day year of camp, big. wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. So, uh, basically, that last season was a wash. So, I'm telling you, man, don't sleep on the goon squad. Guys, I've been screaming about the Red Wings since my eight-hour delay on my way to Chicklets Cup, and I got my Red Wings T-shirt. This They made the best moves. They got a new coach. They got a new goalie. They, uh, you guys didn't even mention Kubalik or Sherratt. Yep. 84 and a half points over under on the Barstool Sportsbook. Hammer the over. Hammer this over. And, I mean, how fun of a bet is this going to be all year? Every game, just hoping they get those one or two points. 84 and a half. They are going to crush that number. Go wings. I hope Soderblom makes the team. The guy got, the guy's a weapon on the half wall on the power play and his puck protection. I watched him in Sweden the last couple of years. And uh, I'm really excited for this team this year. All right, boys. I think we should probably send it over to Derek right now. But before we bring on Derek Lund, we want to let you know his interview is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. So the new Google Sixel 7 Pro is super. It's the most advanced pixel to date, super power to launch faster, load quicker, and run smoother. Totally supercharged. And when it's on Verizon, you get the network America relies on, along with a super deal. Because now when you switch to Verizon, you get a free Google Pixel 7 Pro with select trade-ins and select 5G unlimited plans. I know what you're thinking. Super. There's never been a better time to switch to Verizon. $899.99 device payment purchased with new smartphone line on select 5G unlimited plans required. $200 Verizon e-gift card with port in, less $700 trade and promo credit applied over 36 months. 0% APR, trading conditions, and additional terms apply. And now, enjoy Derek Lalonde. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome this old pal of mine to the show. I met him about 27 years ago at his first ever coaching job as a graduate assistant at Division Three North Adams State College. From there, he worked his way up to Division One before landing his first head coach coaching gig in the USHL. It wasn't long before he jumped up to the coast, then the AHL before coming an assistant with the Tampa Bay Lightning, where he won two Stanley Cups. And this summer, he was named the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. Thanks so much for joining us on the Spit and Chicklets podcast, Derek Lalonde. Congratulations, my friend. Thanks, boys. Awesome. All right. What a full circle. It's amazing. I have to tell you guys, um, this is when I know I've made it in life. I have a text exchange with a bunch of my old college teammates and win a Stanley Cup. I get like a thumbs up emoji, (laughs) original six head coach. You get the knuckles emojis, this spin checklist. This this will be it'll be blow up life couple of zucchinis and an eggplant yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was telling these guys i mean 27 years ago you you, know, you were kind of quiet graduate assistant i was doing work study with the hockey team and i don't think either one of us thought we'd get to this path so i, I want to ask like did you have any designs on to get to the nhl back then or were you just taking your first graduate job and see where it went to no not at all i didn't even know if coaching was my path um went to Cortland state got an undergrad in physical education and science and then um, North Adams State called the, the old days. They would send a letter. My coach received a letter from, is it Dave? Gr- who's Gr- Gruden? Yeah, Dave Gruden. Yeah. Dave Gruden sent a letter looking for a graduate assistant. Uh, my old hockey coach in Cortland, Al McCormick, uh, 
thought I'd be a really good coach. And he's like, would you be interested in this? And I'm like, yeah, pays for my master's, got a master's in education administration, just had a vision of going down that teaching, coach high school hockey, maybe be an administrator in time. And but you, you just kind of fall in love with the coaching, the team aspect of it. And then the phone just kept ringing, ringing, ringing. And never in my mind would I think of coaching the National Hockey League or win Stanley Cups and be a head coach in the National Hockey League. So it's been uh, it's been quite a ride. I remember when RA first told me about you and seven years ago, where were you at the time? I don't remember. I was like, RA's making this up. This guy doesn't exist. So I didn't know much about you. And then this rapid rise, it's been just such a cool story because the entire time RA's kind of reminded me of where you began. So when you mentioned you didn't have any idea of or dream of even coaching in the NHL, you basically just were taking it one day at a time. Like there was no like set goal in the future. It was like, let's just see where it takes me. Yeah. I would just, I, I did the division three assistant coaching thing. Uh, I did the mass college. That was more about the education, fell in love with the coaching aspect. Uh, my college hockey coach, Al McCormick took over at Lebanon Valley college. They played in Hershey, um, begged me to come coach with them. They started the program from scratch, did that. And then I was like, I, I got to get on with life, you know, get to that teaching. I had a path. And then Phil Grady, Hamilton College, part of the NESCAC mafia, uh, called me. And he had moved some assistants on to Division One. So I, I wouldn't say last crack, but I did that. And then the, probably the phone call that changed my life was Bob Daniels at Fair State, um, Recruiting, I knew the Ottawa, basically where I grew up. I knew the Ottawa area. I knew Toronto area. I did a lot of recruiting and even Hamilton there. Fair State, very small budget. Um, they lean on me. I was kind of their eyes and ears through that area. And ironically, Jeff Blasio moved on from Fair State to Miami of Ohio. Bob called me. And that was the first time, you know, you get in the Division One, the CCHA. You kind of... You, you know, I was going to do this for a living and then just kind of took off and then went to Denver. Obviously the success at Denver, the kind of program they had, you go from fair state when you're kind of that little brother chip on the shoulder, you know, you, you want to beat Michigan and Michigan state every year. And then you go to Denver and, you, and you're expected to win. So it's a little different. And then the next step was to become a head coach. Did that green Bay and USHL ran into a couple really loaded teams, uh, won a championship. And I just really thought I'd go down the college path. It's kind of all I knew. And if in that time when I was at Green Bay, if there was a division one head coaching job, I'd probably been in the mix or heard from the AD. I wouldn't say it was just a matter of time before I was going to get my own program, but I was heading down that path. And then out of nowhere, Ryan Martin, the assistant general manager of the Detroit Red Wings, uh, who's now the assistant general manager of the New York Rangers calls me. He's like, would you consider Toledo in the ECHL? He's like this day and area day and age of the cap era. We want to be better there. Uh, you're going to have five, six contracts. We develop guys. Uh, would you be interested? I knew nothing about them. Um, so I was intrigued a little bit. They were dead last place. Uh, I would watch a game. I'd pay $5.99 to watch an internet game on a Sunday night. They were 55 points out of a playoff spot. There's like 7,000 people at the game. Yeah. And no it was, way. That's a good market. It was, it's crazy. It's, fans. it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and it's all, I was intrigued. That makes it easier to go. I was intrigued by it. And they, they sold me, Hey, open door policy to Mike Babcock. Um, that's as part of the development. And I went interviewed. I had some managerial background, the USHL, your general manager. And I thought I could build a team there because just what this season, it's unbelievable fan base. I could get players there. I knew the pool from that college, even the younger players. I kept one player from the previous year, took um, the five, six Redwind contracts and just pumped college kid, captain from this team, captain from that team. And we went character in character and we improved 59 points from the previous year and, and just exploded. And then it kind of, the, the rest kind of took care of itself. 
50 win season. You said biggest turnaround in franchise history, correct? Well, yeah. Since to people say, and I don't know if it's true, but Pro people sports, say, maybe. Th- well, they said it was it, right now in professional hockey. I've been told it was the biggest turnaround. One, you had to get a team so low, but it was, they said it was the biggest. I think it was 58 or 59 points. Gee, you might have to get the uh, analytics team on this one, the stats oh, yeah. team on this one. But they oh, said yeah, it was the biggest LED. turnaround. And, um, and bang, it was unbelievable. And that talk about that city, like that was like, I couldn't go, like you couldn't go to the grocery store, such a weird, just within that city, they love their Toledo walleye. Like it's a fishbowl, like Tampa Bay, like Steven Stamkos can get away with within reason of walking around Tampa and not being hounded. Obviously he's recognized the success stuff. In in Toledo, I couldn't go to a grocery store. It's an unbelievable fan base. You got to see it to believe it. Um, I, I read something too, though. At a certain point, you mentioned a few guys like saving graces, getting phone calls, and advancing. When you're co- coaching Division Three, that you know, you're probably not getting paid as much, and it's a bit of a grind. And you maybe at one point, I don't know if it was considered quitting, and your your mother talked you into keep going because you were so passionate about it. Absolutely, Biz. Uh, thanks for asking that because. Obviously, my mom just passed away, so I appreciate it a ton. But um, it's not even so much give up on it. I was like, I had this background. I had a resume. I had a, my education was there. I was literally prep school, um, Shenandoah High School, knew the AD, begging me to be a physical education science teacher to run the hockey program. It just I had that chance to go down the path of what I wanted to do when I was 19, 20. And, you know, coach, teach. And so it was just sitting there. And, but I loved the team aspect. I loved coaching. I loved everything about it. But you don't make anything in the Division three. And my mom's like, if you love it, just keep following it. And so it's, uh, it's it kind of went full circle there. So great question. like that. Um, I, I'm curious. First one you- ever for me on the pod. <laughs> Can we celebrate? We got, you, got a, you got a drink over there? <laughs> Derek, fifty-eight point turnaround, the biggest in, in coast history. That's that's what uh that's what I saw. But I I want to ask, when did you first meet Coop? When does Coop come kind of come into all this before Tampa? Wow. Tampa? So when I was at Fair State, uh, Coop started. He was doing his Triple A team, then Honey Bait. Uh, so we would recruit kids off his team. He was involved in the U.S. Hockey Festivals. He's turned his back on us pretty quick on that, by the way. <laughs> And then he would, uh, then he started coaching the North American Hockey League teams. And I loved Coop. There was probably some personalities. We kind of just seemed like within those festivals or recruiting weekend, we always found each other in the bar. And by two <laughs> o'clock, we were the last two people. So there was a connection there. And uh, man, he was like, when I was at Ferris, when I was at Denver, he just players on a platter. So I got to know him really well and uh, would lean on him throughout my career. Um, I remember um, my second year in Green Bay, we, we, the previous year, we won the whole thing. We came out, we started out like one, seven and two, and it was uncomfortable. And I called Coop, basically he's like, just have a bench clearing brawl it was by the end of the, and we did. And we literally won like 23 of our next 25. So someone I've always leaned on and it's just the irony of him calling um, and we'll jump around with these stories, but Coop called. So they lost in 2018 Tampa in the Eastern conference finals um, to Washington. Washington went on to win the Stanley cup that year. Coop called me like nine in the morning and it was, it was not uncommon for Coop to call me, but not nine in the morning after losing in the Eastern conference finals in which you're up three, two, and basically, he's like, I'm going to make some changes within my staff. Would you have any interest? And I said, give me a couple of days. I loved Iowa. Uh, I loved um, Chuck Fletcher. He was the general manager. Bruce Boudreau was the head coach. I had a say in that organization. I loved everything about it. Uh, and they just re-upped me. And I said, you know, Coop, give me two days on it. And I called him back and I said, I know I have no interest. And he was really disappointed and but he understood I just thought value in growing as a head coach in the American hockey you know only been there two years still learning pro hockey and it's different it's a completely different world pro hockey than the college gig even the ECHL and then two weeks later uh, Chuck got fired uh, and then uh, Paul Fenton came on board and Paul was awesome and Paul 
did everything he could to keep me on board. He was awesome in the process. But two weeks later, Coop's like, well, what about now? So I went down and looked at it and uh, sat down with him, sat down with Steve. And two days later, I was on my way to Tampa. Yeah, Gulf of Mexico, Iowa, Gulf of Mexico, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> what you, you mentioned, like, like how much different it was. What, what were the, like, the major differences as far as being a head coach at the pro level in the AHL as opposed to college? Like what were the hardest adjustments and why you wanted to stick at it? Yeah, great question in that. And I really think it's made me successful in pro hockey. College hockey is so relationship-based. And you're literally you're recruiting these kids at 15 years old. You're recruiting kids at 20 years old. You're sitting in a living room telling parents you're going to take care of this kid. There's such a bond there, and you're with them 24-7. And it's just different. It's special. It's so relationship-based. You go to pro hockey, it's just different. It's It's – Guys, I wouldn't say that they're out for their own unbelievable guys, but it's a business and it's a true business and it's a partnership. Like it, there's a reality of it. Like, you know, in Tampa, we're not winning our Stanley cups without the guys. They're not winning without us. You know, that, that hard in charge, like everywhere else, they need you. Like in college, they need the coach in even in the East coast a little bit. Now you're starting to get the American hockey league, like Alex Tuck needed me for one year, but he was going to be on his way to the National Hockey League. Steven Stamkos and Andre Vasilevsky and Victor Hammer were going to be in Tampa a hell of a lot longer than <laughs> Newsy Derek Lalone. It's it's just different. It's just it's a partnership, um, and you, you learn that. And the other thing, I didn't play in the National Hockey League, and you guys that played in the National Hockey League, it's just different. It's 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 a real thing. It's it's a one percenter league. When you play in the league, it's just, it's, it's still your league. It's just different. I, you, you, you respect that. You understand that it just, it takes time learning what pro hockey, the national hockey league is all about. Well, don't sell yourself short. You, you're, you're a goalie in college. Were you not, you weren't helping Vazzy out during those runs. I was not helping Vazzy out in those runs. Uh, yeah. You got to try this Vazzy. I did this yeah. back in the day. I had 38 saves one night. <laughs> RA was at the bar at two 30 in the morning. He said, Hey, lift your glove a little bit higher. And sure enough, he went on to be a ball hockey legend at the Chicklets cup. I so um, yes, I was a goaltender at Cortland state. And so we win our first Stanley cup and now Cortland wants me. They remember me as an alum now, of course. They're, they're, yeah, they're yeah. Full credit for me. Donation too. Donate. That's that's coming. I didn't even know. Team like, needs a new hot tub. The, the president's been calling me. I didn't even know they had a president. I thought one of the sororities ran Cortland State. <laughs> All of a sudden, they, I find out an actual they do have a president. And now he's he really wants to talk to me. I wonder what that's going to be about. So anyhow, yeah, when you were in Toledo, uh, you didn't hear from him. <laughs> so anyhow, we. Uh, we win. Now I, I got the whole Cortland state article and the guy sends it back to me and it was awesome. It was just the path, you know, and I loved my Cortland experience. My college teammates are still my best friends to this day and whatever. I don't care if you're division one, division three, whatever your experience is. I, I didn't play at all as a freshman, a little bit as a sophomore, half the games, a junior, all as a senior. So it just, you still, you earned it. I had a great experience, but I get the article and they have my stats at the end of it. And, you know, it's, it's the SUNYAC. It's a different era. It's an offensive nineties, but they're awful. <laughs> like whatever, but whatever. It's a like three, six, whatever. And it's an 88 save percentage. So the guy's like, what do you think? Oh, I like it all, but you know, do we need the stats? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, we'll admit them. And then, and then the pitcher comes out and <laughs> I've got like a kick save when I played and I'm literally taking up like this much net. I was embarrassed and shocked. My call, my, my, my career ended at 21 years old out of Cortland state. But yes, I was a college goaltender back in the day. What was your style? Were you stand up butterfly? It's funny. I it was caught. It's kind of like it was mid nineties. So I was in between the, the butterfly that paddled down thing just was coming in. I was straight stand up, kick, save angles, cut poke check. So you did out. teach RA. I, yes. What, our, what I saw out of RA and that ball hockey thing you did, like, that's what I looked like in college. It's just survival in that, whatever body part you can get in front of it, you go with. Since, since we're back there now, like, do you have any great RA stories of when he was in college? Because I could only imagine this guy was a fucking character. So when you talk, so first of all, a weakness of mine is I'm attracted to characters. 
And I mean, if you create chaos, I want to hang out with you. And you should see my group of friends. Like I've grown up to this day. I think it's been a quality of mine, but some people would call it a weakness. And RA, he, like, he, gave, he didn't give two shits at all in, in college. I'm, put your surprise face on that. But he was the renaissance man of North Adams. And I mean it. Like, he, he was unbelievable. I would go to the brick in which he lived on the top of. In a two-hour bar sitting for me, he would be my buddy, patron, having a beer with me. Uh, 30 minutes later, he's the bartender. <laughs> 30 minutes after that, he's the bar back. And then before, and then be nothing for him to disappear to ours, then come back before bed in his bathrobe and have another beer with me. Uh, and then I'm like, this guy was an absolute, so I, again, my weakness. I'm like, I love this guy. He's an absolute disaster. and doesn't give two shits about anything. And then the next morning he would write an article in the school newspaper and it was unbelievable he definitely had the old school uh thesaurus going the book thesaurus oh yeah there's no way this guy i hung out with last night knows words like this so it was uh he was awesome and he he was it, it was he was the man back in the day all right what about stories about uh derek here he, he was quiet, man, because, you know, he was graduate assistant. It was his first job. And, you know, I, I think he probably didn't want to screw it up, F it up. Plus, all the players hung out at the bar. So, you, you didn't really want to, like, commiserate with the players too much. But I, now, do you still talk to Jimmy Duran? He's the – All the he's time. The head coach, yeah. Yeah, he's still Jimmy high was here, right? phenomenal. His kid's actually a Bruins draft pick playing at uh, Providence. Right, too. So, he actually uh, married the women's soccer coach there, Lori, do you remember? Yes, yes, and that's right, yeah. good friends with both of them. I, I still talk to them all the time. Man, we have laughs and uh, just unbelievable experience there. For I'm sure. Yeah, I get, no dirt, I get no dirt on them. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I didn't expect it to. Uh, <laughs> I know we got to get to Detroit because Detroit fans are probably wondering, when the fuck are you going to start asking about Marit <laughs> Sider and some of these young prospects? But we obviously have to spend a, a big chunk in, in Tampa. Uh, t- you turned down the coaching job. That, that was the year they ended up losing in the first round and getting upset by Columbus. So- no, I, yes, I was there. Oh, you were there that so year. I, tur- okay. I literally turned it down for two weeks. And then Paul Fenn got fired all within two weeks. Coop calls, no, excuse me, Chuck Fletcher got fired. And then within two weeks, Coop called me back. They did the full court press and I was there with them. Okay, so you oh, no no I that. lived I lived that nightmare. I okay, was center oh, on that. My thing. understanding was when you came in the year after, and you were the X factor, which they needed to bring in and fix things up. So I, like I guess I guess we'll start there. You have that such successful season; it's your first year, and then all of a sudden you guys are out in the first round. Like, what, what's going through your head? Well, first off, in ten years from now, I'm going to tell it like that when when no one yeah. can do the math and forget <laughs> it. Um, I wouldn't say panic, but. It was just so unique because we had the 62 win season. We literally had an NHL tied record with the Detroit Red Wings, the most wins in the history of the National Hockey League. But within that season, I wouldn't say we were lying to ourselves, but we had some risking our game. And, you know, I didn't expect us to get smoked in the first round like we did. But, you know, we set back. It wouldn't say we were lying to ourselves, but. You know, Coop talks about all the time, and I brought it here, um, process over outcome. And in that type of situation, our outcome was remarkable. Our process was just okay. We knew it. We knew, you know, we were winning six, five games. We were cheating a little bit. Our puck play was not good. And to Columbus's credit, I mean, that's a, if you remember, like, if you look back in that team now, that team could have won the Stanley Cup, Columbus. They were way, they did those moves at the deadline. Bob and I mean, look at that lineup. If you go through that lineup today, I mean, Panarin, Duchesne, I mean, there's, they had depth and, and the, the two D, yeah, I think Jones and Marinsky on the back end were playing. I mean, that was a loaded team. So there's no shame in beating them, but they absolutely smoked us. And to Julian's credit, to Coop's credit, they didn't shake it up. And because there was, we were getting to that window. Can this team win? And we worked our asses off that off season. We took ownership over it. Uh, we did some things within our neutral zone. We did some things within our breakout, did some things without our decent. What we did is we took risk out of our game and we, we held the guys accountable the following year. Uh, the buy-in was unbelievable. And we, we did transform that team on the fly because it was basically the exact same team. Julian, unbelievable at the deadline, Goudreau, Coleman, but 
I give Coop credit uh, and I give Julian credit. We stuck to our guns. We doubled down, but it was, it was on us as a staff. We, we did transform that team and, you know, two Stanley cups later, later, three cup finals. It's, it was, it's a remarkable story. Did that sort of need to happen for you guys to learn how to win? We talk about that all, all the time on the show. Learn, you know, you lose to learn to win. So did that so almost have to happen for you guys to realize what you needed to do to win? 100%. 100%. And it was just even our superstars, you know, Stan Coast, I mean, Coach was MVP of the league. You're at 120 points. Like, he was in a mockery of the league. But you guys know in the playoffs, it's different. There's risk in their game. We, we have to play a little bit different. It's just the reality. Of it. We, we became harder. We became uh, less risk. We became more responsible. We, we just, we valued different things and we didn't, we didn't give an inch on it. Uh, and it, it, it paid off and it was a huge learning lesson for me uh, going forward. And it's just an unbelievable, again, I'm probably sitting here as the Red Wings head coach because of the Stanley cups, the win, but it's, it's, it's the process of winning that always turns people into who they are. And, and that was an unbelievable process. I, I love watching Kucherov. And like you said, that MVP season and those runs, just one of the best players in the world when he's on top of his game. And you mentioned the buy-in was so good. Was there ever moments with him? Because there's always the risk in his game. It makes him so special. But with how much he snaps sometimes, was, was there ever an issue with just getting him going? All the time. And I give him credit. <laughs> there, there was a point where like, I didn't, I didn't know if we could win with coach if you're, but then in reality, he was why we won. You know, people don't that first Stanley cup, he was hurt the entire playoffs. He was an absolute warrior. He fought through things. There's games like when he's not playing tonight and not only play, he just, he just battled. So, I mean, I talked about, uh, Coop being able to manage. We were going through a time with Cooch where he just, he had too much risk in his game. Like he turned pucks over. He just, he wasn't completely bought into our system. He wasn't completely dialed into everything we were trying to accomplish. And he's that kind of guy you give him a little rope because he's so special and he's so, his hockey sense is just, he knows when he's leaning and poaching but he's just, it just, he's one of those guys just, it finds them. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable to watch. It was a treat absolutely coaching him, but we had, I remember we had, a, there was a meeting and Jeff Halpern and I wanted blood. We had like 50 clips of coach turnovers, bad body language. And we're like, and Halpern's like, and we weren't like, Coop, you're having the meeting. This is how it's going to go. This is, you're showing him every clip. And, and to Coop's credit, he's just, he's brilliant. He just, he, he has feel on things. So he's like, okay. So they go in the door and helps and I are like, like glass on the door. <laughs> like we want to hear yelling. We want to hear screaming, get them, get them. And we want like, we're writing. Like, I can't wait to tell the agent we'll trade them like whatever. So they come out and then coach comes by us. He's like, Hey guys, Hey guys, Hey, hey newsy. Hey, how's how you doing? Nicest guy. And I'm like, and then Coop comes out. He's like, well, that didn't go like you guys had wanted. And we're like, what the hell? It's not what we talked about. And basically, he's just, let's start working together on your body language. Let's just, you do that for me. I'll give you more minutes, this and that. And then it just, he took off. And that's Coop. You know, we talk about managing and having feel for things. He absolutely nailed it. And that guy, that kid never turned, look back. You know, have your moments with your skill. You always have to reel in your skill, skill to be successful. But man, coach, those, he is a playoff guy. I mean, it was, it's amazing how he elevates when the game was online, especially these last three years. Uh, speaking yes. of video, um, you know, oftentimes it's the head coach who leads video, but then, you know, the assistants take over special teams. And we heard a story from a couple of the guys that when you would end up doing video, you would sit down, but you would always be wearing a different like Argyle style sweater vest. <laughs> now, was this something that you just have in your, your fashion repertoire or something that you kind of wanted to do just to kind of stir things up in the locker room? Because most guys were trying to keep a straight face, but every time you would walk up and sit down to do video, they'd all be fucking chuckling underneath their jerseys. A little bit of both. And probably the National Hockey League probably exposed my lack of depth in the wardrobe department. <laughs> So, but I, I, I got a sweater on now. We have a game. We're playing Toronto in three hours. Like 
it, it's a comfort thing. And there probably was some, some growth in my style <laughs> throughout my career, but I loved it. And I had different ones and I had the Argyle ones and I had all different looks. It's, it's yeah. So it's kind of my thing. And what's hilarious, the Euros loved it. And, uh, <laughs> I would come in and my guy, Andre Palat, <laughs> right before I sat down, he would look at me, he'd give me the, <laughs> loving, then, it. So, loving it so now it's like so now it's it is kind of a thing and then the other guy so i would have different ones and I, I literally i don't know why i won't my like my wife she tries to get rid of these things i'm like don't touch the sweaters because when you like you move and i've got i've got an our guy that like the other guy cut off like it's a warmth thing I get, i'm bald head you lose you, you lose all this air like all this heat out of your head but yes, I have some wild sweaters that that's real. Maybe it got to a point where we had some fun with it. But yeah, that's that's a fact. That's the college rubbing off. It's all the college coaches. It's the college, for you sure. You know who's another sw uh, sweater vest guy? Who? Gretzky. Gretzky yeah, loves it. We actually inducted it into the TNT Hall of Fame in the I rafters. Love I love yeah. it. Well, he, he can pull it off. He yeah, yeah. He can wear anything he wants. Yes, he can. Speaking of clothes, all, all lack thereof, Derek, I understand you kind of have a diverse way of uh, delivering the lineup on, on occasion. Something you want to elaborate on? No, okay. absolutely not. In the vault. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly uh, throughout. Um, so what happens throughout my career within the college ranks or even my hometown, there, were, there would be guys, they would um, – and they would always dub me the guy. I don't know why I always got accused of it, but all in, in, in college, we'd have a party. And then someone would run through the party with just a box in their head. Like it was usually a 12 pack and you'd have the eyes and they would do the lap. And for whatever reason, they, I'd always get accused of it and absolutely never did it. But it was the funny joke that they would pull it off and it was newsy. And uh, I may have talked people into that to get us going at times, well, <laughs> but it was never me. I'm an absolute <laughs> professional, but there was some, there were some losing streaks. I would have to talk maybe a, a second equipment guy or third equipment guy in to lighten things up. Like I, I need you tonight. And like, well, what do you need? I need the lineup. And then we kind of walk through exactly what I needed out of him and we would pull it off. So that that stunt never performed ever by me, but that stunt's won a lot of hockey games in my career. You were the, the lubed up oil guy from Family Guy. Hey, another one too I heard was uh, a player who was called up. Uh, I don't know how much time he ended up spending with the team. He actually went as you uh, for Halloween. Yes. And then and you know you you got a nose like us. We're hey we're there's we, we got a podcast full of nose here. Grinelli's probably got the worst one, but and he, is. he ends up he ends up putting a huge nose on his face, and then the next day he got sat uh, sent down. Sent right. You see what happened? So and it was a great guy, great guy though. And but anyhow, I get in the next day, and the boys are chuckling. They like the, the breakfast, and um, they're chuckling they're like newsy. And I guess this guy he just pulled it off. I guess. He went half um, track suit. And I say in practice, I'm always like, I, I don't use the whistle as much. I'm always, yup, yep, right here. Let's go. Yep, yep, yep. I'm a yup guy. So I guess he was yupping the entire party. And then he transformed into the sweater newsy look later in the day. And we come in and, and the boys are just hooting, having an absolute blast. And I had a good laugh at it too. And then just ironically with the roster, he gets sent down the next day. <laughs> and I was like, like, I had the meeting, like, like, like anyone else have any newsy jokes? <laughs> like, like, you'll, well, you'll be right down in the jungle as quick <laughs> as possible. That's why Palat was <laughs> pumping your tires. Palat, yes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> newsy, I got your back. All the euros. Newsy, I got you. I got you, Newsy. Oh, you that's, oh my God. I thought he would have maybe dressed up as Uncle Fester. From That's uh, Uncle Fester, you name it. <laughs> Uncle Fester. Um, Gru is another name. Gru, I get nailed. The one I got called, Ryan Rizmerski, I think. I think he's a scout in the National Hockey League. He was with the NTDP program. And I've heard them all. They're funny. You just roll with it. I mean, there's reality in how you look. Um, I, the story I went, my wife now, we were coaching in Hamilton. I went as Uncle Fester to Halloween and we were just out and I had the whole light bulb, the whole thing. I showed up in a bar in Utica, New York. 
And the uh, contest was already half over. And they go through the whole contest and they gave me the W from the audience. I wasn't even on stage <laughs> and it was like a hundred dollar gift card. They gave me the hundred bucks from some dive bar in Utica, New York. And I wasn't even one of the three finalists or whatever, but anyhow, I get all of them. And Ryan Rismerski, we were, whatever, I mean, he was uh, scouting with the NTDP program back then. I was at Denver and we were busting chops and he said, Hey, powder, take it easy. The oh, movie powder. powder. Oh, and I, right when I thought I had heard everything. Oh my God. I'm like, it's the only time that was the one, Mr. Clean Chance walking all around the, I mean, I've literally heard it all, but I, the powder was the first time, the first one ever. The gift card was karma for all those uh, division three paychecks. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was to say, we went, I think 15, 17 years without seeing each other. And we both lost our hair in the interim, but yeah, you make do with it. I, I want to ask you, Derek, like your first practice with Detroit, did any butterflies, any nervousness that feel like almost an out of body experience, any, anything like that? Yeah, no. You know, what's it's funny. I asked that. It's funny. Uh, I had, was asked that by the media in the very first practice. And it was, it was just interesting. It was, it was via zoom. And I would do the media for Coop a lot. Basically if Coop didn't want to do it or didn't want like news, he'll do it. Cause I was, I was the, the professional cliche guy. Like I could get through an interview and not say anything in Tampa and, <laughs> three minutes news you'll do it so i did a lot of media there you go in tampa there's like three people and one works for the team now my first meeting there's like 35 people on the zoom I'm like you know we're not in tampa anymore but they asked the same question and no and i mean it in that you, we work so hard on the process and getting that first day we must have went over that first day bob bugner was ready to put a pen in his eye we went over that first day so many times uh, so it's just, I was in the moment of just trying to make it go smoothly. So no, it may be a first win or maybe down the road, especially the fact it's a Red Wings, such a historic organization, but no, I, I did not have that that day. You and Coop, uh, division rivals. Now are you going to be able to lean on him as much? Obviously not when you're playing each other, but you guys have a similar relationship. How's that going to play out? Just gonna that's, a, by, yeah. that's a great question. Um, we, our friendship was long before, we won together in Tampa. It'd be long before it would, it would move on long from here. So yeah, there are probably some moments. I was, it's my first time as a head coach. We, we talked, you know, two weeks ago. Um, I, it might be a little different, uh, but of course he's, he's a friend and a mentor. So I, I certainly hope um, that relationship stays like that for sure. In being an assistant and a head coach at, at, at all these different spots, is there anything as a head coach you can't do that you really enjoyed as part of being an assistant? Like, I know it's so much different, but do you still want to try to remain friendly with guys, even though that is more of an assistant's role? You know what I mean by that? I'd probably one. say streaking being one of them. <laughs> no, that was, uh, <laughs> right that up was the, another the guy. lineup card naked. <laughs> That's the one way to do your first regular season game. <laughs> Do you think there'll be some buy-in there? <laughs> the I think Any, anything's on the table right now. We have some work to do here. This isn't this isn't Vassy making forty-one saves, and getting shit kicked, and still winning three-two. Like, we have some work to do here. Like, I I don't know. I, anything's on the table. I'll bring that up, tonight with the boys. But right. and, um, wit, unbelievable question. You've been in these rooms. That's real, and there's some truth to that. I got advice long ago, coach to who you are, coach your personality. And I'm a friendly guy. I love the locker room. I love being in the locker room in Tampa. I would, I would do laps around the room. because I just love seeing the guys and I love spending time completely 100% different. And then as an assistant, it's a strength of mine. The guys lean on me a lot. If, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I met player a for a coffee because he's going through something or that's just, it was natural for me. It's easy. I loved it. And it worked. Coop and I had a lot of good cop, bad cop. We used to joke Coop would give the FU meeting in the morning and then he'd be like, he'd be done. And he's like, Newsy, you pick him up tonight. And I would, it'll be a positive. It's how we're going to look tonight. It's going to be on top. It's just, I was that guy there. So I still want relationships. They're important for me. It's reality, but no, this, this, the buck stops on me. It's just different being the head coach. I've already had some moments with the boys that um, were hard, uncomfortable. It's just the reality of it. So yes, there will be some relationships there. I do still want to be that person approachable. 
but it 100% with, with, as the head coach, it's just, it's just a different role. Speaking of the boys, uh, we had one of them on a few months ago before you got named head coach, Maritz Saida. I know you you know played against them a little bit or coached against them. Has he impressed the hell out of you so far in camp? Is he even better than you expected? Absolutely better than expected. And just that's the exact way to put it. You get an appreciation for a player playing against them. And he was awesome whenever we played him. Uh, but then when you get here, you know, probably a little more athletic than I even thought. Um, a little more skill than I'd probably give him credit for, but passion, man. He wants to be a player. And, and it's like, we lost the other day, it's an exhibition game. And we played extremely well. Pittsburgh had pretty much their full lineup. And, you know, we talked about the process or outcome. We, we played great. We should have probably won the game. Pittsburgh doesn't need much offense for skill. They'd be us three, two. And it stung because we played the right way and didn't get rewarded for it. And more, he was absolutely dejected in the room. And it just goes to show him that, like, he just – he wants it. He wants to be great. He wants to win. He just has a drive. Um, again, just getting to know him. But he feels like an absolute treat, uh, star in the making. He's still young. There's still growth. Like, the same game, I think he, he, he pinched. Sherratt was gapping up inside the offense blue line. Then all of a sudden – Mo comes right up his back. So before you know it, we have two D gapping, pinching on the same. Before you know it, someone's on a two on O at her net. And, and like, and Mo, we got to reel him in. You know, we're, we're going to take some risk. You're still going to go and play on your toes, but this, this isn't riverboat gambling. We're, we're still, so there's going to be some growth within his game, but man, he, he feels very, very special with what little I've seen so far. Um, there were eight head coaching vacancies in the off season, like, and then you guys got beat out. And from what I understand, it was a few days after you guys were uh, lost in the Stanley Cup Finals, in which you got the phone call from Stevie Y. Were you planning on interviewing for the other jobs? Did you have any clue that you'd be getting a call from him? I mean, obviously, there's a connection there with Coop, and like, you can't really tamper though. I'm sure there's some some stuff you can't say. But how surprised were you getting the call a few days after knowing that you were going to get a head coaching job? No, well, I, I wouldn't say surprise. And actually, I can take you through the whole things. I, I, I don't I don't mind it because you know I was up up and it was very professional by Steve, and there was a relationship there, but. Obviously, all the success we'd had the last couple of years, you and, you know, you, you, my name starts getting swirled around. It just makes sense. It's like any other organization, a team that has success, you, you, you look to the assistants. And I assumed I was going to start getting these phone calls. The one thing is when, you know, it's kind of taboo to not talk during the playoffs. And most GMs will say no anyway. So in this situation, we had after our Florida – series we ended up beating them in four we literally had like 10 days before we were going to play the eastern conference finals and steve had asked julian for permission to talk to me so we actually talked a couple times at that time and it went extremely well uh, and, and again it's at the same you can see why you don't talk like like i'm i should have been crushed like my head should have been on panarin and their power play and i'm pre preparing to talk with steve right, wrong, or different. It's a reality to it. So, and Steve was awesome. He's like, we talked a couple of times. I won't bother you at all during the series. Uh, so we did have a couple of conversations beforehand. And then we were able to talk once again through the, the right permission between the Eastern Conference Finals and the finals. Um, but I, I assumed I would have been in the mix on a few of these jobs, but it's just, they started dropping. And again, I wouldn't say panic. I could have been every job I've ever taken my entire career I literally took it to be there 10 years. I have no problem staying in Tampa, being good at my job there, groaning in that. If the head coach job comes, great. If it doesn't, just be great at the job I'm at. But there is that reality, like basically Steve's sitting on me. He's he probably interviewed 20 other people. I mean, what a nice spot to be in as a manager. You don't really know what's going on, but we did get knocked down that Sunday. Steve called the next day, uh, flew out on that. Wednesday, I believe. And I sat down with him and Sean Horkoff and I knew it went well. In fact, 
I, if we, we basically flew in to Detroit and Steve's a very private, which I love about him. He's very private. It's important to be private. Nothing comes out of our room. It's the same way we were in Tampa. I absolutely love it. I'll be the same way in any room I remember in a part of as a coach. So it's very private. We go into Detroit and we just have a meeting at the airport there. And it felt like 90 minutes. And I'd look at my clock when we said goodbyes and Steve got hounded by about 50 autograph seekers and Horacost, like, let's keep going. This happens all the time here. You can feel just how important he is around here. But we, we it was a six hour interview oh and, it, and it felt like 90 minutes and that's where it went well. And Steve called again the next day. We, we talked over some things and we had it done by the following morning. That's quite the burn session. Um, that is quite the burn session. Holy jumping. Um, I figured Stevie Y was probably like, hey, Julian, I, I, I pretty much put this thing on a tee for you. Like, I'm going to tamper a little <laughs> bit here, man. That's what's going to happen, all right? No tampering. Too professional. <laughs> Too professional. But, so that was the process, which Were is you a little, uh, Was it intimidating being around Stevie Y a little bit? Like, uh, I mean, you said you had butterflies coming on this maybe beforehand. What about that interview? That seems different. Well, we had one year together in Tampa. So he was, he actually hired me, but there's no doubt in my mind, I was Coop's hire. I think Steve, I think was very hands-on with Coop's previous assistant hires, but I think Coop got to such a point in his career. Steve's like, you know, you've earned it, do what you want. And insert Jeff Halpern and myself as probably his guy. So I felt I was John Cooper's hire, but I did spend some time with Stevens. To Steve's credit, he kind of was in the background that year. I think he did it for Julian. So I got to know him a little bit, but Steve, He's he is intimidating. One, he just doesn't say much. Two, he's he's really has a presence about him. Three, he's really smart. It's like the it's like the kiss of death of dealing with someone because you know he's just judging you, and you know and he knows and he's smart, so he knows what's going on. And I'm like, God, I don't like that. So it's a little bit, but see, he's, he's phenomenal. Like I can't wait to work for him. He's patient, general manager. He's smart. I had I felt the same same way with Julian. These guys are just managers where th they're going to figure it out in time. They're going to figure it out, and they're patient, and it's not easy. And it's really exciting as a coach. These guys, they're they're just they're smart. They're just good at what they do, and you know he'll do. I'm, I'm confident he'll get us in a position to be successful in time. Do you know how how often you'll be talking to to Eisenman about the team? Like, is this after games? Is this daily? Like, I always wondered a relationship with the GM when you realize how it's going to be. Yeah, we're still getting through that right now. He's awesome. That we're in. Um, I mean, we're right in the middle of camp right now. We we have yeah. some, some tough decisions coming up here in the next couple of days. So we've talked throughout. Um, he's been great. Um, Steve is a manager's manage, coaches coach, players play. And to me, there's no other way to do it. If you're going to be successful. So I, I, I love that part. He does not want to hear from me on players a ton, which I don't blame him. And he doesn't uh, get in our way with the coaching a lot too. So we'll, we'll talk through players. We'll talk through things, um, but um, we'll get a feel for that. And obviously I think that relates you to see what Coop and Julian were together and why it was so special and those two kind of work off each other you kind of see how success looks and you know uh you know we'll still figure that out with steve and i but uh, i'm looking forward to it yeah he definitely has an aura about him he's one of those guys when you see in the press box you kind of stop like holy shit that's stevie why you don't do that with everybody he definitely has that i want to ask Derek, did, did you have any pre-existing relationships with any, any guys on the team or did you have to meet most of them for the first time yeah no met most of the guys uh for the first time like i, I guys know each other it's like we have a ton of czech guys here and i had unbelievable jan ruda and andre Palat. they would always hang out in the trainer's room with eric chernak so you had two czechs and a slovak i love those guys so i was i would always go shoot the shit with them and that was kind of our routine and they made me an honorary czech guy nice because like because i could hang out and whatever and the fact i think Palat and rooted it just because Chernak couldn't get in. So it was more of a dig on the Slovak that he couldn't get in. But uh, so that just small relationships like that, they, they help when you're talking with guys throughout. So no, it's just, I kind of met everyone. It was, uh, I wanted to talk to everyone in that first 24 hours. I got the job. It's important to talk to everyone three, four times, you know, establish that relationships. And there's just some reality 
I think the perception of me, guys are going to ask guys in the Tampa room and everyone's going to be like, Newsy was awesome. I love Newsy because I was that personality in the room, but this is going to be different. There's going to be a time I'm going to be holding these guys accountable down the road. It's just going to be different. So I, it was very important to try to establish those relationships, uh, but didn't know a single person before I walked into this room. Huh? Yeah. I got to be a little bit more of a bad cop than you probably used to. Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, business it's about tea, tea and something up uh, i understand you have some difficulty with uh, figuring out your golf ball in the course every once in a while <laughs> yeah. any, any truth that's to that? wit as a golfer that is false and i i'm like this is my chance to clear the air there was a discrepancy at a golf i first off I am a disaster. I'm a nightmare to play against because I'm an 18 handicap. I don't care. I golf. You're once drunk. And I always, and I hit pars. I crush people. I just played Bob Bugner. He would, he's a 12. I had him, I had him done by seven holes left. And he's like, you're an F and 18. I'm like, yes, I am. And oh, I you're a sandbagger. And you're I, proud I, of it. This makes I'm me proud, sick. But, when I retire and pass my kids and I shot my handicap that day, I just happened to have five or six pars. That's the way life goes. Then just uh, thanks for the 20 bucks. We'll move on. Life's great, whatever. But um, no, this is, this is a BS. I don't know if to- Blash or Coop told you that. So we had a golf out with this fair state. This is an unbelievable golf outing. We have a 10 man mono mono match. They call it golf arama. You do the mono mono match in the morning. Then you do best ball partners in the afternoon. I'm playing. I can't believe I can finally clear the air with facts on this story. If I can, Drapes brought this up to me the other day. It's following me around. So I love the fact. I'm gonna, so I'm playing, I think, uh, Bill Saul. He's the Northern Michigan basketball coach of all people. And Coop and Blash are playing the other foursome in there. And we're like tied on the 14th hole and it's a good match. And I'm at fair and it's, it's a blind shot. I'm right in the middle of the fairway, but it's a blind shot to the green and whatever. It's like 180. So it's like, it's a pitching wedge for you with, but that's like a, a five yeah, iron for right. me. I, I, I got to grind it to get there. And I smoke the thing. And I'm like, this thing's like, this is going to be two feet from the hole. Like, I'm like, I'm going to win this darn match. So I go up there and it's, there's a um, bunker to the left and out OB in the back. So I smoked it. There's no way it's in the bunker. I didn't even go into the bunker. I think it's in the middle of the hole. I get there. I can't find my effing ball. So I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So I'm like, this is OB. So in my mind, I'm taking the, the penalty. When we play the rules there, it's not, it's a white, or whatever everything's you red you're saying everything's, everything's red. So you can drop everything so i'm going to drop past the hole but i take the i take the penalty so i'm ready and i'm just these guys their balls are lost whatever they're punching everything around like i'm the one playing real golf here i'm already up here ready to play well you're sort of playing real golf if it was out of bounds you technically have to go back if you want to say <laughs> but real we golf play for Here's pace of play for okay. Yeah. Okay. The rules are you can imagine these hacks. We'd be <laughs> out there for we'd be out there for days yeah. if we were playing. So I'm sitting there according to golf Rama rules. I can get those for you too. We have an actual <laughs> bylaw. <laughs> and so Blask is looking for a ball. He goes, Hey, whose ball is this? He thinks it's his. And cool guy, I just had a Taylor made rep send me a bunch of newsy balls, like the stamp newsy balls. So he's like, it's newsy. And the whole time I'm waiting over my ball, the old practice chip swing. So I'm like, oh, great. So I go down out of the sand in par and I walk right to the next hole. I'm like, like, there you go, boys. Like, this is it like that. Don't really think a whole lot of it because I had it in my, my head. I did it correctly. So now we're in between the matches we go to a different golf course we have lunch and john cooper the lawyer he has ex exhibit a he's got the ball in a sandwich bag <laughs> and he tells the whole story and this crew is like boo boo they took it from me so that's exactly what happened never cheated i parred that hole i won that match i don't care what anyone ever tells what me. ball was he holding what ball is who holding 
Coop the one in the, the sandwich bag. bag. What? Whatever. He must have stolen in my bag. There's some shit. Some shit. Oh, so they it. didn't. They were just like, "What is going on here? You were up there with the ball. So now like, your ball's here." So I like, see. So I'm like, "Par." They're like, "Well, what do you mean that like, you were gonna play that ball?" So they're like, so, so for, for whatever reason, I'm the worst cheater in the history of golf now. When Whit, you're a golf guy. Did I not do the rep you want? But no, I, you took your ball once they found did it. Did I do you anything had... wrong there? Uh, no, no. I think, I think the only thing you could technically be called on is once you've dropped the ball in play, you. You, I don't know this for sure, but it could be like you've now dropped this ball. Like the fact that they found your first one that you never found, you probably might not be able to play it. But, but if if it's golf with your buddies as opposed to like tournament rules, every set of friends I know, if one of the guys found your ball that you couldn't find, they'd be like, "Yeah, go ahead, play it." That would be prison rules if that was a rule, oh. and then and then it, or a provisional. Wouldn't it be considered a provisional? Yeah, this is the problem with golf rules is the worst part of the sport that it's just impossible to know the right answer unless you're a complete squid who's memorized the rule book, which maybe we can call Coop out for. Maybe he's a rule book uh, lawyer guy. Yeah, so basically all I heard Good English, all I heard <laughs> in the last two minutes, what you guys were saying two golf guys is I'm cleared of all wrongdoing and probably a formal apology from John Cooper is uh I would accept it. I would, I would, uh, I wouldn't be, I'd probably accept it. Um, I was going to ask you, I was going to switch back to hockey. I'm glad you got to clear the air on here. And so Draper, I don't know if he listens to the podcast, he'll know now to stop hounding you. Who are the guys in camp so far that have surprised you the most? I know we, we talked about Marit Sider. <clears throat> you guys have another young prospect in, in Lucas Raymond. Who are some of the, the names in which you're like, Oh, wow. I, I really didn't expect this guy to be this good too. Raymond, for sure. Um, we have these two young uh, Soderblom, Elmer Soderblom, just came over. I think it was a later pick. Um, Simon Edmondson. I don't know if they'll start with us on day one, but you can see the package and those guys. Um, Benny Sherratt has, you know, I knew it'd be hard, but he's probably got his feet are way better than I thought. And he's got a little more skill. Um Joe Valino has some upside. Um, I, I understand the excitement here. They've done a good job with their scouting of, and that's Steve. Steve, of everything he's great at as a manager, he's an evaluator and he drafts very well. Um, it's 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 heading in the right direction. Um, so, on a whole, I've been very happy with what I've seen. I purposely came into this with i didn't want i watched a lot of video of them simply because of us simply because i'm a coach but i wanted a fresh start from everyone and i i see the excitement from the, the typical detroit fan of where this is going and we're we're still we want to be realistic and we're still i mean 100 points got the playoffs last year what we're at 74 i mean teams don't jump 26 points i don't care what you do well they do in toledo they do in toledo they do until a good point biz Biz might be my life coach going forward. Now he's cleared me in my golf. That is that that is hey, not something you want hey, to say tell, before you start your rookie CDY, year. I, mean, so. I got some good strains too. I could really, <laughs> I could really benefit the organization. I'm telling. You. Hey, another guy who's involved too, and I mean, it, it doesn't help or it doesn't hurt that he's got these awesome guys working around him. He's got Horkov, as one you mentioned, and also Funny. they brought on uh, uh, Lidstrom. And, 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 Lidstrom's and, around. Cronwell's around. Like, come on. Chris Draper's been around. Um, Dan Cleary's been around, is around. Um, the old guard. He's been around. It's just, these guys are money. One, they, the winning, like they, 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 they scoff at my two cups. <laughs> like they, like Cleary doesn't go a day without getting his balls busted for only winning one around here. <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's winning. But those guys, there's a swagger about them. Like, I just, they, they've won, they've done it. They've got like, and they've won a lot here. I think it's just great to be around and good for our guys to see. Love having those guys around. Hey, when you come in, did, did you already have a system in mind to put in place or did you kind of have to see what kind of talent you have before you like kind of put a system? In no, I, I'm comfortable with some things I want to do. I had a, I had a plan coming in, um, you know, introduce that to Steve in the, in the process. And I'm, I'm comfortable with what we're going to try to do here. It's just, it's interesting. I think the transformation we had to do in Tampa to go from 
good to Stanley Cup great. I don't think this is much different, completely different in that we're obviously different teams, different windows. But the, some of the things we had to find within our game, you know, the less risk in our game, um, you know, some, some more being on top type play, being a little more predictable throughout your system, simplifying it. I think the experiencing, the experience of going through that in Tampa made me very comfortable of what I want to do here and what we want to do as a staff going forward. So yeah, there will be some, some, some nuances, everything And this day. And you guys watch your hockey guys, this day's NHL. There's not a whole lot of difference between any of the 32 teams, but um, it will be a completely new system on what I want to do. And the one thing with these, this guy, this team, I, I do think we can skate. So there's some things that uh, I'm comfortable with. Um, talk to me in two months. We'll see how comfortable I am with it. But yeah, this there'll be a new just a, a system revamped on where I want it. I know about- we talked about the clothes. Uh, do you have a lucky uh, Montreal Expo shirt? And what's the backstory behind I do. that? So two. I grew up basically uh, the American side of Cornwall, Ontario. So I'm an upstate New York guy. Basically, were Ontario, New York, and Quebec all meet. I grew up on the American side of that. And the two teams I'm absolute passion for where I grew up were the Montreal Expos. So we'd go up there all the time. You pay five bucks, you'd be in the stadium. You'd probably been there. Absolutely. And they had it rolling when I was in that kid, that late seventies, early eighties, they were bigger in life. And my first few years of my, uh, as a kid, we didn't have cable. So we'd get, uh, expo games and the, the CFL. That's a tough upbringing in the, the score oh, Jesus. right there. So just love the expos. And the other team was the Buffalo bills. So those were the two passion teams. So I, the biggest expos fan growing up and I had this Jersey, I still had when I was like 20 years old, it's my party shirt now. And I bring it, I have it everywhere. And I, I'd love the thing we were in the bubble. Whenever we'd win a series in the bubble, Mr. Vinnick would throw a party for us because it's just us anyways. So we would, you know, have the open bar or whatever we have days before and I would have the expo Jersey on and any Stanley cups, so any cup party, like I, like that thing is I get it all can't wash it too many more times because it doesn't have much life left in it. But that thing is, if it, if it's Stanley cup party, if it's something very important, the Expos t-shirt slash jerseys going on. So yes, yeah, so that's the story behind the Expos. Jersey. Right. Yeah, you, you had it on at our four green fields tonight. We, we had it on a long time. And yeah, my guy, time. RA, I, I, <laughs> my, the one thing about the bubble, not the bubble, the actual pandemic, the first year we won it, you know, like anyone else, just dream of mine to bring the cup home. And we got that taken away. But what we didn't realize is, but the cup would stay in Tampa for three months. So we had like 16 parties and like, it'd be nothing to go out that night, ask where the cup is and bring it to the bar. Or, or usually Alex Kalorn would have it. Like I remember texting Kalorn one night, at buddy's in town, where's the cup? And he sent me a picture of him and Gronk. <laughs> basically like it's being occupied right now so as much as it was disappointing but with ra ra threw a text out and a tweet i think and i'm not a huge social media guy but i saw it and it was the columbia restaurant i'm like all right what are you where are you and he's like i'm in town i'm like well my buddy our video coach brian garlock has a cup party monday night for green fields where you're in and of course ra's never been invited to a cup party he's like absolutely <laughs> so anyhow but I, but I just so you gotta understand with coop coop is he he just has this aura about him. he's just he's a, he's a celebrity like this is coop to a t we would like i remember going to la it, we were on the la from somewhere the day before we travel we'll get there like three in the afternoon so we go do our work. We'll sit down for a couple hours and we'll do our work. And then as we're done, someone will be like, Hey, I got a couple of buddies here. You guys want to meet up, meet them at eight and you know, anyone's welcome and have a couple of beers. When I do that, it's like the third line left wing from Cortland. Who's a gym teacher now, like, or a correctional officer. <laughs> so Coop is like, Hey, we're having beers at eight o'clock, whatever. Like you want to come down yet. Yeah. And you go down there and it's Charles Barkley. 
Yeah. And then it's like the ESPN guys, when they finish their show, it's like, it's Coop. And then um, he's a, uh, Coop's a member of Paul Masia in Tampa. And he brings us golfing a lot. And it's usually the coaches, but if someone can't go text exchange that night, it'll be like, Hey, bring a buddy. And we will, we'll, we'll equipment guys or buddies from the bar, like, you know, like that. And then also on Coop text, I got a guy. And then you show up, it's, it's like Tito Martinez from the Yankees. <laughs> like, he's just that guy. So I finally had a guy. I'm like, I got a guy. I'm bringing <laughs> RA to the cup party. And remember, we talked about, and I talked about love and chaos. <laughs> so this is middle of the pandemic, if you remember. Yeah. And so now RA rolls in and he's got, and our, and our people are like absolute panic. Like RA's coming, like social media. So RA walks in the door and he gets like from everywhere. Like he's just getting drummed by people. Like you're not going to just do this. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. Uh, so I was just so happy. One, to have a guy, my celebrity. Two, to create chaos and then even the cup guy, remember the cup guy, I, he doesn't, it wasn't, Howie, it wasn't Pritchard, but it was someone else, but he went straight from like, he was scolding Ari, and then two seconds later, he went straight fan on him. Yeah. His favorite show <laughs> ever. And then he had him cornered in the bar for like two hours. I, hey, I think Coop's trying to steal him because every time I'm with Ra, Coop's FaceTiming him now. So Coop, you don't have your guy anymore. He's Coop, been stolen. Coop loves Ra. Coop, Ra's part of the circuit. We call it the circuit. Whenever we roll into Boston, we'd always like, like RA let's go get dinner and everything like that Coop loves them and RA tries to give us the experience like we want to be like in a movie like going down this like like give us to a bar where it's like literally a movie scene RA's like he, he he's our tour guide so he's a big stop and I hope RA you'll still be a stop on the Red Wing tour when we roll into Boston there he's a big absolutely buddy I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping when you well, guys got RA, time, I don't got to meet up with the staff I don't know how many more you got, but you, listen, Newsy, you've been so generous with your time, and I know you got a big game today against the Leafs, my squad. Uh, but uh, Wit, it, it was his internet that was messing up, so he apologizes for that. But uh, Ari, I'll throw it over to you if you want to end things off uh, with a few more. Or... Yeah, no, I, I get, I'm done with questions. I just want to tell you, D, how proud I am of you and how happy yeah. I am for you, man. Like I said, 27 years ago, I don't think either one of us thought you know, we would kind of get to these levels of in media in the game. So I just want to tell you the, the wish you the best of luck and tell you how, again, how happy and proud I am by your pal. And I'm going to be pulling for you, even, even though it's not the Bruins. So Man, good luck this year, my friend. This was awesome. I love your guys' show. I tell RA all the Merle's. Who's the guy? Is it Elio? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. my God. What a character. <laughs> like, I, I don't gamble, and but I follow him just because of his act. <laughs> like, like, drop, like he picked Texas name two years ago. He's dropping back and he's throwing <laughs> footballs in his backyard. He rips his shirt. I love yeah. everything you guys do. And it's an honor to be on this show. So it's been a blast. Hey, Thank buddy. You, pal. Hey, hey, I'll just reiterate what RA said. Congrats on everything, man. We appreciate your time and best of luck in Detroit. And hopefully we can get down there and watch a game live and, uh, and interact with the, with the fans. You're welcome anytime, boys. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks to my buddy Newsy for jumping on with us. So happy to have him on. So happy where he is. Long time ago, we were at North Adams. So good stuff. Once again, we want to let you know his interview is brought to you by our friends at Verizon Wireless. So the new Google Pixel 7 Pro is super. It's the most advanced Pixel to date, super powered to launch faster, load quicker, and run smoother. Totally supercharged. And when it's on Verizon, you get the network America relies on, along with the super deal. Because now, when you switch to Verizon, you get a free Google Pixel 7 Pro with select trade-ins and select 5G unlimited plans. I know what you're thinking. Super. There's never been a better time to switch to Verizon. $899.99 device payment purchase with new smartphone line on select 5G unlimited, unlimited plans required. $200 Verizon e-gift card with port in. Less $700 trade-in promo credit applied over 36 months. 0% APR, trading conditions, and additional terms apply. Get that new Verizon wireless. All right, we're going to jump back into the Canadians clusterfuck right here as far as the <laughs> roster deals. Uh, our buddy Eric Engels, he had tweeted a couple hours ago that uh, Goulet, uh, Harris, Slavkowski, and Jack Guy were all called into a meeting and told together that they made the Canadians. They were also told there are many good players who could make staying hard and that things could shift quickly. What I read, just to clarify... Uh, Jack is technically in, in the Laval right now. So technically he's down with Laval, but he's going to get called back up. It's one of these paper transaction movement things that are very boring and, and they put you to sleep trying to explain them. So 
sounds like he's going to be back up. So uh, it's going to start all these young kids, see what they got. So speaking of this type of stuff, a similar thing happened in, in Carolina with, uh, with Jordan Martin. Uh, he was placed on waivers the other day and everyone was like kind of in shock because he's been there for so long, but it turns out it's just a paper move. They have to save as much money as they can with the cap stuff. And again, it, it's really convoluted and boring to explain it in detail, but anyways, we'll dive into the capitals. I'm sorry, the hurricanes while we're here, they finished up 116 points last year, won the Metro, uh, but then they lost in the second round to the Rangers, four games to three. They're 11 to one to win the cup this year. And uh, some big new faces they brought in. Brent Burns on D, uh, Max Pacioretty, who is going to be starting the year on injured reserve. Paul Stastny, huge veteran pickup. Andre Kasha. Uh, they said bye to Vinny Trocek, Tony D'Angelo, Nino Niederreiter, and Max Domi. Um, let's see, right, going back to Martin. People are surprised, but he will be back. And this is another year, Biz. The Canes loading up for beer. They're looking for their first cup since 2006. I mean, strap it on, get back at it again, and see what happens, right, with this team? Oh, man, people in Carolina are excited. I think they did a good job of maybe addressing some issues uh, that they lacked in playoffs last year. I thought in that second round, they kind of fizzled out. Um, they lost D'Angelo who had a great year, but they go out and get Burns, a guy with veteran leadership, a guy who can also put up the points on the back end, and another type of insurance policy in which they didn't need to even go out and give anything to get him was Pacioretty. We mentioned earlier, unfortunately, he injured himself training this offseason, tore his Achilles, but it seems as if, though, Wits, Wits seems to harp on him at the fact that they don't have a superstar. Um, that is argued about Sebastian Aho, Shvechnikov. I would tend to agree with Wit. They haven't had a guy in in a, a needed clutch situation really elevate his game and bring them to that next level. But it seems as if though where they're going to continue with the path moving forward of getting it done by committee. Love this group. Love the culture. I mentioned the fan base is fucking gung ho and ready to go. I think typically um, when they do the stadium series games, they leave. 20,000 tickets on reservation for the home side. From my understanding, in this year's, they're leaving 30,000 aside, and they're already hot off the shelves for Carolina Hurricanes fans. So they are amped up coming into this season. Um, I think that they're going to continue the success that they have had in regular season, but it's very similar just like the Toronto Maple Leafs. Can they get it done in the postseason? And time will tell. There's no doubt in my mind that this is a playoff team. They have Excellent defenders. Jacob Slavin, one of the best shutdown D-men in the league. And you look at their forward group, a bunch of uh, lunch pail type players who are going to get the job done. And all-star goaltender Freddie Anderson from last year, another goalie that the Leafs let go that's having success elsewhere. This team is so good. Um, and the fact that they're really going to play out the year and right around February, right before the deadline, add – Max Pacioretty just shows that I think I've been the one, like Biz said, they don't have a superstar. This is the best team I've seen them have in quite a while. And Pacioretty over the past 10 years has been one of the best goal scorers in the league. He's a point per game player. At least he has been. Brent Burns is pretty much exactly what Tony D'Angelo is, maybe even a little bit better. And I think both of those guys have their own issues in their, in the, in the D zone, but Oh, my God. Hopping into the rush, the way Burns moves the puck. I know that it's it's a little bit of a tough year, but looking back at how bad San Jose is, everyone understands that he's just going to be so driven and being on a contender again, being able to hop into a winning team. Um, Freddie staying healthy is huge, and Ranta and him are back, and, and, and like, Freddie looked like he could have won the Vesna halfway through the year, right? It was so unfortunate he gets injured because he probably plays a little bit too much. You got to be safe with his games. And luckily you have Ranta where you could pretty much maybe maybe keep it pretty even and starts. Um, there's no worry at all about them getting to the playoffs. I have them winning this division again. Uh, and I think that basically if you look at right now that they're, they're the class of the East. And, and I know it sounds a little crazy with Tampa and stuff, but I think that this team is set to really go on a run this year. And they can also do a little bit more adding, but Jarvis in his second year, how good was he last season? Neckish half the time looks amazing. Maybe a little more consistency out of him. Aho's going to get his 85, 90 ish points. Um, it's probably arguably a top three overall defense group in the league. Pesci doesn't get talked about nearly enough. They just have no true weaknesses. And 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 with Brindamore behind the bench, it is a big time season upcoming for the for the Canes. 
I look back to that playoff series too, though, against the Rangers and fuck could they, not only could they not get it done on the road, but they just, I don't know, they ran out of steam for some reason. So you and think they ran into, yeah, and they ran into Shesterkin, but I, I know, I know I, I didn't even feel like they were peppering them enough. I wasn't seeing enough chances generated, especially on the road. And, and they you know, laid anytime, an egg in game seven. That laid an absolute egg. So I, I think part of that problem is they play with such intensity in the regular season. That's why they're so successful. That's why they'll win the division again. Rod, the bods, a great coach. They go playoff. Um, like intensity. intensity right every game. And then by the time they get the playoffs, it's like, they can't raise it that they're level. Or like out. you said, they're dying out. So yeah, they're all fucked out. You, you, yeah, exactly. That's a, one way to say it, but that's what I think what happens with them, but they, they are a wagon again this year. I love, I, I love business. Yeah. Like just thought we wouldn't notice the comparison to the Leafs, like the fucking hurricanes. <laughs> They won the cup a few yeah. years ago. They went to the conference finals a few years oh, ago. They, they go to the them. second round. Like, shut the, what the fuck? Mm. They won the cup the with Leafs. fucking Paul Maurice, man. Come on. That was when Ray Whitney was still playing hockey. <laughs> that was, what, 15 years ago did they win? Yeah, and you know what? That was still after the last time the Leafs have gotten out oh, for first crying round. out loud. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'll, I'll admit it. Bad comparison. <laughs> I'll take, right, I got to do another double dicky. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, that outdoor game, February 18th at Carter Finley Stadium where NC State plays. And this is like, I think it's the only, like, Reagan in the league that does tailgate now that the island has moved, right? Are there any other any other place that do this? Well, hey, and thing? I think that we are going to show face there uh, during that Ooh. stadium series game on behalf of Pink Whitney. So we will be in attendance of some sorts. I, I hope that they we do it. Like I we can't did. wait for that. Remember the stadium series game we did uh, with between Pittsburgh and Philly when they had the New Amsterdam showed up with Pink Whitney and they had the like the sushi bar they had the oh yeah you thing you pour alcohol down the luge the ice luge yeah the ice luge yeah it was great it, fun interacting with fans in the parking lot everyone getting blitzed before the game so uh, I would imagine that's the setup we have there and Grinelli's hopping in that means I'm somewhat right all all I was gonna say Biz is I'll make sure we have a nice. Big deal brewing and Pink Whitney ice luge for you. Okay. Can't wait to get a fucking cold sore. <laughs> All right. We're going to move it along to Witt's favorite team here, the Philadelphia Flyers. They finished with 61 points last year, 15 in the conference. They 80 to one to win the Stanley Cup this year. The big new face this year behind the bench, John Tortorella. Uh, they also have Tony D'Angelo, Nick Delarier, Justin Brown. Braun, they said goodbye to Oscar Lindblom, Martin Jones, and our pal Keith Yandel. Last year was just the latest low point for a once proud franchise, a once proud family owned franchise that's now corporate owned. Uh, but towards new sheriff in town, that's obviously the big story. He called the other day. He was doing an interview. He said today's players have the memory of an amoeba, <laughs> which I've never heard before. Uh, but what, how ugly could it get for Philly this year? Oh, well, towards have some improvement here. What's it going to do? That's a loaded question because uh, <laughs> I see towards- the Towards, I see is, the gears going inside that brain of yours, man. What is coming out of your mouth? I think they're horrible, and they're going to be horrible, but they're going to be absolute motherfuckers to play against. And it, it just goes on the track record that he won't – he literally will not stand for lack of effort and laziness and sloppiness. And if they lose games, it'll probably be because they're outskilled – and there's more depth on the other teams, and there's better goaltending, depending on Carter Hart. But you know for a fact that they're going to compete. It's just like he will not stand for anything else. So because of that, maybe they could finish the season with more points. Yeah, great news is, is that Couturier did, doesn't need surgery on his back. So I think he's week to week as opposed to, like, you're looking at six months. That's enormous for them. Uh, but, you know, not many additions. D'Angelo helps out on point and it just sucks that they haven't got Ellis in, 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 in at all. The injury there is just such a killer. Um, but they have some good players up front. It's just more about looking at the rest of the division. It, it's, it's just a, it's murderer's row there. And this team is not bringing much back to begin with. And they're coming off a season where I think they were 31st in goals for, uh, they were right around 30th in goals against. It's just been, uh, a really tough go there, and I don't see a quick turnaround happening. I, I I just don't see the roster to make that happen. I love the move by him going into the media 
and, and trying to stir things up. I think that he gets himself a 500 team based on the, uh, the comments he made and the tone that he set going into training camp. Now we know what type of training camps torts is running. It's basically like you're going to the KHL. So I actually expect a pretty good start for this team out of the gate. The one X factor and the one guy I'm looking to is in net. Can Carter Hart finally deliver what his expectations were when he was drafted there? Uh, boys, uh, is it fair to say that we expected the next carry price based on what we I was hearing? calling him that? I think I think we all were. And I think that with a level head and with a team that's playing more structured hockey, which Torts brings, we saw what he was able to do when he went into Columbus. We see the, the, the shit storm that he was able to, able to create and that mental manipulation to get guys to buy in. For crying out loud, he told Nick Felino he didn't think he was a good captain. So Torts has this effect where like he almost like tells you your shit. And instead of going the other way and being like, oh, fuck Torts, you almost want to prove him wrong. So I've been seeing the clips coming out of Philadelphia Flyers land and his motivation speeches, talking to the guys and saying, we're not the bottom feeders. We're going to come in here and we're going to fucking make it a very, very difficult environment to come plan. And we're not going to be the laughing stock of the league. I don't give a shit what people think, what we look up, look like on paper. We're going to make every team earn every fucking inch. And we've talked about it. I think that you're going to have to claw and fight your way out of two points to play them every single night. And I think that we see somewhat of a turnaround season, not necessarily a good thing. Cause I don't want to contradict myself. I don't think this is a playoff team. So this is a panic move by uh, the, the ownership in order to get some relevancy and get that Philadelphia Flyers brand of hockey back and get the fan base buzzing. And I think they did a good job by doing that, but I think it's actually going to hurt them in the long run, but I don't give a shit because if they win games and they go surpass expectations, Torts is going to be put on a pedestal and the fan base is going to be slobbing his knob. And if he doesn't get your fucking popcorn ready, because the post game press conference is going to be lit. They go be lit boy. <laughs> what do you got Merrill? <laughs> yeah. Well said by both. Uh, I, I, I was hoping they were going to be on the tanking too. They need a superstar. They haven't had one in a long time come in like a first, second pick. But like you said, Torts is going to win them too many games on his own. And um, I don't have much interest in watching this team besides I'll probably be betting on the unders a lot. Great goaltending. Torts makes everybody block shots. Doesn't matter who you are. So I'll be looking for unders there. That's about it. All right. Moving right along. What do you got, R.A.? Anything? Or do we we touch on pretty much everything? Yeah, no, I was going to give my playoff take when we do the playoffs at the end. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I... Like I said, that's what I asked. I think they're going to get a bump, man. I think they're actually going to have more points than last year. Just well, I fucking alone. hope so. They, they, <laughs> how many points did they have last year? 50? <laughs> oh, Christ. Yeah. I don't think they want to. They didn't win a game for. Didn't they go on one of the biggest losing streaks in NHL history last year? Yeah, yeah they had. I think they had two losing streaks yeah. of like 10 Ooh, yeah. games or more or something pathetic. So, oh. so wait, get that smile off your face, Wit. Those Philly fans are going to come at you. Do you think they're going to keep the dart league going? Behind the scenes, it might be retired with the ants, but I don't oh, think really? you could shut down a passion like that right away. They're, they're probably still going. I right, next- will remember <laughs> you. Columbus Blue Jackets last year, 81 points, uh, 10th in the conference, a uh, couple odds, 55 to one. Uh, new faces in town, Johnny Ham and Cheese, Eric Branson. Uh, they said bye to Oliver Bjorkstrand and uh, Alex Texier. Uh, if nothing else, this team last year was pretty entertaining to watch. Talk about betting overs, Merles. But they'll need to clean it up defensively to give either Elvis or Eunice Corposalo a fight and chance. Uh, but did you see this, see this little beef with, with Johnny Hockey in, uh, what's his name, Michael Buble, the, the singer? He was at a concert in Calgary, and he started talking shit about Johnny Johnny Goudreau. He's like, oh, I don't want to play there. It's too tough, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, you're is a fucking Canuck. from Canuck- Calgary? No, he's from Canucks. No, he's from Vancouver. He's a Canucks fan, and it's like, bro, you're, you're fucking, they're your rivalry too. You're chirping fucking Johnny Hockey at, at Calgary, and you're a Canucks fan. It was like so well, like, out of whack. That's just an artist, I mean, who's just looking for some cheers from, from the crowd, right? I mean, I'll, shit, boy, I'll so. shit on whoever Pittsburgh people hate just to get a couple yeah. cheers at our live show. <laughs> yeah, John, and Johnny's like, who? Michael Bublé? Like, he, he had no idea who he was. He was just laughing at it, taking it in stride. Well, then but, he's never heard one of his Christmas albums. He probably can, not. But we've seen, can, I mean, we see it all the time. 
every time Biz would make singers come to town, like we saw Post Malone, he was in Vancouver with the Vancouver strip. But did you see the Dixie he took a few weeks ago in St. Louis? Post Malone, he had his blue shirt on because he was there and he fell like right like he was on that side stage, right in the pit. And it fucking hurt. You could tell he like it's like falling off a three foot thing. He got up and finished the show, but I think he might have I think he might have had to finish uh finish early on another show. But yeah, that's part of the thing. That's what they do. They panda. Um Merles, what do you think of Columbus this year? They're kind of in that no man's land. They were, you know, contending a couple of years ago. They lost a lot of guys, but how, how good are they? Yeah, they're exactly. They're they're not ready to go anywhere. I'm really Fair. excited about uh, Lane and Johnny Goudreau hooking up. I think Lane can uh, Lonnie? go for the ro- <laughs> go for the rocket, Rashard. Lonnie, Lonnie, what do you call oh, him? She's Patrick great. Lonnie? She's great. Laney? Love Laney? Lonnie. Lonnie, Larry. Um, I think he can win the rocket Richard at 40 to one odds on the barstool sports book. And that'll be that him and our boy, Zach Wierenski are about the only reason I'll tune in to watch the Columbus blue jackets this season. They don't get my blood going. Love the fan base. Got to shout out that fan base, uh, an amazing experience going to a game there. And there were a lot of lean years where maybe the place was empty, but for a long time now, they've really produced some exciting environments to play in. It's just, uh, it's tough sledding there right now. I mean, it's a huge deal for them to get to Goudreau, but I don't see them getting in the playoffs. Uh, right around 500, I would guess. Uh, not the easiest team to go in and grab two points against, sim- similar to the Atlantic, a-, a team that is much improved in the Metro. I would uh, Maybe not much improved, but like they're improved. Jersey's improved. So a lot of these games are going to be a lot tougher for these high-end Metro teams to get their two points. But... There is not much there to get me that excited. That's just the God's honest truth. I mean, I don't know. You guys are being a little harsh here. I want to see. I want to hear the cannon fucking buzzing all season long. They got. Oh, yeah. What's going to make it go off besides Goudreau and fucking Line or Lonnie? And well, listen, I, because listen. Vor- Voracek had a good year, actually. Yeah, Vor- they got Voracek there. I mean, Cole Sillinger is a hell of a fucking player. Ken Who's Johnson. They, I think Ken him. Johnson can That's be a That's another stud. guy. He's the, he's the hero for Team Canada. So they got some young guys in the pipeline. I I, I mean, I, I don't know why you guys are just all of a sudden taking a big, stock, big hot steam and dump on their chest. Why don't we give them a chance out of the gate? Maybe Bla- Brad Larson has some a few tricks up his sleeves. They're bringing in one of the best playmakers in the National Hockey League. And the expectations aren't very high. So I actually like this team. They got a decent tandem in net. They you got, got him in it got him in playoffs? I don't got him in playoffs, but I think they're gonna play some exciting hockey. Come on, meow. So that's a bad thing. It is a bad <laughs> thing, but your guys are just ripping on them like they're gonna be drafting the lottery pick. So I I, I could I like- see them. Ah, no, I don't think they're bought. I don't and we got to be we, we got to be excited for our boy Kekalainen, man. He did some fucking great things for that organization to bring in. You mentioned a potential 40 goal score again in Patrick Lonnie. And I will say Johnny he, Hammett cheese. I will say I, I wasn't. That the Gabranson signing was a little peculiar, right? Who he cares? Got they got to get to the floor. Who gives a shit? Four million a year. Mm-hmm. For, okay. Well, which one is it? They're a fucking mm-hmm. team looking to get to the floor, or they're an exciting bunch of guys who are going to scrap out a bunch of wins? No, as in like get to the to the to the financial floor. I know. So teams doing that are like the Yotes. They suck. <laughs> I like when good guys get paid though. Gabranson had a great season Italian in Calgary. Too. Absolute man rocket. Put him on the list. Be careful, though. Don't want to get in trouble. Uh, but listen, I, I hope they have a great year. I think the fans there deserve it. And, hey, it's also a, a state that carries big deal brewing. So I'll be rooting for you guys all season long, unlike these dickheads. Hey, I didn't I did talk smack. Oh, okay. What do you got on them, all right? Um, I, I like Columbus. I like pulling them on. You'll get to my playoff picture early. we got to finish up okay. these other teams. Peculiar. So you don't give any comments on any teams? You no, just I haven't say, been studying any guy or like, you no, know, what, 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 what do you think? You think their power play is going to be better because they got fucking uh, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Hockey. Ham and Cheese working I, I guys' triangles? Like, what be, do you think? I think they're going to be dynamic. I, I mentioned Kent Johnson a, a few weeks back when we had Johnny Hockey on. Yeah, I think they're going to be better than last year. Um, playoff team? You know what? Possibly, but. You'll get my answer when we do them all. We're going to all now, uh, G. So, so Kent Johnson's going to make the team at a camp. I don't know if he's, is he in the lineup right I now? I feel like he's uh, going back, was going back to college. At one let point, me double check. He? No, because you can't, he's go, not going back to college. You can't go to camp if you, if college is not like junior where you can't go to camp and then go back to junior. If you're in oh. college and you go to camp, you're, you can go to rookie camp. But oh, can't I thought you like could pay trip. your own way. I thought they just made you pay your own way with your big fat fucking signing bonus. No, 
No, I, I don't think that's correct. I don't think oh. any guys are going to any. Oh, I guess I, that, that was dumb because I guess if you sign, you can't go back to college. So that was stupid. Another fucking loser lap for biz. Uh, we can move on. Yeah, uh, Kent Johnson, per cap friendly, currently on the roster right now. Just uh, Ooh, FYI. Okay. Okay. Just be suspected. Okay. All right. Before we go any further, here's some words from our friends at Sport Clips. Sport Clips haircuts have developed an all new relaxing blend of chamomile, lavender, and eucalyptus for their hot steamed towel. If you want to try this new scent, you've got to make sure and ask for the MVP haircut experience. It comes with the hot towel, a massaging shampoo, and of course, a great looking haircut. It doesn't matter if you are balding or if you have the noggin of a Sasquatch. Sport Clips stylists have been specifically trained to cut men's hair. They've literally seen it all. Just another reason why Sport Clips is the pros in men's hair. All right, moving right along. We got the New York Rangers. Oh, wow. 110 points last year. They lost in the conference finals four games to two to Tampa Bay. They're 20 to one to win the Stanley Cup this year. They're saying hello to Vinny Trocek, Yaroslav Halak, and old friend Jimmy Vesey, who signed a one-year deal off a of PTO the other day. Congrats to our pal Jimmy. Uh, they said goodbye to Andrew Kopp, Ryan Strom, Frank Vetrano, and uh, Alexander Georgiev. They won back-to-back Game 7s in the first two rounds last year. They had a 2-0 East Conference Finals lead and a 2-0 lead halfway through the game. And then it quickly slipped away. And like, this is one of those things, guys, we talk about all the time. Teams have to lose. They have to have it sting a little to learn how to win. And this feels exactly what this is. Uh, but they lost a couple of contrib- contributors up front, but their D is unreal. The goal is unreal. There's no reason the Rangers shouldn't be back right in the mix this year. Right, Merles? Uh, I love the Rangers. I jumped on the bandwagon last year. I love them. Again, Igor, he's, he's, on, he's just unbeatable some of these nights. Um, I don't think what they lost is too much because they got cop at the deadline. They got Vetrano late, so they didn't really lose too much. Trocek's a great pickup, like you talked about. But I, I, I'm still on the. They're going to get Patrick Kane at the deadline to play with Panarin again, and wow. that's gonna that's gonna make wow. them make the push. What a prediction! That's it. That happens. That will be one of the bigger moments yes. in trade history of the NHL. That would be one of the all time biggest moves for. For Patrick Kane, I mean, is that similar to Messier going to the Rangers? It's I like, say. like it, it's. I I don't even want to get ahead of myself because even I, as a Rangers hater, that would be a cool story. This team, though, I could see a little step back. I could, and they rely so heavily on Shesterkin, who is. If not the best, right there. I know Vasilevsky's my guy, but I can openly admit Shesterkin's top three in the league, no doubt. But they rely on him a lot. And I actually love this team. And the best thing about this club for me is their D is so young. Their yeah. oldest defenseman is Jacob Trouba. He's 28 yeah. years old. Nice, filthy. Like, they are fucking loaded on the back end. Guys, who, I mean, how good is Keandre Miller? And, like, the steps Nasty. he continues to Sick. make. Fox is a Norris Trophy winner. He doesn't even get talked about enough. They got the Zach Jones kid from UMass. I believe he's on the on the roster to start the year. Uh, Grinelli, maybe check the one for me. I might be off there. But Trub is so physical. You saw how he plays. Up front, Trocek has a big job, right? Trocek to to re- to replace the way uh, Strom was able to play with with their top line players, right? And the main issue for me in thinking there could be a step back is Chris Kreider never had thirty goals in his career, and he got fifty. It's 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 just natural that he'll probably drop back, right? If you lose 16, 17 goals from him, sorry, G, go ahead. You're correct. Zach Jones is on the opening night roster. Yeah, another, another UMass defenseman. Uh, but I, I I think with the division getting stronger from top to bottom, I think New York is easily a playoff team, and they could make a run, no doubt, with that goalie. But I don't know if they'll get 110 points again or whatever they finished with, because it's just going to be a lot tougher, and there's a lot of changes there. Now, here's the thing that could make me look like a complete fool, is if Kako finally jumps off the way that idiot Avery's told me for three years now he's going to, and if Lafreniere can really take a major step. Because when you have a first overall pick, you, the first two years, yeah, nice, nice, we're seeing a player. Let's see 70 points. Let's see that sh- that ceiling that everyone thought that you had and could see as your draft came that maybe all of a sudden in your third year in the league, you're approaching. So a million question marks for me with the team, but no doubt they're elite. If that makes any sense. No, I, I, I agree completely. And I can't even hate on them. 
I love their back end. You just touched on it. Their goaltending is incredible. And I like their guys up front. A big question mark is going to be how that third line, the kid line, is going to elevate their play. Uh, I don't even necessarily see them reaching the same amount of points as they had in last year's regular season, but I don't think it matters. It is going to matter, though, what they do in order to get help at the deadline. You saw how much Cop helped uh, get them past Pittsburgh and what he brought to their lineup. There's some significant losses there with Strom, uh, Vitrano, and and Cop. The Trocheck move, I love him. He's a great Swiss Army knife. He's yep. a hell of a competitor, a type of guy who plays physical and can play playoff-style hockey, so a great fill-in. What are gonna, they going to be able to do at the deadline in order to bolster their team to put them in that top tier of teams? Uh, so, I, like I said, I, I normally shit on these guys. I think that, that one of their main concerns, though, is can they tighten things up a little bit defensively? They are riverboat gamblers. Yes. They get exposed in high danger scoring chances, way more so at the beginning of the year last year. They did button it up a little bit, but we all know they should have lost to Pittsburgh. They got lucky to get by uh, um, who they beat, Carolina in the Carolina. second round. And then they got worked by Tampa. I know it went to seven. I know it went to seven. Once fucking Tampa made a few adjustments, it was over. It was game over. What they win the last four games straight? Is that how yeah. it went? L- last two. Rangers were up three games to two. Tampa won the last two. Games. Okay, my apologies. See, I'm trying to shit on them even more. It's just my yeah. natural tendency to take a hot steaming dump on one of the most scumbag fan bases in all of sports. And you're, oh, why are it's they scumbag? One of the dumbest. One of the dumbest, too. Go, go, go back to the guy in the subway knocking out a fan because, you know, the other team won a game. Go back to the cowboy lady uh, who, who bought tickets in Carolina and was ringing the fucking cowbell in people's go back faces. back to Avery. Where did up getting taught when it'll getting tossed from the, the building and then assaulted a police officer so i know i had to just sprinkle in a little bit of scumbag fan base banter on the end of this one but a very good hockey team a guaranteed playoff sp- spot but i see them fizzling out in the first round like the scumbags they are all right we're gonna cross the hudson river over to new jersey the devils 63 points last year finished 14th in the conference they're 40 to one to win the stanley cup this year they brought in andre palat Vitek Vanacek, John Marino, Eric Holler, and Brendan Smith. Uh, they said bye to Pavel Zaka and Ty Smith. Uh, Pasha's pet project, the Devils. They're like that uh, that Dr. Dr. Dre Detox album everyone's waiting for. That's what Pasha sounds like. He's like, oh, this is the head of Devils. <laughs> That's a good analogy, R.A. R.A.'s back. <laughs> Uh, but you know what, though? This team, it kind of, I think, has a little bit of a major league vibe to it. Like, you know, the baseball movie. It's just kind of a, a mishmash of guys, like, all the guys that maybe teams don't want, younger guys, obviously the very talented Jack Hughes, but uh, this team wouldn't surprise me either way. I think they might surprise a few people out there, but what do you think their realistic expectations are, Biz? Listen, I know I've been critical. I The future's bright. The future's bright. Yeah. I believe in this team, and I want to believe in this team for two reasons. Because I don't want to hear Frank the Tank bitching all season long. <laughs> And I'm going to be living with Pasha part-time, and I don't want to see him having a nervous breakdown uh, in my living room here as their, uh, their, their goaltending is letting him down or whatever fucking excuse he wants to pull out of his ass. I've been hearing about this team the last six seasons. I keep hearing about how Nico Heeshear is one of the best two-way centers in the league, how Jack Hughes is going to hit a 100-point mark. Let's see it, baby. I'm going to be ISO camming this team harder than any team at the start of the year. I want to see them coming high flying, high stepping out of the gate. You have a new supporter in Paul Bissonette, Devils fans. I am on board. I'll even go watch a game with Frank the Tank live in action at probably, I would say, one of the most boring arenas in the NHL, if not the, the sleepiest building in the NHL. Can we all agree on that place stinks? Yeah. Have yes, you guys yeah. seen Frank the Tank's predictions for the Devils this season? No, I'd love to hear about him. I'd love to. He's, he's he, You he know he's said, a pro scout for the team, right? He said, yeah. Devils prediction, 58 points. Jack Hughes misses 50 games. Blackwood has worse GAA. Lindy Ruff gets a contract. Extension. Well, that's just Frank. He's just a negative yeah, Nancy a all the time. That's too prick. much. And I love on, the guy, Frank. but what a miserable Fuck fan. Fuck off, Frank. <laughs> I, I, I think this team is going to be better solely because I don't think it's physically possible to have worse goaltending than last year. It was a disgrace. They couldn't, they literally couldn't buy a save. So you got to think that that's going to change a little bit. Right. Um, But for me, this team is such in the mold of like, hopefully they get a lottery pick. I I, uh, was reading these team previews. They got four 
forwards. Hughes, Heashier, Palat, and I think, I don't know the last one, maybe Mercer, who signed after this season. They don't even have, like, they have, there's so much change going on. So even if they take a step forward, you're just, you don't know what the future there holds. So I think that if they could really be bad and get a top pick, it could actually really help them in the long run. And yeah, it makes so- total it, the, 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 it makes total sense that that would kind of be not a goal, but they're not going to do anything in this division. Like, does Pasha think that this team's like might be in the playoffs? Is that what he's yeah, fucking fu- saying? Well, I don't. I just keep hearing the future's bright. I, I don't yeah, know what the, that the, means. Future's bright, man. Future's bright, man. I, okay, okay. The future was bright for me as the fucking on the Penguins for a minute too, bro. Tell me, t- t- tell, that me go? <laughs> tell me you at least believe that Toronto has a better chance of winning a playoff series than the, the New Jersey Devils have than even sniffing a wild card spot, please. A hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you. Some positivity, Leafs fans. There you have it. So Devils and, and their fans, like, I, I don't know if you guys have hypnotized the team because it's so boring in that building. I don't know what has happened, but I hope that this year is different than seasons past because I'll be at bed at fucking what 8 p.m. Arizona time every night after watching that snooze fest. If we keep seeing it, I got them above the, you know, Montreal and Phillies, but I got them below the Ottawa and Buffalo. I know the reason you like them because they are a big deal brewing state. Um, Jack Hughes has looked good. I've watched a couple of the preseason games. He looks exciting. So, do you guys have a bet on that? You and Posh on the points with that this the, season? The, the, the New Jersey yeah. Nyquils. I actually, I actually, so that's, that's going to be their te- Jersey <laughs> sponsor. They put you to sleep and the barn's always like half empty. And it's just like the music's yeah. bad. Depressing. It's like, oh. it's depressing. The only time that place is bumping is when they play the friggin' Rangers and it's half Rangers fans yeah. and I hate them. So yeah, things got to change in Jersey. I have a bet with Pasha. He's got three years oh, for right. to get a hundred points. It's not a great bet. Unfortunately for me, the only, ch- unfortunately for him, the only chance I have of winning, I'm guessing, is if he gets injured. I haven't because- shaken his hand yet, but I wanted to make a bet also. I would say that if the uh, Jer- New Jersey Devils don't make playoffs the next two seasons, that he has to get a belly button ring and or maybe a nipple ring. It'd be funny if he could get a nose ring, too, because he's got a bad snout like us. So it's I don't think there's a because- chance in the next two years. They but I would also I would I was also going to counter it by saying if they were able to reach the conference finals in the next two years, that I would get a tattoo of their mascot on my ass. I haven't shaken hands yet on it. We'll see how oh, the wait, season they didn't. Is. They wouldn't just have to make the playoffs. They have to go to the finals. Conference finals, if they can get there in the next two seasons, I'd get a tattoo of the mascot on my ass. That's putting myself on the line there. Yeah, but that would be. That, well, you that, can't, that well, would be a major, major right. lopsided bet for you. You think so? Yeah, if, because but, think wait, about you, it. His, you, his, if the his future's piercings. so bright, you're telling me they have two years to make the play, just make the playoffs, that they can't do that? That, the doesn't, win any, bright, that doesn't win anything for him. They got to go to the conference finals for him to win the bet. Yeah, but I mean, it was going to be an off. I had to put something on the line if he's so confident. I mean, maybe it does swing in his direction or or my direction, excuse me. But I figured since his confidence was so high about this future being so bright, he would willing to put his his belly button or his navel on the line. But he's a pussy. Have you ever had a pierced nipple, Biz? No. Okay. Like you mean a girl with one? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. no. Oh. I, I know, I know. I'm pretty sure I know like, the answer. Let to me that. count the times. <laughs> yeah. No, it seems like something you and I done back in the day. That, it would be something I would be, I would consider doing on a future bet. Maybe, maybe finally make use of that little pink Whitney ring that we made for uh, for Wits left ear. I still got it. <laughs> oh shit. All right, moving right along here. The Washington Capitals, they had 100 points last year. They lost in the first round, four games to two to Florida. Cup odds this year, 37-1. They brought in Darcy Kemper, Dylan Strom, Connor Brown. Uh, They said adios to Ilya Samsonov, Vitek Vanacek, and Justin Schultz. Uh, I'd say the clock is ticking on this crew here. They uh, won the Cup, I think, what, four years ago. It just seems like each year they're kind of dropping a little bit more. Uh, I wanted to ask. I'll go to you, Witt. If the Caps were to shit the bed early this year, not make the playoffs, and things start to look bad down the line, do you think Ovi would would end up getting traded? No. Is he going to spend his entire career there? Nope. I think Ovechkin never even sniffs playing for another team because I think he's going to break the record as a Washington Capital, and at this point, it's it's all about that. And and 
it's funny. Caps fans get on me for never talking about them. They say we don't talk about them enough. Well, fucking, I don't know. Do something to make us talk about you. They are in such a doldrum. They're kind of like the Flyers were for all those years when you knew they'd get in the playoffs, but then not do anything. Do you know what I mean by that? Do you see what I'm saying? Like the the Capitals are just. It's they'll probably get in again this year. I think it's just I, they have. I don't think they're a threat at all to win the cup now. They did bring in the Stanley Cup champion goaltender. I think that's a major upgrade for them, and that'll help a ton. But they got a lot of guys. They got, a, I think, three guys injured to start the year. I believe. Yeah, they Baxter's got a couple out. massive injuries. They got Tom Wilson out, yeah. who, who's coming off ACL. And guys, yeah, Nikki Backstrom, he had the same hip surgery as Ryan Kessler and Ed Jovanovsky. And Tough. it's a pretty graphic one. I, I don't know how many of you ended up seeing the picture online that Ryan Kessler uh, ended up posting of, of how gruesome it looks. It's just like a, basically a metal ball in where the hip socket goes. And he did try to come back from it. And uh, Jovanovsky, when he got it, he came back for 37 games and ended up retiring. You guys saw how Kessler's career ended up. I pray to God that Backstrom ends up being able to come back and finish his career. He did sign that four-year extension. And if he doesn't well-deserve, they should have fucking put it on a T for him anyway, based on what he's done for the organization. I would have, uh, uh, the question you asked to wit about Ovi, I would have said it would have been more likely that he would have been moved if he wouldn't have won a cup there. Because then, yes, you know, it's yes, kind of like yes, a Joe Thornton yes. type situation. You hope that a guy like that, who's, who's done so much for the game, uh, ends up going to finally win a Stanley Cup. But now that he's won one, I don't think there's a chicken dick's chance that he's he's moving on. I'm interested to see, though, Witt, if he is without Backstrom, if he, in fact, can catch that record. He's going to have to maintain a pretty good pace. I, I think know. He's, he's probably... got Kuznetsov still. Correct. But it ain't Nicky Backstrom. And that's a huge loss as far as weapons on the power play and what he can do uh, for, for Ovi tickling the twine. So... Um, I was I was probably a little bit more down on this team probably a couple weeks ago, but I think that they did address the goaltending issue, which could hopefully keep them afloat based on those injuries. I would actually have I would probably have them finishing the regular season with more points than the Boston Bruins. I would have said the opposite a few weeks ago. I'm teeter tottering on those teams. I mentioned the three teams: Pittsburgh, Washington, and and. Uh, um, Boston, this is the, the the team second most likely, I think, who could take another run at a cup. And that's only if they get Backstrom back healthy and, of course, Tom Wilson, who is a, a absolute wrecking ball out there and worth every goddamn penny reminding those who said this was a bad contract when he signed it. So just they, they got they got. They they got a, they got a good winning culture there. You know they're going to make playoffs. It's just whether they can get those guys back healthy. Uh, I do think that Ovi needs to score at least 35 goals this year in order to beat the record. I think he's, I think Howe's up next, right? He's like 20 away or 20 ish away from Gordy Howe. He'll probably, how, how do you see Ovi? Ovi's going to get 40. <laughs> Ovi will get 40 this year. He's going to stand there on the peeper. He's going to wire home one timers. I can tell you how I, 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 I think of this team. It was my eighth grade formal dance feature song, Boys the Men. End of the road. <laughs> I'm the worst singer, but this no is the shit. end of the road. They are not making the playoffs without Backstrom. The only reason you to have watch. Him out. You have them out. I was I'll thinking try, of having them out too, dude. Try, try that one more time. Can you sing that one more time and put a I little love bit that more song. effort in? Till the end of the road. No, he's really oh missing I the beat. let <laughs> go. Oh, my God. I hold on to <laughs> you. Making a I, I, I don't know the I word. was hoping you were going to sing Motown Philly for us, Merle's. Um, back da, again da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right before we continue on here's a word from our friends at skip the dishes who wants to cook on game night not me drop the oven mitts and give your taste buds something to cheer about score some sushi sauce your friends some spaghetti or go top shelf with a gourmet burger wings pizza or nachos when it's time for a celly skip delivers desserts like cheesecake or ice cream even a bag of ice if you're running low. Whatever you're in the mood for, it's always a win for the home team with Skip. Bring all the excitement of the game home with Skip. Download the app, then order something delicious for puck drop. Somebody say, Skip, 
Mm-hmm. Next up, the New York Islanders, 84 points last year, ninth in the conference, 35 to one to win the Stanley Cup this year. Not a bad little number. Uh, they have a new head coach in Lane Lambert. Uh, they brought in Alexander Romanoff from Montreal. Uh, they said bye to Zdeno Chara and Andy Green. Uh, and as expected, uh, Matthew Bazal got extended eight years, 73.2 million, comes out to over a little bit more than 9 million a year. And he's got a modified no trade clause for the last seven years. Uh, the team is coming back largely intact. And I think they're kind of treating last last year as a mulligan, almost like an aberration, given what happened with the COVID, the crazy schedule at the beginning. They could just never get in front of the eight ball. Uh, and they're going from Barry Trotz to, like I said, Lane Lambert. The last time he was a head coach was back in uh, Milwaukee at the AHL back in 2011. Uh, I think I asked you earlier, Biz Witch, have you ever gone from a, a veteran coach to a rookie coach? Yeah, like I, I, I did in uh, in the AHL. Like I, we, we went from having uh, Todd Richards to Dan Bilesma, didn't we? Yeah, because he was a rookie head coach. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I then, never, then- I never went through that. I never went through that though. All the coaches, because Terry had been in Montreal prior, and Tom Rennie had been coaching prior, and the Rangers, and and it, oh, well, I went. Um, Ralph Listen, Kruger was a rookie coach. That's right. But he'd been coaching a long time. Yeah, rookie head coach in the NHL. Yeah, I mean, it's a little different. I think for the Islanders, I think this is a good thing. I think uh, over time, and granted, Barry Trotz, he won the Stanley Cup, and then he went to back-to-back Eastern Conference Finals. So it's like this guy obviously knows how to produce winning teams, and he knows how to play a style of hockey that's very difficult to play against. But at the same time, it was really probably stifling the offense a little bit. You think of Barzell right away. And now this team has Lane Lambert, who's going to be so open with playing more offense and being more creative and maybe trying things occasionally at the offensive blue line that Trotz is so much against. But all these guys, they know how to play D because of these years with Trotz and they know how responsible you have to be in your own end. I'm bullish on this team because I, it's to, to me, I just look at last year, like such a write-off. And the more I read and listen, I'm really in the minority because all people are talking about is that they did nothing in the off season. And to me, it's like the team was, they were one goal from winning the Stanley Cup. They were in the fucking cup final against Tampa. Remember shit Montreal they played against? That was the, they're a one goal from winning the Stanley Cup, basically. And then last year comes with 13 games on the road to start the season, followed by COVID. If you remember, the league would not delay and, um, and put yeah. teams games on the, on the shelf until after it happened to the Islanders. And I think they lost a bunch of games with half. They lost like nine guys to COVID and they still had to roll their guys out there and play. And so you have this team where Barzell's now signed. What a signing for that team. What an exciting move. It is questionable that Parisi's on the top line, right? (laughs) He's 38 years old. It's like, is he really the first line center? But Anders Lee was sick last year. And, and, and you go, there's depth. I love Pajot's game. Yeah. Olivier can fly. Yep. Josh Bailey's still a really yep. good player. And with the, the Pelican Pulak D tandem, that's, a, that's one of the best tandems in the overall league. And friggin' Sorokin. Sorokin is a legitimate, he could win the Vesna. And I'm telling you, it will be no surprise to anyone that knows what they're talking about with hockey. I think he was fifth in the Vesna last year. He had a winning record on this team last year. They have a true star goalie and they have a team that's finally coming back from a hell year. And I think that they're Mm. getting into the playoffs and I think they're way better than people are giving them credit for. Lou Lamarillo is the Warren Buffett of the national hockey league. He's playing the long game and he did it. He, he saw all that frustration last year and he didn't panic. He went overseas to the South of France during free agency. We, we mentioned that he was in his mankini sipping his Bellinis Mm. And he didn't give a fiddler's fuck because he give knew. And as I said on the podcast, I don't know if you want to roll the clip, Grinnell. You, you can or, or you don't have to. It doesn't fucking matter. But I predicted it. They were going to land Barzell right before the season. They're going to sign him to a team-friendly deal. And some people online saying, like, that's not a team-friendly deal. He's way overpaid based on getting 60 points. It was an off year for the whole fucking team with a head coach who we know likes to suffocate the offense. No offense to Trotch. That's how he wins. I think that the leash is going to get a little bit longer. There's going to be no pressure on Brazil, Barzell to perform in, in a contract year, and I think he's going to run wild. Some people criticize his game where he's always the first pass option. He probably is self-aware of that. He's probably going to score more goals than he ever has in, in, a, in an NHL season this year. Book it. There you go. A little spar- barstool sports book action for you. Free money. 
Biz, the over-under set at 23 and a half. Do you like Oh, my no? God. He's going to get fucking 28 easy. He's probably going to get 70 apples and you people thinking it's a bad fucking contract. They had to get that done to solidify this whole group. And I'm telling you what, I see at least the bare minimum Eastern Conference Finals. Do I like to say it? No. No. You guys know about the rift between me and Lou. How about this one? You think I want Cal Clutterbuck, that fucking turncoat? He what I he, well he says he's from well and he's more from Fawn Hill cake eater. He won't come into studio and watch a game with us or come to an interview, but he's gonna do a, a scramble with the foreplay guys. So oh it, it's not a not working with Barstool thing, it's a not working with Chicklets thing. Exactly. Fuck, Fuck them. You. I mean Fuck I, I you, changed Cal my Clutter mind. Buck. They're on the playoffs, yeah. fucking yeah. losers. Hey, I know they that's what we'd like to happen, but we know it's not. We never get our wish with the Islanders. Last year was just a uh, uh, it, it, it was it was a it's dust in the wind. It didn't even it didn't even matter. And we know that Warren Buffett's playing the long game and this Islander team that he kept intact and didn't hit the panic button like Zito did mm. is gonna have success. So you pretty much touched on all the personnel. They have tons of unbelievable crafty forwards. They have an awesome back end who I think every guy is underpaid. Unbelievable goaltending. And you talk about a fourth line being on the same page. Those three guys are basically sharing a brain. As little as it may be, Clutterbuck. More like clusterfuck. Wait till I see you in, in, in Fawn Hill, you cake eater. I'm going to have a few words for you. And don't try to text me. I already blocked your number, you buffoon fucking foreplay and not spitting chiclets no wonder because we'll bend you over we got four in a row we got your old teammate Oposo. he probably told you to avoid us like the plague we bent four him over maybe may, hey, maybe who knows maybe they, they were getting their warm-up with the foreplay guys wit fair enough i don't think they could i don't think they could play in our league in the golf course well so they could they could stick to hockey fucking cluster exactly. fuck oof turn oof. your back on me after everything i've done for you Hey, Witt, I'll let you know because I already put it in. Sorokin to win the Vesna 11 to 1. Dude, I guy love it. Filthy. Love it. He's as Stop good saying as uh, from well and he, clusterfuck. He's as good as Shesterkin. Nobody knows about him. Yep. They will now. Yep. All right, boys. We got one more team to go. And where are we heading this week? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Penguins. All you guys are alumni for them. They had 103 points last year. They lost in the first round, four games to three to the Rangers after blowing a 3-1 series lead. They're 21 to win the Cup, 21-1 to to win the Cup this year. They brought in Jeff Petrie, Ty Smith, and Jan Ruta. Uh, they said bye to John Marino, Mike Matheson, and Evan Rodriguez. Hey, the band's back together for another whack, and you, we know that you never count out Sid, Gino, Latang. Uh, if the Pens have healthy goaltender, man, they should be in the run this year. And Biz, I think you just want them to win just so they get that cup, just so Gino's kid's birthday cake makes Well, it all comes all back that. to the birthday cake. It all I mean, that's the 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 most uh the craziest prediction pre pre playoffs or preseason, excuse me, that I've ever seen. Um as far as them solidifying that core group this offseason, credit to management for bringing them all back together and making it work. Uh you mentioned the healthy goaltending. Jari, all-star last year. He was excellent. The culture is a winning culture in Pittsburgh. Unfortunately, since they won that last Stanley Cup, they have not been out of the first round. They've dealt with some bad bounces, some bad luck, some lackluster performances, but they have retooled and they're ready and poised to make another run. Now, I mentioned Eastern Conference Finals for the Islanders. I think that's what's going to happen. I'm trying to give her the old reverse jinx. I think that we're going to see the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's what I want to see happen in the Eastern Conference Finals. I think it's I think it's Stanley Cup or bust for this Pittsburgh team because as they continue to get older, it's not going to get easier. They're primed and ready with the Gino birthday cake. It's going to be a fucking hell of a year for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and I'm excited to see it and kick things off in Pittsburgh. I think Petrie's going to be a monster this year. Uh, people were all over him for his play on Montreal last year, who played good on that team, at least at the beginning. He, you know, There's nothing there. I think that's a great move to bring him over. Ty Smith, uh, the defensive from the Devils, I, I think he could make a big impact. I, I it's it's weird, Biz. I think no problem there in the playoffs, and they can compete. It's just really going to come down to goaltending for me. And they had that friggin' first series. They didn't deal with the injury against the Rangers, and and it, it's like they could win the Stanley Cup. I would, I, I I truly believe they're contenders. They might have to do something at the deadline, but. When Jeff Carter's on that third line, yeah, Jeff Carter's older, but I like that team. 
I think a lot of it, a lot of it has to do with how good Crosby still is. And he doesn't even really get talked about anymore. It's like, it's been so long that people don't even mention how good he is. He's a true superstar still yet. You don't even hear about his name when you're talking about all the best players around the, the league, because people have become so accustomed to it. And Malkin has his deal. What, let's see what he has. Is there one more monster Malkin season? Is there I think one 100%. more percent, right? Is there one more 42 goal, 67 assist monster season? And I could see it happening. Let's see how the training went this off season. I cannot wait to see this team play in person. It'll be my first time in the, uh, in the beautiful Pittsburgh paints arena. I believe it's called PPG. Am I making up that it's Pittsburgh? No, it's Paint? PPG. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay, well, still, this team is built to go on a run. And thanks to Crosby, Latang, and Malkin, who have played more games together than anyone else in the history of the league, they have a chance once again to make a run at the Stanley Cup. I just got a text. Someone, uh, someone said BDBs are in Massachusetts. Uh, I haven't seen him yet, but Jakey, Jakey Tebow just texted me. He said, I, I texted him back. Where are they? I haven't, I haven't seen any here I yet. I think we I- talked about it at the beginning of the pod, didn't we? We did, yes. You can find oh, them yeah. at Cappy, Shaw's, tons of liquor stores and, and beer stores across uh, uh, Massachusetts. Oh, no, buddy. Holy fuck. Dude, hey, double dicky. Holy double fuck, dicky. all right. Let's go, all right. Down and back. Hey, double the back's dicky. a long way from yeah, the heart. Crawl yeah. it. Crawl it out. Uh, nah, I, I just ha- hadn't seen any of my, my local stores yet. Sorry. Sorry oh, for okay. that. Dash one, dash one. I'll take all right. Now we gotta do our what? playoff. <laughs> huh? One? Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> Two or three. Being generous. Uh, what do you think Zucker does playing yeah. with Malkin and Rust? By the way, well, they got they uh, they got Raquel. They got Raquel, they got, Raquel, Raquel Gensel, Gensel, and Crosby, players. dude. They're nasty. They so this is players. my thing. Chicklets bump has always been been there. We're going opening weekend. We're gonna see him in the Winter Classic. Let's see him in the Conference Finals too. We'll have Crosby thinking we're stalking him. We're gonna see them so much this year. Oh, he's gonna Crosby, change the number again. <laughs> Fifty to one. MVP of the league, fifty to one. Throw throw a little sprinkle on that. Little dabble. Yep. Merles, little uh, spritzer. So we need your playoff teams. Uh, the Atlantic three in the Atlantic three in the Metro and two wild cards. Let me see where I have them right here. In the Atlantic, Toronto, Tampa, Florida. In the Metro, Carolina Rangers, Pittsburgh. Wild card, Islanders. And the Detroit Red Wings. Ooh. Wow. You have wow. The wings, wings, baby. Let's Whoa. go, Wings. Wait, so who don't you have in? They, uh, they have the biz. They already got the big deal brewing on the tap in the arena. And you don't want them to get in the playoffs? Oh, Come no, on. I do want them to get in the playoffs. Yeah. Goon Squad? I love the Goon yeah, Squad. Goon too. Squad, baby. Grinelli, so, what do you got? Uh, in the Atlantic, I have Tampa, Toronto, Boston. Then I have Carolina, the Rangers, Pittsburgh. Then I have the Islanders for the wild card and the Ottawa Senators, baby. I don't have the president Not trophy champs chance. in there. No Florida Panthers. Ooh. Wit talked me out of it. I had him. I had him at the beginning of the show, and I took him out because of Wit. How he talked yeah. me out of it. Wit, what do you got for us? The Atlantic. I got Toronto winning the division. I got Tampa getting second, and I'm gonna go Boston third. I'm gonna go wow. Boston third. I think. Bo- I I I think Boston, Florida. Ottawa, too, are kind of all fighting there for that third spot. Uh, in the Metro, I got Carolina winning that division. I got Pittsburgh finishing second, and I have the Rangers finishing third. My wild card teams, in no particular order, really. I got the Islanders, and I got Washington. Paul, Biz Nasty, Bisnet, what do you got for us? <sighs> Guys, you're, uh, our, our hometown pod people are going to be killing me here. I got Toronto winning the Atlantic. I got Tampa Bay in playoffs coming in second that division, and then I have the Panthers in third, and I have no other teams in that division making wow. playoffs. No Boston Bruins this year. I, I just wow. When I'm looking at this full list of teams, I just I think that the lack of of uh, of star players to start the season for a lot. We're talking about a lengthy, lengthy time off here for for four fucking big names, and then in the other division. I'm going to pick Carolina winning that division. I got, of course, Pittsburgh making playoffs. I got the Islanders in. I got the Rangers in. And I just, I can't, I can't leave the Capitals out. So I got five teams from that Metropolitan division making playoffs. And all you Bees fans, I want to see one last kick at the can. I just, looking at these teams, I just, I, I can't, based on personnel. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the Rangers miss playoffs. 
I hope the Islanders miss playoffs, but we know it ain't going to happen. All right. I have uh, in the Metro, I have Carolina winning the division, uh, then the Rangers, then the Islanders, uh, in the Atlantic. I got Toronto winning the division, followed by Tampa, then Boston. And for the wild cards, I got Florida and Pittsburgh. So those are my eight. We'll see what happens there. Uh, but any any final playoff notes or, or any other things you want? We had like some extracurriculars, okay. but this pod went so long. We we got yeah, we got to pump them bump them back to next time, guys. Okay, yeah. all right. So we we want to let, let me give you a quick quick nugget on the opening night win streaks, though. Oh, five straight opening night wins. The Capitals in our Toronto Maple Leafs biz. Three straight opening night wins. The Canes, the Knights, and the Bruins. But the Bruins are playing the cap, so one of those is going to end. All right. Use that like, what you want. I like riding Toronto to maybe start the year off a win. And Matthews probably gets two. That's not yeah, – I, I like that. A, I like that. I have that in the notes already. And it's amazing. It's amazing, yep. folks. All of a sudden, as you're listening to this tonight, we got games. We have t- Tampa and I think the Rangers, right? Is Tampa playing the Rangers tonight as you're listening? And then we got Vegas, uh, L.A. in the late game. Yep. Oh, frig- Hockey is back. Holy shit. Long pod. I'm fired up. We'll see some of you people in Colorado to kick off the season with Boston, Washington. And then we got the game of the, on the tee, Colorado, Chicago. Thank you all for listening to our pregame, uh, our preseason predictions. Um, we know that uh, we know that mine probably won't end up being very accurate, but uh, at the end of the day, we're done. All right. See you in Pittsburgh. Peace.